I was really bad then as well. We had that uh, that rep where you could just do what you want. Either you're gonna die or I'm gonna die. Yeah. And why do that? Because I ain't banging the your cage, baby. So just leave mine alone. Boy George, Sasha, I met all them. Boy George, mine is naughty for you. Tried to f me, you know. What? <laughs> High fashion. I was the first one to sell Westwood in Newcastle. Yeah. Labels what I've never been seen in Newcastle before. I was the only guy where you could buy the ticket and I used to organise all the coaches there. And then I was working with guys and we used to sell the ease on the coach. Wow. To all the punters that went down. So it was, that's what happens if you hold somebody back. You go insane. Yeah. We used to go in town with the skinheads. My mom, she used to get intimidated. My dad, he used to get intimidated. Because um, back then, Asians were not a force. Backward school, because I said he doesn't even know English, he can't even speak. And plus, I was the only brown face in the class, so I just got like, douche, there you go. Because I'm a man who doesn't have a wife, I don't have no kids in my house, I live on my own, I have massive knives in my house. <laughs> come to my door, come to my door. Do you know me? I beg people, come to my fucking door. Because you catch it, because it's a small town. Driving around, boom, stop the car. Remember me, bang, slap. Um, they were working alongside because we kept all the prostitutes off the streets. And the police said, you guys are doing an excellent job. It's a whole different ball game here, baby, yeah? This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Those damn trolls. <laughs> <laughs> BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N. That's better, H-E-L-P. And join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Special offer for true crime listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com. Betterhelp.com forward slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N. Please check out the link in our description box. Welcome. We are back with Chet, and this is part five. If you've not seen Chet's playlist on the channel, one of our most popular guests, he was the most watched of all the people who sent over to Lad Bible. He was the most watched in the first month. 
It's only been up months now, and I think it's got what four, five million. Four point six million. Or so. Four point six million wow. views within months. So massive interest in chat right now. My friend Patrick of Valuetainment recently did a deep dive into Chet's psychology. If you want to watch that on the Valuetainment channel. And we'll have the links down below the video if you want to follow Chet on his Facebook and his Instagram and everything else. We urge you to go down and check out some sexy pics of him flexing his muscles. <laughs> yes. Co-hosting as usual is Jen. Thank you. Jen runs <laughs> Boomer and Jen, which is an organic cotton clothing company. Trailer will be at the end of this video. And you can also go and support Jen on her Instagram links or her website, which is in the description box below the video. So we've, all, we've done many a war story with Chet. I'm sure some will come up in the general conversation right now. But we're going to try and get deeper into Chet's psychology because I am publishing his book, Gadfly Press. I've been reading it and there's a lot he's left out <laughs> <laughs> on the previous podcast. And I have more of an understanding now of what made Chet Sandu. So we're going to try and go there. All right, so a huge thank you for coming down, Chet. Yeah, thank and, um, you. Yes, yes, yes. Had an absolute riot, <laughs> an absolute riot with G Rilla and Shake last night. Yes, yes, that was a that that was good good fun that one, wasn't it? That's yes. why I've got the shades on. <laughs> <laughs> Recovery. Hide. <laughs> I, I sent that picture to my mum of us all holding right. Jen and you're what just you like, say? Jen's you must like say who's like, that? The Wu Tang Clan holding her up. Mum was like, love it. Jen's a star. Yeah. 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 That was an excellent shot, that. You carried that yeah. off with excellent panache, shot. didn't you? Yeah. Pizzazz. Pizzazz. <laughs> so. We like to start off just throwing you straight in it, Chet. I know you always do, yeah. Go on, I know, I'm expecting it anyway. Go on. Who is Chet Sandy? Oh, yeah, listen, who is it? Go, going back to your formative years, you encountered a lot of racism, didn't you? Yeah. But, but, all right, where did you grow up then in the UK? Hitchin, Hertfordshire. Hitchin, Hertfordshire. Yeah, Hitchin. Uh, I was born there, blah, 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 and... What was happening was I didn't even know any English yeah until I was three. Punjabi was the only language spoken in our house. I didn't go to school or nothing, so I didn't even know any English. A stutter I had, which I still have now, but then it was really, really bad. I could hardly like get my name out, you know. It was like uh, a proper, I was proper fucked up. Uh, we had no clothes. My parents came from India, immigrants, um, but they were like, asked to come here. So to work, but they had to live with my uncles and they had to give their wages to them and they were given five pound a week to spending money. So they saved this to put down on a house in Hertfordshire, yeah? So we bought this, we sold that house uh, in 71 for a thousand pound. Wow. It's worth over a quarter of a mil now, easily more, yeah? We sold it for a grand. It's mad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, isn't it? Yeah, and then we moved there to Stevenage, L Letchworth, and then moved up to Huddersfield. That's where that's where I went to schooling. So you went to school in Huddersfield. Yes. And what age was that? That was when I was about four. Four. Okay. And then I couldn't really speak English then either. Uh, my stutter was bad. Secondhand clothing. We had to live with our uncle. And um, I went to school, but they had to put me in backward school because I said he doesn't even know English and can't even speak. And plus, I was the only brown face in the class, so I just got like, douche, there you go. And but in the backward class, I liked it in there because they were all a bit, they're all a bit, bit like me, you know. <laughs> I didn't mind it in there, you yeah. know. Yeah, well, yeah, because we're all stuck there for a reason, aren't we? Because nobody wants us, yeah? So, I did, I, we were all all right in there. <laughs> so, you said you came, um, your parents came over for work. Yeah. What work were they involved in? Right, working. Uh, my mum used to work in a cotton mill, cotton factory. Um, was it organic? 
She, no, not organic, man. It fucked her up, really. She has a claim on this one, yeah, because she used to come home and blow her nose and all that used to come out was like threads, you know? Thread, just loads of like black, red, whatever they were making at the time. They weren't giving any masks or nothing like that, yeah? And, they were, and I'm sure there's a claim on this one as well. John Crowther's, that's where she used to work at Huddersfield, and she worked there for years, yeah? And they all had the same problem. That's when the Yorkshire Ripper was out and about. What, at that time? Yes, at that time, and that's when he was doing it in that area, and my mum was scared to walk home from there to there, so... Me and my brother used to walk down what well, took uh, about an hour and a half to pick up our mum and walk her back because the Yorkshire Ripper was, he was like rampant in that area, wasn't he? Peter he was, Sutcliffe, we've done yeah. quite a bit on him on the channel. Yeah. We actually interviewed yeah. the son of the first victim of the Yorkshire Ripper on the channel. Right. Really emotional podcast, that one, if people want to watch it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really sad. Because he was heavy, man. Yeah, he how was many heavy people did he, he kill? Do you know? Terrified the whole area. Yeah, pun. Do you know how many people he actually killed? 15 he got nicked for, wasn't it, or something? Yeah. 12, 13 to 15. Mm. But I'm sure he did a lot more. They, they actually... Um, he attempted um, a lot more prostitutes. As prostitutes he was on. They pulled in Jimmy Savile for that. Questioned him. Really? He was a suspect. And then Savile later on was friends with Sutcliffe in Broadmoor. Oh, of course they were. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> friends with it. Oh, friends with Peter Sutcliffe. Go on. So the racism then was was your your mum experiencing racism? Uh, right. Huddersfield times, them times. Yeah, there was like a mixed thing there. Uh, there weren't many Asians there. A few Sikhs, m Muslims more. Um. But when we used to go into the towns, into the town, Asians don't go because then back in the 70s, um, skinheads were like rife, yeah? They had the big boots on, the... Punk rock and all that stuff. Well, mod, isn't it? punk rock, mods punk rock right? and mod, but the skins were like, um, the skins were there as well, you know, yeah. with the... Uh, Braces and the polo shirts and the foot and this and that, yeah. and these walk around in uh, gangs just to intimidate. Thing mm. was like a daily, was like a, was like a night out for them. P bashing was. P bashing, bashing was like um, that was like a night out. Um, the police weren't really interested in it either. They said it's all right. It's only lads, lads, lads having a bit, bit of fun. Mm. It's really? Fine. Yes. Lads having a bit of fun. Lads having a bit of fun. That's how it was. Considered because they used to just walk around the streets. You can't. If that happened now, you get nicked. You know, if you walk around in that manner, yeah. big boots, skinheads, this, that, where looking for Asians uh, or blacks, you're going to get nicked. Then, no. Yeah, it's fine, boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to do three and then you right. do one? But then, this, 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 is, it, this is it, yeah? We're okay. From Huddersfield, from Huddersfield, yeah, my schooling there was, like, uh, not good, okay? Um, I was only interested in art. You know, I used to, like, draw and paint, and I was excellent at it, yeah? And that was my only interest, really. Uh, academically, in mathematics, physics, chemistry, I got on graders and shit like that. I got nothing. Um, but my brother, he got AAAs. He was in the uh, n newspaper for getting... The only pupil to get, I think it was 11 A's. So were you the black sheep, would you say? I was, yes, because I was only into art and into theft at the time. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first theft? <laughs> theft, I just used to steal to feed myself, really, because right. we really had no money. So what would you do? You'd go into the shop? The shop and to steal food, um, food, uh, pop, crisps, sweets. What was your food of choice? Food of choice was... Uh, Sweets I would like to steal, yeah. Penguin biscuits. <laughs> Wagon wheels. I remember them. <laughs> Lion bars. <laughs> no. Whispers. <laughs> no, no. They weren't even around back then. Back that then. Was <laughs> Mars bars. Mars bars. I used to nick, yes. Sweets I like, though. 
Like little Herdrops. packs of sweets, yeah. <laughs> like little oh stuff that's, you know, stuff you're that's gonna last. Home, I remember going stuff to that's gonna stuff. last me. Stuff that's gonna last me. It's all coming back. Two ounces of pear drop, two ounces of strawberry bonbons, whisper, ounces, whisper yeah. bar, Yorkie bar. But did you? I used to always put like you know the penny sweets. Always put a couple more in, and so it was a quid. Oh, see, our shopkeepers did it themselves and oh, they were behind oh, the they counter. They had the skills, man. Sorry, I'd run, I'd run back it's like them. buying drugs. It's like buying drugs. They've got the skills, haven't yeah, yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they drop them. one more in. No, that's over. They take it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd run back to the school and sell them in singles for twice the price. How much did you make? Like, I doubled it and I'd, I'd get, like, I'd, like, get dinner coupons from kids for sweets and I'd use that to get my dinner and I'd have loads of money left over. So you've always been the robot? Entrepreneur. Yes, 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 yes. Well. I think it's a thing that you're born with. Yeah. So you were going in the shops, you were stealing food to begin with. Right, stealing, yes, yeah, theft, theft, theft. Um, have you ever stolen a car? A car, no. no. Blown up cars, yes. <laughs> But I never stole them. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming later, that story. <laughs> uh, right, and then uh, from Huddersfield, we moved up. My schooling, anyway. My schooling, I wasn't academically good. My brother, he was five years older than me. He was clever. And he was gay, my brother which back then is like, uh, it was like really hard work, right? Really hard work. Was he quite open about it? No, 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 no. You had to hide it, man. You've got to hide it, you know? you got P-bashing and G-bashing. Yes, both, both. Yeah. Uh, there were both angles coming in, and plus I couldn't even speak myself. A stutter. It was all just, just hard, hardship, yeah? I mean, oh, you know what the fuck, yeah? And my brother, though, he got out, 17, he went to Manchester University, had to go, had to go, because uh, he knew himself, you know, I have to make my move here because I can't stay here any longer the way I am, and... He would get... Well, it's, yeah. it's all going to come on top here, because my mum, my mum even, until about 10 years ago, didn't even know that gays existed. Check that one out. Didn't even know that, like... Men and men have sex. Wow. Didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. So My mum. So you were shielding her. Well, everybody was, yes. Everybody was. Mm. Yeah. How did it feel for you then to lose your brother from the household? For me, it was a good thing because I just used to get loads of fucking shit for it. Mm. Uh, your brother's gay, blah, blah, blah. I was only 11. How did they know he was gay? Because... Sometimes you, it was just like the way you used to walk sometimes. Uh, sometimes you can't hold it back. Mm. It's a certain movement that they make or do or that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then so people the just get it, yeah? The people just get it and then they think a little bit about it and then they're like, right, he is like that. And then the rumours start. But the rumours but the rumors start for a reason, you know? There's no smoke without fire. Uh, So we talked through your school days. Uh, well, did you actually like get beat up in school because of your race? Beat up in school? I used to get the piss taken at me and shit like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your brother's fucking gay, blah, 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 this, that. And oh, and it was just hard work on my part. And did you just take take it at that point? You weren't yes, like... I just took it all because I wasn't strong. I was, uh, I'm born August the 31st. What makes me the youngest in the class mm. so I, I was like a year behind so there's people who are a year older than me really and plus I was small for my age and I was like backward a little bit it's almost like animals so. isn't it the, the last one who comes out of the, you know, the, the baby the runt I was the runt yeah. yeah you know yeah the runt the one that can, that's not really all there how are you internalizing the racism and the bullying at this age, how are you dealing with it psychologically? Right then, yeah, it was, uh, we used to go in town with the skinheads. My mum, she used to get intimidated. My dad, he used to get intimidated. Because um, back then, Asians were not a force. Mm. How many of you were living in your house growing up? About 
nine, ten people. Nine or ten people? Three bedrooms. Oh, yeah. Outdoor I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was your yeah. bedroom like? Well, there was three of us on it. We were on the floor in this or that. I can't even remember. Uh, the bath, we only used to get washed once once a week for Fridays. You only get washed once a week and you go to school every day and you never get washed. But that was like, everybody was the same then. Yeah. They all just used to get just washed once a week. So you weren't the smelly kid. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a tin bath. Tin bath and my ma used to fill that up and then we used to have to sh share the same water. How many Were siblings? You first? Huh? How many siblings? I uh, got a brother and one sister, uh, but my ma said I was really bad. I used to love making fires and stuff like that. Um, she had to t take care of us, and she goes, my sister was cool to walk around the house. She's exactly a year younger than me. Mm. and um, But she goes, me, she used to have to, like, tie me, my leg, to the table leg because we had an open fire and I used to put things in the fire. I used to just pick things up and put everything this? in the fire. Yeah. And I used to throw things in the fire. Wow. So she goes, if I had to go and cook, I had to tie you to the table leg. Yeah. And then boom, I can't escape. Like a little dog. Like a little dog. But I know, but it's better than the same fire in the house. <laughs> Cause that was what I was into. What what was your dad's profession at that time? Uh, he was working in a foundry, plastics, um, a plastics company. Night shifts used to do a lot. What was your relationship with him like? Um, with my old man, oh, it was a bit rough, you know. Uh, my old man's like, a, they're like, um, they've come f from India with their ethics, how they've been brought up and they think, okay, we're going to bring our kids up how we are, right? But no, you can't do that. It's England here, you know? You're mixing with a whole lot of... It's a whole different ball game here, baby, yeah? But they're trying to make it... It's India again. That's why we never spoke English in the house. All the food was Indian food. And he was strict... And he said, uh, I'm not allowed to look at girls. I'm not allowed to do this. I'm not allowed to go out. I'm like strict, strict. So when was your first interaction with girls? What age? 21. Wow. It was the first time I kissed a girl. Wow. And I married the girl as well. Yeah. That was my wife, yeah. First wife. So 21 years old. Yeah. There was boys in school. They were like 14, 15. And they were having sex and that, yeah? And I was saying, what? What's that? <laughs> what I mean, what is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I used to hear the stories. I went, I don't think they're telling the truth, but 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 they obviously were, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just I was just oblivious to it all. Wow. And then my old man. He so did you do sex education in school? No, no, no. That's not allowed. So you had to miss out these classes. Yeah. So you had no idea. I had no idea. The first time I knew, yeah. I watched uh, Dallas, right? Uh, Victoria Principal. Remember her? Dallas and Dynasty. Dallas. Remember? The soap opera. D Dallas, yes. I thought you were going to say Debbie Does Dallas. No, no not <laughs> Debbie Does Dallas. I've seen that one as well, yeah? But uh, Victoria yeah. Principal, you remember yeah. her? Yeah. I fancied her as a child, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that your first wet dream? That was, that, was, that was my first wet dream, and I didn't even know I could wank until then. Because nobody even told me about it. Yeah. Nobody even told me that if you do that, yeah, yeah. this happens. No. So it, was right so it, just, it just happened on this night, yeah? And it was like, wow, what the fuck? Yeah. By just rubbing on the bed sheets. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, this is amazing. <laughs> I went, now I know what it's about. And I thought, wow. Yeah. Uh, but for, at first I thought, well, who, who needs a girl? This is good <laughs> enough. <laughs> you didn't have any porn mags. You didn't watch no, any porn. No porn mags. I used to have to steal them. 
<laughs> Along with your sweets. <laughs> like the sweets. Like the sweets because I can't afford them, yeah? You have to just like mm. wait till they're not looking and then just get it and then just fucking walk out the shop with it. <laughs> so you said then the ethical system of India was brought to your household which differed from the ethical system of the UK. Uh -huh. How did it differ? You've, you've described some of the things, but could you give a bit more how it differed? Like Different entirely. Um, is, is like a, arranged marriages, is that a thing? Yes, arranged marriages, yes. That's what they expected of me, my brother, my sister. Um, we can't go out. Um, television, if you're watching a programme, if there's a couple that kiss, my dad would turn it over. No. Yes, that's not allowed. Wow. No dirty den then. <laughs> Zero, man. <laughs> Even if they kissed, he would turn it over. Yeah. Just a kiss? Yes. That's mad. Turn it over. Because I used to get awkward when sex would come on the TV. Well, sex, my mum now, I'd feel really... When you, yeah, yeah, but... Like now, now if you watch Emmerdale, it's like, oh, gay, lesbian. Uh, I know it's all cool, right? But back then, if that was shown, my old man and my mum, they would never put the telly on. It would not be on in the house. They always getting thrown out. Yeah. They would throw it clean out. <laughs> what? What? <The> telly <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds like they're really in charge of structuring your life. Yeah. So imagine they had hopes for you in a particular profession. No. Uh, <laughs> my brother, he was intelligent. My sister mediocre me my dad just thought right you're just going to be like a worker so um we got a shop we got a shop up the northeast and he says right just work innit? it what sort of yeah. shop sorry it was off license oh right so you could steal the booze 1984 <laughs> no 1984, 1984. Uh, yeah up there we were the first brown faces in the area They've never seen it. People used to come into our shop, yeah, kids and that. He's there in the queue, and kids would go, Mom, what's that? And she'll go, It's a. And the queue will laugh, right? And there's me stood there, 15 years old, and I'm like, scared the fuck out of all these people. Uh, and I'm, they're laughing, and I'm just getting abuse. And then my old man as well, he didn't make it any better. Right. Because uh, there was times like um, bars then used to close at, right, there was an opening time then, yeah? Um, they used to Stop. shut at, tw at two or three and then open again up at five. That was like a law, wasn't it, yeah? Where they had to close. They open from 11 till two and then they have to close. Back then, we had two bars on either side, yeah? Social club and this other boozer. And when the bars used to shut, all the geezers are pissed and they'll pile into the shop from drink and pies and food and this. And they just used to like steal and just do what the fuck they wanted, Steam right? Steamed up. And my dad was like there, there at a time, but he couldn't handle it because it was the amount of men that were just came in. He couldn't, he couldn't handle it. Uh, so I was on the till and I took all the shit off him. Uh, spitting on me, calling me a he one put a bottle of vodka down his pants and I went, what about the vodka, you know, in your pants? He went, uh, I'll come over there around your till and jump over your blackhead. Have you got anything more to say to me? And I was only a kid and he is 30 odd year old, yeah? And the rest of the queue, we're okay with that, it's fine. You spot on, you get called a you black bastard. If you phone the police, they say that's not an offence. They have done nothing wrong. So this is how it was, you know? Uh, and this is what made me into an angry motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> and this is why I'm still fucking angry at times. <laughs> <laughs> and this is great because people have seen, you've all seen Chet's war stories and, you know, how he was in the Spanish prison in the Supermax and the crazy stuff he's done. But it's very important to understand everything that led to that. Because then the public, they get even more on your side because they can see the hardships. Getting shit, 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 yeah, for years, years, years. Mm. Off everybody. Mm. Off my old man even, yeah. Off my mates, even even my mates, yeah, because my brother was gay. Even they would 
take the piss. Funny way, but it still hurt, right? Uh, it was just like that, that, that. My mum was cool, my sister, non-existent really. Uh, non-existent, she never got involved in nothing. I used to take care of her shit sometimes. And it was just all bollocks. And then when I was in that fucking shop in the 80s up there in the north, that was the point, yeah, where you're just taking it daily. And like, I just fucking, I was at a point where I fucking hate it here. You know, this is the worst thing in the fucking world. I wanted to go to art college. That's what I said to my old man. I said, I only, just I'm good at art. Teacher said, yes, he will go there and he will be, be good. And he said, no, I want to make money. So he stuck me on a fucking till up there. Get and you. when all these guys were coming in, yeah, and being this, my dad, he was there for the first two or three weeks, and then he chose to take that afternoon off. So he used to leave me alone with them all. So he wasn't even there. So I was left there with staff, uh, but they knew all these guys anyway. And they're all interlinked, you know how they are. Uh, so I just took it on my own for fucking years, man. Years and years and years. I just taken it, taking it daily, daily, daily. I went, okay. I would like even mm, cash, yeah? I would like uh, put my hand out for, for the money and they would throw the money on the counter. But I would put the change in your hand, right? Differences like that, yeah? Where they said, I ain't going to touch your black hand. And they say that to your face. But that was okay back then. All this is fine, you know? It's not illegal. It's like throwing the money on the counter. Pick it up, Patty. And they used to come in, no smoking, no dogs, but they used to walk in with fags and dogs and everything. Uh, just do what they wanted. Because they said, you lot are only here because we're letting you stay here. So that's what, yeah, system. that's what they used to say to me. And I was taking all this in. I went, okay, baby, okay. But you know all these fucking people that said this shit to me, yeah? They all got fucking knocked out anyway in the end. Did you get jumped at some point? Jumped? Yes. In the shop. What, what was the story there? The story was just, uh, this, there was this one guy who was just a fucking idiot. Tormented us. Uh, tormented us. Uh, he just used to come and steal. Blood. Blatantly, when we caught him, um, he wouldn't stand, he would run and then just go and smash the windows of a van or a car. Uh, just smash, try and screw the shop. He was just a fucking nightmare. And then he walked in with these two others. I was 20 at the time, I think. And um, my dad was there, my mum and my sister. And they just came in, walked around. They're all barred, uh, none... You know, it's in that little squirrel there. <laughs> Notorious, yeah, it's cool, a squirrel. They were all bad, yeah. And uh, my dad, he told them to leave. And so they attacked my dad, and then we all had a fucking fight. And then they... But there was three of them on my own mind. My mum was in a till, and I picked up a spade. I went and hit one with a spade, and then they went out the shop. And my dad was fucked up. Uh, he got a proper licking because he's not a... Fighter, it's probably the first fight he had in his life, I think. And he just got attacked on it. And uh, but then after that, I thought, right, okay, man. That was the last straw. Well, yes, has to be. You see your dad get hit like that. Yeah. That's got to be root. Right? Then I wanted to kill him. I used to like drive my van in the daytime, uh, hoping I would see one of them on the fucking road, and I'll run you over. I would just take you clean out because then no cameras or anything. And I would just say, oh, fucking, I just seen the dog and I just fucking <laughs> I made a maneuver. <laughs> Jail I go, I couldn't give a fuck. I just wanted these people dead. That's how much I hated them. That's torment I got off them. And now they're like fucking away, man. They're terrified now. Did the shop ever get robbed? Yes. Tried to, yeah. Uh, through the roof, That's through the, the back. Uh, not robbed in the daytime, no. No. Not in the day. Nighttime, yes. Breaking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daytime, not. They take that. Daytime, uh, there's a story once. It's a bad it is, yeah. There's this geezer. This is what um, 
starting to turn me okay i was still in the shop but now i was like uh older i was 23 now training steroids i was taking i was like boom getting big i was like doing it one geezer he walked in uh he came in for um a packet of fags and then back then you get 10 pence off 10 pence off on your next purchase right but he was pissed my mum was on the till i was at the back on the meat counter, because I used to be the butcher. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I seen it at the front, right? And um, he said, 10 pence off. He said, I want that off now. My mum said, no, it's off your next purchase. He was going, you fucking robbing. I went, and I just heard that. I went, what? And I just walked down. I went, oi. And he went, what? Yeah. And I just got a hold of him, and I opened the door, but the door, by the time I got a hold of him, I went to throw him out, but the door closed. We had like a window with a wire mesh, you know, with the wire mesh, yeah? And I just put his head straight through the fucking window. And the wire mesh all broke as well. So it wasn't that fucking strong. I was gonna make a complaint to the company about this one, right? And all this scalp was stuck in his wire mesh. So I pulled him out. All this over, 10 pence this mind, right? And then I opened the door, Flung the cunt out. Flung him out. My mum goes, what the fuck? I went, listen, you shouldn't speak to you like that, yeah? And he went, all right. And anyway, I was expecting the feds, but the feds never came. And then he come back the next day and then he apologised. He went, okay, okay, I know it's you, yeah, chat, I apologise, I'm sorry. And his head was all... <laughs> so by then you were well known? <laughs> well, not well, well, well known then for right. if you steal... You know, if you come in our shop, call me a p I'll take you in the back of Nikita. Uh, you either, I either call the feds or you go in the back of the shop and I'll let the dog and me loose on you. And some people took that option to go in the back of the shop with my Akita and me. And I would just let my dog, my dog would just rip them apart. How big was his dog? Uh, he was an American Akita. No. My dad's got one, my stepdad. Yeah. She, her name's Carly, she is a unit. Holy shit. Yeah, and if you go too close to my dad, they get a bit funny. Yeah. They are... Bite force is quite them. good, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what inspired you to start working out? All the hate. Yeah. Had to make a move. Because I thought, I can't live like this. Did you like? Did you like join the gym, or did you get weights delivered? Well, um, I just, well, I I used to just train at home at first in the shop. Not once I left the shop, um, I got my own shop, clothes shop in Newcastle, and then that's where I trained and trained. But then I used to used to do do that in the day, and then work at my mum and dad shop on the night. So you had a clothes shop, you said. Clothes shop, yes. Okay. High fashion, I was the first one to sell Westwood uh, in Newcastle. Yeah. Viv, I know her personally, Joe Casely Hereford, Destroy, Nick Coleman, labels what I've never been seen in Newcastle before. But I think it was ahead of the time because this was uh, the early 90s, I think 1991. I was 21 then. That's when I made my moves. That's when I thought, okay, I need to get get away from this shop yeah from this bullshit from the racist from all this bollocks and to move on to something more so i tried clothes shops so i explained this to my mum and dad and uh, i said listen i've worked for you guys for fuck, how many years 15 to 21 every day of my life i've never been allowed out what's that worth right A clothes shop 40 grand I wanted, yeah? And he goes, okay. I went, right, to start off the shop. So he gave me that, him and my dad and my mum. And, and then I started that. But that, uh, my ideas, yeah, were ahead of the time for Newcastle. Um, yes, high fashion, men's, ladies wear, Moschino, Westward. It was like, 
What was the one I Somewhere. remember? Von Dutch that was really popular in the 90s. Von I Dutch. think it was... Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. But that was a bit cheap. Mine was really expensive, yeah? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and, but the only guys who had this money were guys who were gay. Because they have that extra expenditure, don't they? Because they don't have kids, they don't have a wife, they don't have, you know? And they're quite intelligent, so it was a lot of uh, gay guys coming, spending money, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, right, okay, cool. And so I got in some other labels, and then I worked with uh, firms from the West End, what you just used to, like, uh, back then in the 90s, you could get a bag, get a card, and then you just yeah, run that card. Right, and you run that card, you know? Yeah. And you smash the card through. Mm. Run it through for thousands, uh, a grand, this and that. So I used to work with them, and that's what kept the shop rolling. Not the actual clothes I was selling. Because on the last day of it, yeah, <laughs> on the last day, I had to make a move because they said the police were watching my shop from across the road. Because they said, why are all these gangsters coming into your shop for? <laughs> yeah? Because they thought I was doing drugs and that, you know, and I got told that you, you, you're, you're getting watched. I went, right, fuck. So on the last day, I had items or oh, one-offs I used to buy at Viv, yeah? Like um, b bustiers and stuff like that. Bustiers. One thing. Um, but I just used to buy one. So there's only one person that owns that in Newcastle. Anyway, I had loads of this fucking shit. And in the end, they all got sold for a fiver. Oh. I put a sign in the window, everything, five pound. There was... Two hundred pound, three hundred pound pieces that went for a fiver. Why? Because I just want the money in. I want it out. So he I was he out. was putting more on credit cards than credit cards. He was doing so so credit card off, fraud so through it. So I bumped off. Yeah. So I bumped off all the people I bought off, which was bad. As which was bad. That's the only bad thing I've done in my life. Right. Do you regret it? Yes, I do. Good. I shouldn't have bumped them off. But that's the only bad, they're the only innocent people I've hurt in my life. Yeah. You live, you learn. All, 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 the, all the rest I'm going to fuck about, they're all bad anyway, yeah? <laughs> Here is a word from our sponsor, Nutrafol. Control isn't given, it's taken. Take charge of your hair growth and make the next few months your time to grow thicker, fuller, healthier hair. Does it work? Yes. In clinical studies, Nutrafol saw thicker, stronger hair growth with less shedding in three to six months. Does it work? Yes. In clinical studies, 72% of men saw more scalp coverage and 86% of women saw improved hair growth after six months. Whether you're experiencing thinning or not, you deserve her as strong as you are. Nutrafol can help you achieve your best hair growth naturally. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and using promo code SHAUN, S-H-A-U-N, to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer available anywhere, and it's only available to US customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N U T R A F O L dot com promo code Sean S H A U N for her as strong as you are. It's not just genetics, many factors that you can control play a role in her growth, like stress and hormones. Nutrafol targets multiple root causes of thinning her at once. Nutrafol is formulated specifically for the needs of your age and biology. But them ones, it's, it's, you know, it's still there. I shouldn't have done that. But I had to do that because the shop was going down and I was in a bit of debt. So I did that and I bought a Mercedes and I bought a house out of all the money I made because I didn't pay anybody back. I established you. So where was the house? Yes. Washington, where I, where I live now. Right, okay. The same area with my wife. And my kids back then. But she left me uh, when I went to jail in Spain. Gotcha. So going back then to the shop, how did it feel to be like running your own business for the first time away from your family? Oh, yeah, excellent. <laughs> excellent. It was like, uh, 
I didn't realize I was a, like a nice looking kid, right? I, I, I didn't even know because nobody even you used to look at me or this or that. And there I was getting girls like, they just just go downstairs because that's where the girls thing was, yeah? And they go, okay, can I try this, this, this one? I went, yeah, yeah, sure. Changing rooms are over there. They go, it don't matter. They just strip off in front of me. <laughs> And I'm not lying to you. And I didn't know what to do here. Yeah. I was just like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you were quite the Casanova then? I know. I didn't make no moves of it. Naive. naive. I didn't have a clue. Yeah. I didn't have a clue. Didn't have a clue. Didn't have a clue. <laughs> I didn't have a clue that they were like saying, take me. <laughs> <laughs> like but I was saying, no, no, I think you, 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 you need the larger size of this. <laughs> I was just trying to sell. I was just yeah. trying to sell, yeah. yeah. I wasn't interested in the sex bit. <laughs> <laughs> what what um what celebrities inspired you back then? Like did you watch like Stallone movies, Dolph Lundgren, Schwarzenegger? <coughs> what movies yeah, films, films. films, yeah, uh, films. As a teenager. Late late dodgy twenties. Mad Max. Mad Max. Yeah, the first one. The Warriors? Come out to play. The Warriors. <laughs> Them ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah the won thought, Wanderers. Right. The Wanderers, yes. Yeah. The Warriors a lot better though. Yeah, that was yeah, a lot yeah. better filmed. Yeah. A lot better filmed. The Wanderers was one. Mad Max. Mad Max, I love Mad Max. Uh, and then there was all the horror films, weren't they? Oh. Yeah. I spit on your grave and all that. Oh, yeah, I spit on your grave. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have they redone that yet? What? I spit on your grave. Have we what? Have they redone it? I don't think so. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, did yes, they? Yes, yes. Did they? Yes. There That's is a, brutal, there is a re re remake of that, yeah. What about Deliverance? Deliverance, another one. Yeah. <laughs> that was a classic, wasn't it? Rocky, of course. Yeah, of course. Rocky, of course. That's like the inspiration to fight. Yeah. yeah. Versus um, yes. Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. And Mr. T, was it? Mr. T. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clover Lang. <laughs> Club Lang, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about music? What music were you into back then? Back then? It was Top of the Pops, wasn't no, it? No, yes, oh, Top of the God. Pops. The music I was into was uh, The Smiths. I love The Smiths. That's my dad's, that's my dad's favourite, is The Smiths. Elvis, there is a light that will never go out. That is perfect. Is it? It's oh, my dad's, yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. The Smiths. Yeah. The Smiths, yeah. If a double decker bus should it's run over us. To die by <laughs> your <laughs> side. <laughs> I remember Morrissey on top of the pops. He had like a a tree branch out, out the back of his trousers. <laughs> doing his Morrissey dance. <laughs> well, <look at> that. <laughs> <laughs> top of the pops was excellent back then. They just took the piss out of everything. Just, all all the family would just sit around and wait yeah. for top of the pops. It was all just mind the fuck, but then yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the best ones were like status quo. They're supposed well, to be singing. They're supposed to be singing, but then they just go and they just have a conversation. Why are Why it's still going and they make out? Yeah, it's mimed because we're having a combo and the music's still going. <laughs> Did you ever watch um, The Hitman and Her? Yes. That was filmed at Mr. Smith, some of that, in Warrington. Right. Yeah. They used to go up to the Mall as well. Yeah. Stockton, that was rough. Mm. That was rough up there. Um, the early days, that was when I first... When I first like was out, what would what uh, was the name of the club you went to? Was it a big one? Like your favourite club in the area back then? Macmillan's in Yarm. Right. Right. That was where they played um, R and B music. It was my friends from where I, where I went to school. They told me that they drive all the way up there. Um, that was in, in Eagles Cliff. It's about half an hour away. From from where I am, and they used to go there, and they go, it's just like R&B, but it's just full of white girls who want brown or black dick. I went, really? I went, okay, perfect scenario. <laughs> and that's where I met my first wife. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a dancer? Not then, not then, I was far too shy. Was she a wallflower? So far in the too shy. Oh, no, far too shy. I didn't have a clue, did I? 
Then I'm a cool so man. What would you do if you went in a club then? Just well, I would just like sort of stand with my mates and just like, I never drank until I was 23. Wow. Never took drugs until I was 25. Yeah. So I started late on everything. Was it the drugs that got you dancing? Probably, yes. Same, same, yeah? Yes, Ecstasy. yes, yeah. yes. The first time I, the first time I had one, wow, wow. I can't imagine you dancing. <laughs> There's we... a video of it on my channel. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Are you good? Fresh out of prison. You'll have to watch it and make your own conclusion. <laughs> Was it Big Fish, Little Fish, Carbon Box? I do a fuck grab, I'm literally hopping and doing a foot grab. What like? <laughs> what do you mean? Like... <laughs> we'll have to show you after this. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what tunes got you dancing, chap? What tunes back then? It was house, yeah. wasn't it? What, house year, what year are we time. talking then? We're talking, we're s still in the 80s here. 89, 90, yeah, around yeah, yeah. them. House music started. So it was house music. Uh, house music started and I thought, what the fuck is this? It was like new, it was uh, Farley... Jackmaster Funk, yeah, yeah. Frankie Fingers, yeah. um, Marshall Jefferson, the original house guys, yeah? Right yeah. Right yeah, no, 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 no. What was that later? No, it was um, with the Move Your Body. That like, move your body, boom. Yeah, boom, yeah, yeah, yeah. Move yeah, your yeah. body, boom. boom <laughs> move your body, bam, <laughs> But that's all he said in the whole fucking song, but it was fucking, but yeah, it was like yeah. somebody else, like, what is And Moby as well? Was big, wasn't he? he came go, later on. go. Later on, he yeah, came though. Yeah, yeah. But the original guys, yeah. Mm. Back then, it was like, wow, what is this music? And it was just like, boom! It just got you, boom! It had that bang, pumping house. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I think the first one I heard was brutal with the needle. I was in, uh, I think it was in the Canary Islands. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Brutal with the needle. <laughs> 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 I did not see that coming. That was about 87, I think. Right. Yeah, and I came back and I was like, I danced actually without ecstasy. I got drunk, sangria. Without ecstasy? Yeah. <laughs> but I properly danced when the ecstasy came and I couldn't stop dancing. Then. Oh, sangria is awful. <laughs> it got me up. But ecstasy then was, was like next level shit. What was your first pill? White dogs? Right, my first pill I got from the spiked. I never drink. Took drugs, tunnel, we went to a nightclub, Glasgow, with these guys. It was Tom. He was like a gay guy, but he was cool, yeah? And he goes, Chet, listen, I'm gonna get you a drink here. I went, Phew. I said, I don't drink, you know? I went, right, go on. Tequila shot he got me. Crushed it, eating it. He went, take it only one, it was dark, yeah? The tunnel, right? Okay, I had it. Boom. And then about 10, 15 minutes later, everything just whole changed. And it was that song, what was that song? Um, oh God, it was a song that come on, yeah? At that time, I was like, what is this? What is going on? And it just makes you move. Yeah. The music starts speaking to you on the ecstasy, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense. And all of a sudden it all makes sense. Back then it was doves, they were, yeah. And it was all like pounding and fucking yeah. going. I thought, wow. Yeah. Boom. Get up and dance. Get up and dance. Yeah. Get up and yeah. dance. You can't sit on that. There was nobody sat. Nobody. Nobody was sat. In the beginning, they're all stood around. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then they all cut, they all come on the exit in the whole room. Then it's just yeah. and it's all like moving in sync, isn't it? The room yeah. like waves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So did you go illegal raves? Illegal raves, yes. Security on them, we've done. Uh, yeah, we, we, we used to go to a normal club and then there was illegal raves afterwards, weren't there? But there was no fighting. Convoys. No violence, yeah. Did you have to go in a convoy to find it? A convoy? I don't know how we got there. Flyers? It was all flyers, <laughs> weren't it, at the clubs? Oh, yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah. You come out the they club, say, there's a flyer on your yeah, car. You say, Call oh, yeah. this number. And it's like, and the number is like instructions, wasn't it? Meet say, at the service station. Follow me. Oh, follow, follow us, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. how do you pick your venue? Warehouses, it was, and airplane anyway, hangars, anyway, like Burton Wood yeah, Airbase yeah. was anyway, used. Anyway, Loads of different warehouses, Liverpool to Manchester. Oh, boom, just taking it and yeah. they were just pounding it more. That's all the cops come. 
until yeah. the, until the cops come, but the, the money's in the bag and it's gone. Do you remember seeing it on the news on the weekends? They'd show like all the smiley faced ravers and cops chasing them and shit like that. <laughs> or did your parents not? Were you gone out your parents' house by then, weren't you? No, then I was still there. So they wouldn't allow that to be shown, Ray? No, yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't remember watching that. I don't remember watching it. That's one of the things that I was like wondering what was going on in the country. Because the news every weekend, all of a sudden, just showed all these ravers. Just this, just like sweat eyes out here, yeah. smiling, yeah. and like going like this. And then cops chasing people and stuff. I was like, what is going on? And the news would be like, Another illegal acid house party was broken up and <laughs> off the M25. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I want, acid, I want acid, some of this. Yeah. Acid was, well, yeah. Acid, acid, house, acid was yeah. Called, wasn't it? Well, acid came in, yeah. Did you, did you do any of the LSD yeah, squares? Yeah, What was your first trip like? Crazy, fucking crazy. <laughs> what, what, what? Uh, we went to um, a gypsy fair. There was like a fair mm. with, with the rides. My mate goes, have one, it'd be good on the rides. I went, will it? It fucking wasn't like, it was, oh, everything was like fucking silly and lost for hours. It lasts a whole day. I didn't know it lasts a whole day. I didn't know it was going to wreck my whole day. I didn't know that one. <laughs> what sort of things did you see? Well, you just see everything. Um, you just see like, the Mars bars will just go. <laughs> what, 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 what's that? I went, what, what's that? And I made to go check. It's all right. This note there. I went. I went. Are you sure? I went. I've just seen something in my face. He went. No, no, no. He went. Come here. Hold, hold my hand. <laughs> you need guidance. You need yeah. guidance. If you're in a out, you can't take it out. That reminds me, I had a similar experience. I was at a club in San Francisco and my, I was just coming on the acid and my girlfriend lit up a joint and comets started coming out of the joint. I was like, fuck, like this, fuck, Do you know, fuck. I've only ever had one trip in my life. What happened? Well, it was just, I was <laughs> crawling across the landing. Yeah. And it was just a bottle of beer, I was just, and I was just chasing it. That's <laughs> the only trip I've ever had in my life. How long did it last? Well, 15 minutes, wasn't very long. What was it? What it was, was just I? a bottle of beer. I don't know, I think no, it was ecstasy. Ecstasy. But so it had something in it that made you trip. Mm. You can sometimes just, have I hallucinations. Just, I imagined a bottle of beer, yeah, and I was just chasing it across the landing right now. They probably put something in it. Yeah. Paper little squares. Yeah, yeah, it lasted for a day. Square. Proper tripping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> California sunrise. Oh, Do you remember well, that I one? Think, yeah, yeah. No, Micro dots. Yeah. yeah. Micro dot. Yeah. To make them must have been cheap as fuck. You soak paper in some acid or whatever. Cut it out, sell it on. Yeah. I used to have an LSD chemist and he got um, crystals from the Rainbow family in San Francisco. We had an apartment where we took down, um, what are they, they're like on skylights or something, but they've got little dimples in them. So then each dimple becomes one hit yeah. and there's like on the sheet, there's like hundreds of them. But it takes days for all the for it all to gel into, yeah. It's interesting to watch it. Mm, yeah. yeah. Anyway, back to the story. Yeah. The racism shit, yeah. Yeah. The racism, right? Okay. It didn't stop there. At the shop, it was like, okay, it was okay at the shop. Mm. My shop now. Because you're standing up now. Poor shop, yeah. Yeah. I was uh, selling tickets for all the raves. Mm. Ministry of Sound, uh, Soak, Chaos. Uh, cream, Liverpool. I was the only guy where you could buy the ticket, and I used to organise all the coaches there. And then I was working with guys, and we used to sell at ease on the coach wow. to all the punters that went down. So it was a double whammy, you know. And no one's kicking off because they're all on e. Yes. Yeah. And the club likes me in because I'm bringing down a full coach load of people, and they're paying in the full price, mm -hmm. VIP treatment. Uh, Boy George, Sasha, I met all them. Boy George, mine is a fucking naughty fuck. He tried to fuck me, you know? What? <laughs> <laughs> he got me high, yeah, and he tried to fuck me once at a soak event. This is for the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right, boy, yeah? I'm George. Talking talk through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talking through it, right. Okay, I can't remember a lot. I was high as fuck. Yeah. I'm pissed. It was... You're in a VIP area? Soak event, yeah, in Leeds. Who are you kicking it with? Uh, who else was there? Sasha, Boy George, 
Alistair Whitehead. Um, I don't know who was there at the time, but boy George, he fancied me, yeah. But I, but, 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 but right, okay, because listen, I did have a high fashion shop, yeah, okay. So I was wearing mock croc pants, right? Crocodile pants, right? Ooh. Plastic, no top, and just a fur jacket, just a fur coat. Wow. So my abs and all that were out, yeah. So yeah. I looked like the, the, the eccentric. Gear dream, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm straight, yeah. This yeah. is a, this is yeah, yeah. The gay dream, but straight. So every every <laughs> just threw a, a grape at my te- at my right testicle. <laughs> mm. So boy was in oh, it's funny. He was going wow. Plus I was only young. Yeah. Twenty two. Uh, so how did he approach you? I can't really remember. Uh, we were all just there. Sniffing uh, this, that, blah, blah, blah. But then I never used to sniff. You know, then I just used to take a pill. What was it like, Coke? Coke then, yeah, yeah. But then I never used to sniff. You know, I would just take a pill. I preferred pill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even drink even. But I, but then I used to drink alcohol on top of that. I think it's the alcohol on top of the pill that makes it worse. Water is the one. Yeah, water. Yeah, if you drink... You yeah. So back to the boy George. Boy George. <laughs> so he's giving you the luck. <laughs> he's yeah. giving me one of the fucking luck, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> he's supplying me with fucking this, that. He went, you look good. I went, yeah, yeah. He was asking who I was, blah, blah, blah. And then, I, I don't know what happened, yeah? He must have made some sort of fucking move on me or something. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, whoa easy, brother. Yeah? <laughs> like, put his arm around you something. something like that. He must have made some, some up, but, yeah. I, but I said, whoa, easy. I said, easy, I ain't gay, you know? Yeah. He went, really? (laughs) (laughs) See what you're wearing? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, it's just my, you know, it's my shop wear, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then what happened next? What happened next? That was that, I think. And he left it at that, and then he went cold. And then... uh, Ghosted you. (laughs) We were all just high. We were all just high. I can't really remember. You know what it's like back in the day. You you have... um, Shots of a memory, yeah? You just get like a little that, and then what happened after? Fuck knows. What was Sasha like? Sasha was cool. He was the Quiet. top, wasn't he? Quiet, yeah. All the flyers, the top DJs yeah. at the beginning was like Sasha, Carl Cox, Sasha, Carl Cox. Yeah. Carl yeah. Cox, yeah. Yeah, Sasha was quiet. Yes. Yeah, was he getting high with you? Sasha was there, but not with us lot, no. Mm. Boy George was like sort of, uh, he was just sticking on the fucking table. Yeah, he didn't give a fuck. Mm. He made it known. Mm. He was all right. I mean, he's, he, 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 you know, he's okay. Mm. But he, but he must have thought I was gay, yeah. Which okay, fair enough. Mm. But but I wasn't. Crocodile. You know, it's not my fault. I'm. <laughs> it's not my fault. I'm handsome. <laughs> I read his book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he became a. He, he spends. Doesn't he? Doesn't he still spend now? He came to Arizona at one point to spend out there. Yeah. He went inside as well. Yeah. Oh, he's been inside? He has. That's right, yeah. Yeah. He went inside for something naughty, didn't oh, he? Oh, I remember. A rent boy. He, he said he got tied up. He tied something. up a rent boy. He tied up a rent boy. But do you know what? Right. I think the rent boy must have made something up about that. I think so. Got a bit of money. Did he crash his car into his shop as well? He doesn't need to tie anybody up, does he? And then somebody graffitied on it. I don't know. He, he was out of it, for, wasn't he a bit of a mess for a few years? Yes, he was, yes. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah. He went fat and all that, didn't he? Mm. Was it boy George James who crashed his car into the shop and they... George Michael. Oh, George, George Michael. Michael. Oh, George Michael. <laughs> There's a story on George Michael as well. Yeah. That I have. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Okay. I was supposed to meet him. It all went fucking fucked up. The real George Michael or your George the Michael? The real George Michael. Oh, I'm thinking of the other George Michael. Which one? Didn't you tell us a George Michael story? The real George Michael story? The me? guy who f- f- founded Wham? Yeah. Andrew Ridgely? Yeah. And George, yes. Right. He was inside with me at the same time. Inside? Jail, yeah. Was that the thing at the toilet? Drink driving. No. Oh, drink driving. Drink the thing in the toilet. No. <laughs> My man. No. Didn't he, he, didn't he like solicit an undercover cop in the toilet in Soho or something? He did do that. Because yeah. he made a video out of it, didn't he? Yeah. Have you seen the video? No. Where he's in the toilet and all these cops come in and then they all get the trunks out and start dancing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes. So go on, what, what happened with you? Shamsi boy? Ahmed, anyway. Shamsi, your story was this. Uh, he was a r real estate agent in California. He worked with George. He had a thingy. George Michael came to him at 17 years old with Careless Whisper. Mm. Right? He went, right, okay. He went, nobody's going to do, do this. He went, okay, I will. Right? Anyway. Andrew Ridgely, boom, came on board. He went, no talent, yeah? But you look good. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> but you look good, so all right. So he founded Wham and he put all the money in. Anyway, cut a, cut a long story short, all yeah? All right, long story's long. They went all the fucking, they went uh, all the fucking way. Uh, Shamsi was caught for drink, drink, Driving offence once, and then he was caught again after two years or something. I think he was still under some sort of uh, a license, but he was only a little bit over the top. He liked his uh, champagne, but this is what happened. He was uh, driving back up our way, Morpeth. There was a girl that had just got raped and killed off this guy in Monk Seaton. And he got life. He went to jail. Her boyfriend said, right, I want to fucking die. I want to kill myself. So he stuck on a black coat and sat in the middle of a road around a corner, 70 mile an hour road. And Shamsi came on the fucking corner. Boosh, killed him. Anyway, got nicked. He was on the front page of the fucking sun. Seven years he got for that. Which really, he shouldn't have really, because he was fucking... If you want to kill yourself, don't put somebody else in fucking uh, jail for it. Because yeah. he, he was driving drunk. Yeah. yeah. Second time round. Uh... Mm. And because of the case and because of this, but people were saying, well, he wanted to die, the kid. Yeah. What was his charges, do you know? It was a uh, death by... Dangerous driving. Drink driving, yeah. And this was the guy who managed George Michael? Yes. Gotcha. Right, and then he had the real estate, and anyway, his wife, the fucking his partner, everybody left him in jail. And in jail, he just went fucking flipped because he, he lost was everything. yes, lost everything. lost everything. They just took everything off him. He used to write to George and say, "I know Chet and that George Michael's letters. I've seen him." He went, "Okay, will you meet Chet on the out?" And he's because he's like because he was getting loads of shit in jail. Shamsi, he was just like a Hindu geezer, about five foot four, small, penfold, glasses, uh, not the jail part, and he had loads of attitude. He had loads of attitude, mind, because he was like a millionaire. He, he And it doesn't go down, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't go <laughs> down. Check that out. Durham, door. especially not, yeah? yeah. And um, and I said, listen, and he was getting picked on. I went, and I went, listen to me. Come here. I'm a Take care of you. I went, right, okay. You went, okay. So I took care of him, followed him around every jail I went to, he went to, but he was bad with the screws. Like, if he was, like, cleaning his floor, um, a screw come and get the bucket of water, swill him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did uh, the whole of what he had to do, and then they put him in a mental hospital afterwards, and he was, like... Messaging me, I said, listen, I took care of you in jail and all that, yeah? Okay, I'll, I looked after you. People wanted to fuck you up. But they liked him in the end because he was giving the, the sc screws a hard time. So then you get light, don't you? You know, That's if you do things that. like that, yeah. yeah. So, well, well, at least he swills the fucking screws, yeah? <laughs> 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 so then, yeah. But then he did a full sentence, mental hospital afterwards. And then he moved up to these fucking flats in the west end of Newcastle, which is the worst part. And he was uh, messaging me. I fucking met him once. And I went, listen, brother, I went, you got no going down. I'll say, I looked after you in jail, yeah? We're both on the out now. Mm. So make your own moves. Make your life, yeah? You know, I took care of you then. I can't. I can't now, okay? One week later, he threw himself off the fucking building. George Michael died a week later. Yeah. Wow. He was supposed to hook it up. George was supposed to come to mine for a barbecue. 
<laughs> I was more gutted about the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I'm going to meet George Michael. He's going to be at my house. I went, mm. wow. Because he said, I will do that for taking care of me inside. Yeah. I went, well, do it, please. I went, that's all I want. Mm. Get me a meeting with George Michael. Mm. I went, I fucking love him, man. I went, bring him. I didn't happen. Because oh. he died and then he died. Bet you were gutted. Devastated. Yeah. What other celebrities did you have interactions with over the years? Kylie Minogue I've dated. What? Kate Moss. Naomi <laughs> Campbell. He's, he's you it no, I'm not. He's I haven't it. fucked him. I didn't fuck him, but I've kissed them all. Yeah? Sure, baby. <laughs> 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 Who was the best kisser? Naomi Campbell. <laughs> She's got nice lips. <laughs> you got to roll this down. You got to roll this down. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. That is impressive. Yeah. In the club scene, was this? This was back when I was 22, yeah. 23. Back then, I was a good-looking kid, you know? You've got some proper clickbait here, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> I kissed. But then I had the style, you know? I had all the style going down, you know? Yeah. I had all the clothes. You had the look. I had the shop. I was the only guy to get... M mentioned in L and Vogue magazine, you my did? shop. Yeah, wow. I got mentioned in that. Where was your shop at this point? Newcastle. Okay, so where are you yeah. meeting them at in Newcastle or in London? Fashion shows, oh. Milan, Paris, London. They're there. Yeah, they're How there, and I'm there. To go get a kiss. Pardon? How did you approach them to go get a kiss? No, well, I just talked to them, and then I meet them at the party afterwards. I think it was a Browns with Kylie. It was a Browns uh, with them other two. It was like different venues. VIP. It's only for the people that buy, you know, because I'm a buyer. Yeah, mm. you know, I have a shop. I'm mentioned, uh, so they were thinking I'm big roller, but really I wasn't that big roller at the time. Yeah, but it seemed that way to them, and so they thought, okay. But they must have looked me up and thought, not really. He ain't got that much money. He ain't got that much money. <laughs> so did you blow smoke up their ass to get a kiss? No, I didn't, man. I was just being me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've always been me. I never bullshit, man. I never bullshit a girl. Because you always trip up afterwards. Yeah. I don't trip up. So did they get any tongues in? Sure, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> any Frenchies? Kylie's shit. <laughs> Kylie's a shit kisser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just dry. <laughs> right, stop this. <laughs> all right, moving on from the moving on from kissing all the all those. Um, any other interactions with celebs back then? You must have had loads if you go on these parties. <laughs> yeah, there was loads there, but you know me, I probably... You know, I probably never even knew who they were. Yeah. Because you're high and you're pissed. You, I probably met loads of people mm. who I don't even fucking... I don't even fucking know. Yeah. I've, I've fucked people <laughs> who I meet now and they'll go to me, hi, Chet, and I go, hi. And I go... <laughs> You do not know who I am? I go, uh, no, please explain. Well, you fucked me once. How many, <laughs> how many girls are you fucking now? Hey? How many girls are you fucking now? Nobody now. Celibate. No, just I don't have one. <laughs> You're going to get loads of messages now. Chat single. You're setting him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right, so... so how old were you then when you did uh, the mission that we talked about in the first podcast where you ended up in the Spanish prison, you you smuggling the stuff out of Karachi? 28. You were 28? Yeah. So what other notable stuff happened before 28? Notable stuff was uh, working on the doors in that period because oh. I had to stop my shop, uh, ripped everybody off, which I regret, um, and then I became a doorman. So you said big gangsters were coming to the shop? Yes. Any famous names from back then? Like Yes. One of the big names, was it like Viv Graham back then? Viv, Lee Duffy, the Sears, the but Lee Sayers, Duffy, Brian Cockerell, the Sears, Brian the Harrisons, Conroy's. 
All the, the, the major families, yeah. So they were all coming in your shop? Well, not all of them. I ain't going to mention who did. I yeah. don't want to like... <laughs> <laughs> but I was in, yeah. Was it through the shop you established relationships with some yes, crime yes, families? Yes, 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 yes. Gotcha. Yes, 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 yes. And was it those relationships? Through the club scene. That's how it all linked through and then... And that's how you got your do job as a doorman. doorman. Was it your idea to be a doorman or did someone approach you? Somebody approached me first because um, I got rid of the shop and I just wanted an extra income because I was working at my mum and dad's shop, uh, just knocking everybody out now. <laughs> so you were a doorman. They were just like terrified to fuck. If you stole out of my shop, I would just smash you to fuck now. Yeah. You know, now I was like at a stage, yeah, where I have like hate for people. Mm. which was wrong, you know, so I shouldn't have been in that shop, you know, because I was like, I used to speak to punters bad as well, you know, I used to sp speak to them how they spoke to me. Of course, yeah. Because that was in my mind then. Uh, and that's wrong, you know, mm. uh, because some some are good, uh, but I just spoke to them all the same fucking way, you know, aggressive as fuck. The gear I was taking, the... Steroids, my anger levels, they were really high, and the hatred I had. And when I was in there, I just fucking hated them all. Is this the period of your life where you caught up with some of them? Because earlier you said all those ones who picked on me when I was younger yeah. and mm. bullied my family who yeah. were racist. I caught them all up. They got all knocked out later on. I caught them all up. How did you catch them up? <laughs> because you catch it because it's a small town. Right. Driving around, boom, stop the car. Yeah. Remember so me, bitch? Bang, slap. Mm. Knockout. I mean, there you go. Yeah. Wow. Stuff so like that. So there was a series, like... Or people would tell me, so-and-so's in a bar now. I would go, right, okay. And then I would go. The doorman, I would say to the doorman, right, take him out of your bar. Otherwise, I'm going to walk in there and smash that fucker all over in your bar. And they will go, okay. So they would, like, go in, take him out, bring him to me, and I'll go, right. Now you're getting it. Did, they, did you go to anyone's homes to type them? Houses, yes. 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 So you get their address? Yeah, loads of people. It's kind of like what we talked about with G Rilla, wasn't it? Like these people who attack you and bully you and do all this shit, but then they don't expect any comeback. No repercussions. Or if it, there is a comeback, then they run off and, and call the cops. Yeah, I know, but that yes, yes, you, they, they, yes, they the always cops. call the cops. They always call the cops, yeah? But you know what? They have to realise who you're fucking with. Who are you fucking with? Because I'm a man who doesn't have a wife. I don't have no kids in my house. I live on my own. I have massive fucking knives in my house. <laughs> come to my door. Come to my door. Do you know me? I beg people come to my fucking door. Did you have anyone come to your door? No, never. Uh, no, never, never. Because it's fucking really? because the size of my fucking knives that I'm gonna pull out. I'm like, come on, baby. You're knocking on my door here. Enter. <laughs> Did any of, these, any of these missions go wrong, the retaliation missions? No, none, none, none. Well, look, yeah, I got stabbed a couple of times as well, yeah? What's the stories behind the, the stabbings? Uh, there was one on the out where we went to deal with somebody. This was when I was working with, with my firm. Um, Middlesbrough, we went from... Our town, it was supposed to be like a sweet thing, blah, blah, blah. But it didn't turn up that way. They pulled out knives as well, which we, we, we weren't expecting. And I got a machete in the back of the neck. What was your response to that when it initially happened? Well, I macheted him first. <laughs> <laughs> but not good enough. So does the action start when you get macheted or is your adrenaline going? You, you well, go no, on? no, because I did it. But I think it wasn't enough. He must have just fucking... Then he hit me with one as well because I turned my fucking back and he got me in the butt of the neck. Have you got a scar there? Yeah. Oh, look. Mm. Oh, I think... Oh, oh, wow. I love your tattoos. Tattoos over it. Mm. Tattoos are over my scars. So what, was, what happened in the aftermath of that? Nothing. Taxation done. Uh, taught them a lesson. We got hurt, they got hurt. 
Thought you'd just leave it at that one. <laughs> 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 we don't want any more, you know. And they said no as well, so we just left it at that, innit? <laughs> what, what was your first day as a doorman like? First day as a doorman? Right, they were fucking a bit crazy. Uh, I just thought it was like a laugh. Um, girls, girls are all over you. Uh, doorman work, you just, uh, then you don't need a badge. You could just like, if somebody took the piss, we would just do them, slap them, knock them out, empty the pot. Girls were like, uh, this is my first week. Would say, okay, you're hot, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Fire exit door, open, boom. Out the back? Yeah. <laughs> Blowjob styles there. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> so you're making up for the lost time of your teenage years. I went mental, yeah, I went mental. I shouldn't have been held back. Yeah. I shouldn't have been held back. That's what happens if you hold somebody back. You go fucking insane. Yeah. What was the camaraderie like amongst the doormen? Was there any situations where there was loads of them on just a couple of you guys, doormen, and you had to, like, bolt up the fucking not doors and shit? No, not, uh, yes. running, running battles. Once on, one, once on the door, yes. That scar I have there on my head, yeah? Oh, yeah. With that one there? Yeah. yeah. Story on this one. I worked with uh, Greg. Greg on the doors. He was an ex-marine boxer. And Pontyland, but we were both banned. We were both banned from working on the doors because we, we never had a badge. So we were like a legal doorman. So we were working in this area, Terrace Hall, which is posh as fuck. Footballers all live there. It's all nice and cool. But them kids up there are a bit fucked up. Anyway, there's one guy coming. He thinks he's a head honcho. He was selling all the pills in the club. Fridays are busy, he sells all the fucking pills, and he goes, right, this is a geezer who sells the pills. For me, it was my first night there. He walks in, had an argument, Greg just goes, bam, uppercutted him, knocked him out. He was big. Anyway, push out, carried him out. Anyway, went, and then we were having a laugh about it. And then... Uh, Greg goes, I fancy a fag, yeah, I've got my fag, fags in the car, how will let's go out? So, so we walked out, came back, and then there was about 10 or 12 with hoods on, right? With bats Ooh. and everything. We went, we didn't even know it was for like us. We, we didn't even know at the time. We were going, eh, what, what the fuck's this? Yeah? <laughs> and then they were coming, and then they were coming at us, and they were pulling everything out, and I went, Right, here we go, okay. But like a knuckle duster I used to ha have then, yeah? So I stuck that on, yeah? I went, right, come on, let's fucking go then, yeah? Let's fucking go. Was it just bats they had? Not nice? No, no, bats. Yeah, bottles bats. also, yeah. bottles also. The bottle, that, uh, yeah. Anyway, they were like coming on, a fucking hour then, you wanna fucking go? Greg, who did the damage, stood at the back. He was going, Go on, check. Go on, check. <laughs> yeah, pussy down on this bottle, you mother, motherfucker. Anyway, I'm a fucking hour then. Come on then. But they're all scared. They're all like, like, doing a move and then going backwards. Yeah, I'm fucking come near me, come near me. Yeah. Bottles were coming. Boom, boom, boom. Anyway, dodged them, dodged them. They were coming. <laughs> I was like, hit one, bang, hit another one, and then one just come with a bottle and went smashing my fucking head. I went, right, okay, come on, fucking hour then. But blood was eyes, yeah? And I couldn't see. I was like, Greg, I can't fucking see. 
And then Greg goes, right, fucking hour inside. And then we close the door. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and then we close the doors. Yeah. And then we had to call the fucking feds. But then I still went out on that night. I went to the hospital, stitched up, but I still went out on night clubbing. How long did the police take to come when you called oh, them? Fast, fast, fast there, yeah. fast. Because it was like a major attack and it was like all on fucking. What about people pulling guns? Yes, on the door, yeah. Yeah, what happened? It's just a big one, isn't it? Yeah. It's probably got no in the gun, but they were just like, uh, because. Flash it. We're just on the door, £10 an hour at a time, £12 an hour, and uh, if you upset people, this and that, and then they just go and go like that, go like that. Is that what you want? But that is a different league to us, because doormen are not, geez, they're not involved in that world. People s seem to think doormen are hard as fuck and this and that. No, they're not. They're not. If you put one of them up against our lot, it's different. Because we handle things in a different way. Because they just want to have a fucking fight, but we will take it like further and further and further. That's what I learned. So when goal, guns were pulled on you, what, what did you do when you was a doorman? Have you got any stories of that happening? Like someone got beat up, come back with a gun? Twice, yeah, twice. Uh, third time they came back, but I wasn't on shift. <laughs> it was somebody else and he went someone just he, he, he just phoned he went someone just come now stuck a gun in my face we were because this is when I was barred and I was, and I was working at this bar the Kizzy it was called in uh, Shields it was a dump a dive it was the worst of the worst that used to get in there all the pimps all the drug dealers it was just like prostitutes who used to come there um, loads of people got fucked there, sexually in the back, not even on the floor, just just like on the grass. <laughs> and, but there was loads of drums every day, loads of drama, and nobody wanted that job. But I took it on because I because I wasn't allowed anywhere else. But then I said, listen, I need a night off. And then on this <laughs> night off, my other mate was there. He went, check, someone just come and stuck a gun in my face. <laughs> but he went, you're not brown. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not you, yeah. Someone you kicked out. Yeah, obviously, I fucked up. Yeah. And he never came back again? Well, no, no, because now he's been seen, on he? Mm. And now I know. Did anyone come back with a gun on another occasion for you? Uh... Not on the door there. Uh, d on the door, two to th three times, they pull the gun, but they just give it a little wave. Mm. You know, it's like bollocks, really. It don't mean fuck all. Mm. If you're going to do it, shoot it, baby. If you're going to pull the motherfucker out, mm. you know? So they just like, they want to be portray themselves as tough to their yes. mates, things yes. like that. Yes, yes. Mm. But it don't really mean no, because anybody... If you're gonna pull it, use a motherfucker, man. That's the way I see it. I wouldn't just go and just fucking go like that, no. If I go and take one, you fucking go and do it, boom. So you talked about like taxing people and stuff. What was the transition from being a doorman to going into the underworld, taxing people? But I didn't, uh, right, taxing people, I didn't really tax that many. But I was involved in taxation with after my sentence, okay. Spanish one, when we were running all the doors with the pimps, uh, we were running all the prostitution, mm -hmm. and the police were working with us. Um, they were working alongside because we kept all the prostitutes off the streets. And the police said, you guys are doing an excellent job because there's no, we don't have a prostitution problem in Newcastle. And you were keeping them safe from all the, yes. all the dramas? Because if there are girls that walk the streets, we had dykes who would just go and give them a fucking slap and say, if you want a fucking job, you work here. And if they're not good enough, you can't fucking walk the streets. Mm. Sit at home. So we cleaned up the streets in Newcastle, really. And did rival gangs, did you have beefs with, beef, yeah. beef with them over yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. 
one time there was uh, a couple of <laughs> gangs of what uh, who wanted to do what we're doing, but we had a monopoly on it. Mm. We said nobody else is allowed to open up. If we seen an ad, because uh, then back then you had to advertise in the sport, the sport paper, yeah. Mm. A little ad. It costs a hundred and twenty quid for a week. Just three fucking lines. It's expensive as fuck. This is where we advertise our flats, our girls, and then we've seen a new ad. We'll go right. Our tails all pick up. We go right. We have to close somebody down. And so then, it was um, ad wars. So, so you'd see a new advert see, pop up. Yeah, if you see a new ad. And you'd hunt them down and shut them down. No, we hunt them down. And then, How? How'd you find out? Right, okay. We phone the number, right? And then we have like a, uh, a guy who looks like a punter who will like arrange to fuck her, yeah? To fuck the brass. Mm. And she always goes, you have to go to this phone box for me from there where they can see you, yeah? And then they see, right, okay, he's all right, boom. Now you, you can enter. And then when he enters, we just go in at the same time, but we got masks and machetes, chainsaw. And uh, chainsaw, <laughs> yeah. Graham, he just used to go, meow, cut off the sofas and everything. Meow, meow. And we used to say, right, who are you working for? Where are your pimps? Send them down now. And we just used to sit and say, where are we waiting for them? Send them here now. You wouldn't harm the girls or anything, no? No, because we want the girls to work for us. Okay. Taking over, aren't we? Did the pimp show up or were they scared? Did the fuck? Nobody fucking showed up. <laughs> 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 they said that we got guys four like guys here with masks, uh, <laughs> machetes, <laughs> chainsaws. Uh, <laughs> and we just sat there. They're going, no, no, no. Just leave it. So they just left it? They left it and then they have to work for us. And then there was one time where another gang, they said, okay, we want to start doing it. And then... My pal, who, okay, I won't name, yeah? But he was, like, fucking badass, yeah? Uh, we said, right, okay, we're, we're all going to go. He went, no, let me go my fucking own. They were all there in the meeting. Boom, he walks in, boom, with a gun. He goes, anybody got anything to say to me? He went, no one's doing fuck all. I went, eh, go on. Any word? Nothing. He went, yeah, exactly. And he walked back out. Wow. Yeah. What about if, like... A customer did something bad to a woman? Yes. Got took away. We will fuck him up. Get the uh, chainsaw out. Well, Graham once, he stabbed one punter, this geezer, he come in, fucked one of the girls, didn't pay her, took all the money out of her fucking bag and went into town, giving it the big one. We got told him that, right, he was in the Ritty nightclub. Uh, we went in. And Graham seen him on the fucking dance floor having a dance. He went up, stabbed him 11 times in the ass Jeez. on the dance floor. And then we told the doorman, hand over all the cameras. Mm. Bush. And they did because they were that scared of us. Wow. We had that fucking thing there, yeah? We, we were just, I was really bad then as well. We had that, uh, that rep where you could just do what the fuck you want. Like, I didn't even bother even just going to the toilet for like a piss on the bar I would just like, get my dick out and have a piss and the doorman would see and wouldn't say fuck all they said dare say it dare say it it was like a case of like dare do it dare we're waiting we can't fucking wait and make a move so when you got a name that big though it always attracts someone who wants to fucking make a name off you huh. did, any, did it attract anyone like that no <laughs> <laughs> no, because they're going to die, aren't they? <laughs> no, it's simple, it's simple. Yeah. Either you're going to die or I'm going to die. Yeah. And why do that? Because I ain't banging in your cage, baby, so just leave mine alone, you know? Because there's a lot of crime families in Newcastle, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've got rivalries and things going yes, on and on. Yes, yes, yes. What was your role in that? What was our role? I was like the enforcer in our firm. The enforcer. Uh, we had a guy in charge, a second guy in charge, and then we had other two 
and we were the enforcers. Uh, but there was four of us really, yeah? But there was only two, me, me and the other one that actually did the work. If it needed more, and then boom, the other four come in, bush. It's just to enforce our area that nobody's allowed to do this, you know? And if you do it, and then... You're done. Closed down, yeah. Did you have to remain incognito because of the authorities and stuff, or did you just live openly? Like moving around. Right, it took them, it, it cost them 5.5 million to bring us to court. Halogen 5, it was called. They said, do not arrest Sandu or this or that, because we were all just pissed and high all day long, just used to drive, speed, do what we wanted. But they were said, don't stop them. Don't stop them. We were allowed to be stopped. Gathering intelligence. Yes. They went, don't stop him for the shitty fucking charge. Just let him do what he fucking wants. 21 officers alone were like on me. 21. So you ran Birm uh, Birmingham, Newcastle? Back then, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Were you ever scared at any point? No. Never? No. Fear is for others. Bruce Lee. <laughs> 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 What, what was your first involvement with the police? My, my first involvement? In what way? Like when they... When they Bent-wise. First arrest, maybe? The first arrest? Yeah. The first arrest, I told you, didn't I, when I was uh, nicking <laughs> film covers. Um, for box covers, I just got a caution. My dad had to come and get me. I was 15 or something. Uh, it wasn't nice, you know? But it would. But I thought no. I thought, okay, it's okay though. How how long were you in the sales uh, sales? Sales for a few a few hours until my dad had to come and get me. Right. So you were still living that strict household yes, regime. Yes. yes. So what was your dad's attitude to your arrest? Okay, I got a licking done after that. Belt out. Mm. Which was quite common back then, wasn't it? Corporal yeah. punishment. Yeah. 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 Did you get like grounded or anything or? Grounded. Grounded anyway. Yeah. I wasn't anyway. allowed out. Yeah. 21, baby. Grounded. I was like, that was my life anyway. I had to work anyway. Mm. But then you just get a licking on top of it. Mm. So for that 21, like, being released, yeah. what was the day of your release like? The day of release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that why you yeah. went to it? That's when I had the shop and stuff, yeah. That's when like, I thought, wow, life has like so much more. Mm. Not just where I was stuck in that shop in a council state. Um, there's so much fucking more here. Mm. And it's opened my eyes to everything. So the whole world opened up mm. to you. And they're all coming to me as well. Mm. I thought, wow, girls, like girls were coming to me as well. I went, eh? Are they for real? <laughs> like, I didn't even understand any of it. You know, I didn't get it. I didn't get any of it. Did you imagine that 10 years later you'd be in the thick of the underworld? No, not then. Then I just wanted clothes shops to um, have another clothes shop, to have another one, Leeds, Manchester, blah, blah, blah. So that would have been your dream? Yes, that was, that was my initial thing. Do you think that the drugs made it more normal to do what you did? The drugs took me away from everything, didn't it? Took away from your original game plan? Yes. They just changed the whole fucking plan system. Did, uh, was there anyone around you who tried to put the brakes on? No. No. None of your family members? No one tried to stop you? They didn't really know about it. I kept it a secret, you know. As far as they was concerned, my mum, my dad, I didn't drink or smoke still or take any drugs or do anything. Wow. Was that hard? No, because I never... Did you go around there often or...? You know, it was only out. And then I would just come back late and did not see it and then you sleep it off and then you're right the next day. But surely there came a point when those worlds collided. With the drugs of my mum and dad and all that, yeah. Uh, 
when the house got raided for drugs and that stuff. <laughs> How old were you then? Uh, that happened a few times before I got arrested. Three to four times. They raided it once for the credit card fraud because um, they raided it then and then they told everybody this is what you've been arrested for. Brixton I landed in. Uh, that was the first raid. But then there was no uh, drugs involved then. Um, what was the conversation like with your parents after the raid? It was bad, you know. Uh, because it's never happened, you know. And, you know, we can't believe the police came in there with the shoes on and they walked around the whole... So they house. were both there, present when this yeah, happened? Yeah. Right. And they searched the fucking gaff, blah, blah, blah. It was like shame, you know. It's like shame on my part. But then it happened a few times. So were you thinking you've got to get out of that house to take the heat away from it? Was that, did that play a role in your moving? Not really. <laughs> I just thought, because when, when I used to get nicked, you know, they used to say, right, you're allowed to call. I'm like, right, okay, I want to phone my mum. I'm like, go on then. Sometimes they don't even allow you that fucking call, right? Okay, but I phone my mum and I just speak in Indian and I go, Ma, you know what to do. <laughs> and she'll clear everything out and throw it over the bank beds. <laughs> she knows where everything is because I tell her where everything is. Oh, Ma, you know what to do. So she chuck it over the fence, you said? Over the fence, bagged up, push, gone. <laughs> <laughs> I bet someone come behind you or else back then. Mm, they had a Christmas come early, a someone walked behind your house. Didn't no, you? we had woods at the back of our house. It was like it was like that style, yeah? It was yeah. all woods. It's all woods. <coughs> Looking back, would you have done anything different? Yeah, probably. Uh, my ex-wife, my first wife. Three kids I've got with her. I don't have no contact with any of them. That's through my wife. I should have played that bit a bit different. And that's the only thing I say. But everything else has been a learning curve. That and the closed shops. Yeah. yeah. So if you're getting all these people seeing you online, you must have millions of views now on all these videos. Do you know if any of these family members that you've not heard from have any of them like watched this stuff and reached out to you? I did get a message, yes, once or twice, but it was like late in the morning, two o'clock off my kids, one of them of my son, but I thought he's only messaging me probably because he's high. He said, okay, I want to I, I, I talk to you. And then I messaged him back, but then no answer. How old are your children? Uh, the age from 20, Three to thirty-three, four. Two girls. Two two boys. One boy I see, my my youngest. He's clever. He's not like into crime. He's totally anti-crime. Uh, he's so cool. Parliament. He's done a masters in ancient history. Wow. And he wants a job in. Parliament, that's his thing. Journalism he wants to do. He knows all about you. He knew about you before, you knew before I knew about you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he went, oh, you know Sean Atwood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how does that make you feel when you see your son doing so? Well, yeah, brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. My other one, he joined the Marines. Uh, at 19, he's six foot three, but he was like a handful. He got kicked out, fighting. He carries my name. I don't know if that had ought to do with it. Mm. People might have said something, and he probably thought, oh, fuck my dad, I can't give a fuck. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what was said or done, but he got fucking hoid out. What's your relationship with your immediate family members these days? Uh... My mum, excellent. My dad's okay. They're all older now, you know. 
they're all older now and you got to give them a little bit. You know, it's uh, it's okay, you know, because uh, in back in the day, you know that they were harsh to you, they were bad to you, and I wouldn't treat my kids like that. And, um, but you just got to know why, man. It is what it fucking is, man. What about your siblings? I don't speak to them, my brother and my sister. No. Has your mum and dad watched any YouTube stuff? Mm, I don't know. I, uh, my mum has, yes. What does she think about it? Uh, she says her English is a bit like, she goes, because I talk fast, she goes, what are you saying there? What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he laughing? <laughs> so I have to like sort of interpret it for her. Yeah. yeah. But my old man, no, I don't think he has. But uh, my sisters and brothers and their kids, blah, 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 they watch it and this and that. But I don't have no contact with them. I don't care what they think about me or whatever. So Jane's often talking about Mama Wars food. Mm. Chet's mum's food is off the scale, isn't it? He yes. Said. Yeah. 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 Can you get me some sent down? Yeah. Come <laughs> sent down. <laughs> yeah. What well, What was it we had that day? Can you remember? Some kind of bread. Brought it. Uh, cauliflower, onion, broccoli, potato. That was it, I think. Oh, On like two, yeah. Yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my mum's all cool. That bit's all good now, you know, it's all okay now, they're all old. Uh, my old man, I ask him things and, you know, I say things to him. Um, like, I even got, like, uh, fucked up for having a shave. S 17 I was in the shop, bum fluff I had, right? People used to take the piss out of it, okay, in the shop, okay, I was on the fucking tail, I was fucked up anyway, yeah? So I thought, fuck this, I'm gonna have a shave. So I shaved it off. My old man, he went out, he come back, he was drunk, he went, right, you wanna shave? I got a licking on that. Mm. And I'm working in the shop every day, I clean the house, I cook, I do everything, I stay inside, and because I shaved, because people take the piss out of me, I got a licking on that bit as well. Wow. This is how harsh it was. You come so far. But what do you like? What's your dreams now? What do you want from life? The dreams now. Well, I did have a girlfriend. Uh, what's your Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> the dreams now, yeah. What I'm thinking of doing. I was talking to James about this actually earlier. Is. Um, Hugh Hefner's dead, right? Right. <laughs> Thug Mansion. Fuck. Oh, I'm selling fuck. Thug. Fuck. Yeah, fuck. Oh, I thought you said fuck. <laughs> well, it will be Fuck Mansion. <laughs> thug Mansion. Play by Mansion, no, Thug Mansion. Fuck. Right, girls can stay there for free. I do, thanks. Stay there for free, right? Uh, you can get on with your daily business, blah, blah, blah. But every room will have a camera with audio in it because I don't want no r r rape you're claims. Talk, you're talking about a brothel, right? It's not a brothel, it's my house. But it's Thug Mansion. Thug Mansion. It's only me who fucks him. <laughs> oh, God. Like Hugh Hefner. And you film it? No, it doesn't get filmed. No. The cameras are only there in case there's a rape claim against me. Right. Because you know what girls are like. So how are you going to turn this into a reputable uh, business then? Reputable business is easy. Are they doing webcams? Yeah. Get filmed daily. No, no, there ain't no webcams <laughs> happening. Nothing, no, no, no. Yeah. Nothing like that, yeah? yeah. Um, it will get filmed daily. It will be like a mansion on its own with its own grounds, electric gates. I'll have my dogs, all this, the pool, all them styles. The girls will walk around in the foot underwear all day long. People can come. Visit for a half a day. Convention. People can come to visit. Tourism. Tourism. Two hundred yeah, pounds for half a day, and you get fed, and you get drinks, and you get to meet me, and you get to meet the girls, and the girls will sit in your lap. But that's as far as it goes. How many people at a time? But you can get whatever, six, seven. The house will be massive, huge. <laughs> Is this going to be in Newcastle? 
around that area, yeah. Yeah, property's quite... Cheap, I can get a lot there, there for a mil. Yeah, I can get a lot there for a mil. Yeah. A lot for a mil. Are you up to filming in Thug Mansion, James? <laughs> Thug Mansion, baby. Wow. Yeah. Wait, that's your main focus, is getting this... Well, not my main focus, but... My main focus is the book first, yeah? Oh, yeah, the, the book. The book, Netflix, uh, they've said that they want to make on this. Mm. So we're all going to be involved in this, yeah? yeah. We're going to make this roll. Um, do that. Thug Mansion will pay for itself. Yeah. The filming alone, Insta, <laughs> follows. People are going to want to know. They want to see who's there, what girls are walking around. This has really soothed my hangover. <laughs> like this idea of Thug Mansion. Yeah. Wow. Thug Mansion. It has to be Thug Mansion now. Yeah. I just watched some Vice um, video about some mansion in America where the, everyone just goes and it's just bizarre. There's all these drinking games and partying and everything. I can't remember. What, that beer pong? All, all kinds of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, looked like, it looked like it was quite fun. But it's made a name for itself now. It's like a brand. Yeah. But I can see how Thug Mansion could easily be oh. make a name and yeah. become a brand. Yeah, easily, easily. Yeah. yeah, easily. Yeah. And Chet, we're publishing Chet's book. Chet's book should be available in the new year, actually. Yes. The, the professionals are doing the editing on it now. So we should have more word on that in the new year. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. And it's gonna, isn't it part of a series of books? That's just yes, yeah. part one. The first one, yeah. So what is the whole theme of all the books? Is my life, yeah. This one takes me up till 2000 and 2002. Yeah. From when I was three years old. Yeah. So from 71 yeah. till then. So way more detailed. And then my second book is my, uh, what I did after that, when I came out of Spain, when I got involved with the firm and we were blackmailing, extorting, doing drugs, prostitution controlling all that mm. and working with Ben Coppers, giving us information just so they could fuck the brass. Mm. And they went down as well, the coppers. And then the third book will be what I'm doing now. Yeah. And there's loads more. Mm. Needed yeah. on to Thug Mansion. <laughs> Thug Mansion, baby. I can't wait. I know. <laughs> Who's going to choose your furniture? Me. <laughs> like, I'll do it, kindly. <laughs> you see my wacky taste. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 So, cool. Come on up. <laughs> no, they're cool, man. So they can live for free. There's no tenancy agreement. So I can throw you out at any fucking time I want if you piss me off. <laughs> Just don't piss me off, innit? <laughs> who who, pay, who pays for all the food and all the Me, meals? me, me. Everything, what everything. About their maintenance? Like the like rent, hair everything. Hair no, well, that's their fucking shit, isn't it? Well, how are they going to make money if they're not? Because they have jobs. They can do what the fuck they want in the daytime. Just do what you want. They can leave, fuck man. You can leave. Yeah, yeah. You're not a prisoner. You're not a slave. It's not a slave, yeah? It's not a slaveism, yeah? <laughs> You're allowed to leave, yeah? <laughs> the gates, the gates all, yeah. Accommodation, bills... Everything. Food provided. Maintenance. Chefs. Go on. Will be there. You go out, do your day job. Go out, do your day job. They get to keep all the money. But at night, you got to walk around in in in, uh, yeah. in the underwear. I've got like uh, guys who are coming. I expect you there. Do you expect them to have part time jobs though? Because if they have full time jobs. Well, they're all prostitutes anyway, aren't they? <laughs> Well, what else are they? What? Your harem, your harem, <laughs> is how you fra how you phrased it. You said they're not going to be working in the day in that. Section. Well, I know, but they're going to make money, aren't they? They're going to do what they're doing. But you said they could have go out and have office jobs in so the day, modelling like... work or office jobs. Yeah. Well, yeah, if, you, if they want. So they don't have. To if there's some. Normal that? girls, okay, if a normal girl wants it, so it's not that's sex even better. Workers only no, is it fuck? I'd rather have nice girls, <laughs> normal <laughs> girls. <laughs> I'd rather have nice girls there. I never get a day off because of podcasting now. So I'm running a company, so I'll be no use to you. <laughs> Just get decent girls there, yeah. yeah. It'd be better. Yeah, yeah. And will you be the only male? When it's out of office hours of no visitors. A leopard skin robe I'm going to have on, yeah? With all the fur and all that, yeah? Right. 
<laughs> I'm a big chair and all that. <laughs> what was it? Yeah. What was it? Tug of was that one guy, the woman on each, oh, each knee. Yeah. What was his name? Big D. Big, big D. Heavy D. Heavy, Heavy D. D. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heavy D. Yeah. Oh, may as well do it, innit? <laughs> You may as well do it. So we're going to wrap it up on the note of Thug Mansion. So my final question is, you know, obviously, um, last time me and you met, Wild Man was there. And um, we had a little talk about him last night. And, you know, you, you said about the energy of doing podcasts and everything. Big shoes to fill, Wild Man. Yes. As a co-host. Yes, yes. Jen. Is doing amazing, isn't she? Jenny is cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah she's lovely. Yeah. yeah, I love her, man. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is leading to the final question, which is, in Thug Mansion, uh -huh. this royal robe you're going to be wearing, yeah. will it be organic cotton? We'll have to sort that, won't we? <laughs> or sustainable, at really? least. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> If I'm doing it, I'm doing it properly. No, no, no. no. <laughs> organic will do. Yeah. Organic or sustainable. Do organic. Yeah. Publicise all your shit on there. Yeah. Even we'll though the girls, yeah. the knickers, lingerie, has to be organic cotton. <laughs> Make sure you can see through it, though. <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested in Jen's organic cotton... The links are in the description box. All of Chet's links are also in the description box. Yep. Contact him on his uh, socials if you are interested in his business. Or his, date. His business that he's running. That... Or join him Thug Mansion. Oh, yes, join him. Join Thug Mansion. Once we advertise this, I'm sure there'll be a list of girls. Applications. You're taking applications. Yeah, I've, I've got a personal assistant who's going to vet all the girls. <laughs> What's the time frame on Fog Mansion being open? Well, my houses are up for sale now. Right, this yeah. is going to happen fast. They're all paid for cash, so I'm going to sell them, so I'm just going to get a million pound house up there, boom. 2022 Fog Mansion is active. Yes. Yes, I right, so it. applications oh apply now. Applications apply if you want to live there for free. I wish set up a studio room. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to expect my fucking dick as well, yeah? This is all I'm fucking saying, yeah? <laughs> When I pull it out, yeah, don't go, uh, excuse me. Uh, I'll go, excuse me, get out. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed today's podcast. We've come to know more about the inner workings of chess. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, if you've not seen if you've not seen parts one, two, and three of Chet's story where he tells his story chronologically. They'll be in the description box. Part four was just a mad one with Wild Man. I'll put that, that down there in the description box. Huge thank you to James, who spent the night with Chet, actually, in Guildford. We're not in the same fucking room, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was spending the night with Chet in Guildford, James. It was good. Enjoyable. It was yeah. good. good we were up late. No felonies. No, early night, wasn't it? Early night. Yeah. He went, I went, early night. I made a couple of calls. Bosh. I was up by half ten, eleven. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, please let us know in the description box what you thought about this. If you'd like to see more of Chet in future podcasts, yeah. take her out there. All girls, yeah? Thug Mansion is coming, baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's this series on Thug Mansion now? This series of Yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. Right, group hug. Oh, yeah, group hug. Right, okay. Chet's with me. <sighs> yes, mm. nice one, brother. Brilliant. Man. Excellent. Right, we've got Chet back by demand again. Everyone just saying yeah, when you're getting Chet back on. Can't get enough of him on the channel. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of views on his podcast. Must be over a million now, actually, of all the clips. Yeah, sure. There's a link in the description box to Chet's playlist. Now, if you don't know Chet's story yet, Chet was in Supermax in Spain for the biggest steroid pill bust in the history of Spain, wasn't it? Like hundreds, uh, hundreds of thousands control of... Controlled drugs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Japan, yeah. So he ended up in Supermax, and 
Today we've got his co-defendant, Harry, is going to be telling his story about his journey through Spanish prison with Chet and what happened with the drug smuggling. And of course we've got Wildman co-interviewing, back after the lockdown. Wildman's playlist is down there in the description box, as well as his t-shirts. Over 100 videos now of Wildman's on the channel, so hours and hours of endless content. Well, thanks for coming down, guys. Um, before we get into your story, Harry, you're saying you just had a situation at the weekend. Right, yes. Okay. First weekend after lockdown, right? First weekend. Uh, people should have known what's going to happen, right? I was in uh, Bradford on Saturday night, staying at my friend's, my friend's apartments. Anyway, over this COVID thing, he just spent a lot of money in these apartments. Yeah, everything's brand new. Kitchens, bathrooms, the flooring, the sofas. He's done a full revamp because he had the time to do it, you know, because everything's shut. Yeah. So, right, bam, he went to work. Excellent apartments in Bradford, Peckover Street, Paul Anderson. You know, I've asked you if I can tell this story. He says yes. Right, so what happened? I was there with QFC fighters, MMA fighters. We were having an after party there. But at the same time, there's parties happening everywhere else. And, um, there's an apartment next to us, there's about, there's only four people out in the apartment, but in the one next to us, there's about 25 people in, one doorman to take care of two buildings. There's two entrances, so you can only take care of one entrance, so the other entrance, free floor, anyway. He was having drama, he couldn't help it, people just coming in and out, in and out, Paul was stressed, this, that, anyway. She was the one guy, innit? Too much, yeah, because it was the amount of people, you know, it's the first weekend after lockdown, you know, so you should expect that it's going to go a bit crazy, everyone's going to go a bit stupid, and it did. Anyway, we turfed them out of the one next door, four people allowed only. Uh, the security, I just helped him out with it. And anyway, the night went on, and then these girls next door, they all started fighting, feds come, boom, nicked them all, yeah, there was loads of fighting in the street outside, it was all going a bit stupid. But we just kept out of that bit. And then, because no one's allowed in this apartment, they all ended up in this other apartment in the other building. And there was about 60, 60 Asian lads there. There's about th three girls, 60 Asian lads. So I don't know what's happening there, right? <laughs> and uh, <coughs> and they were all on them uh, canister shit, you know that? Balloons. Oh, yeah. Fuck's all nice that about. Nice. Fuck's all that about. See them all around the road. Fuck around. Oh, God, what's all that about? Anyway, they were all on that, coming in, coming out. And then Paul, it was this about three o'clock in the morning. He said, guys, uh, I've called, the, the police have been called, but they refused to attend the incident because there's that many Asian kids there. We don't have the police manning to handle it. You know, it's the first week in that lockdown and they're spread all over. Then well, we can't do it. So Paul said, right. So I just got my fighters together and we just stormed it. Right, okay. To the guys where I stormed it, right? I do apologize to the two that I headbutted and the other two that I hit. Right, okay. I've got a mark on my head. <laughs> but this is like a bad headbutt, yeah? But I did that on purpose because I didn't want to hit your nose. I hit your forehead on purpose, yeah? Because I didn't want to send you to hospital. So, but I do apologize anyway. For putting my hands on all you people, yeah. And uh, anyway, we just stormed it, and all these guys. There was just like a, I've never seen so many people in one room. About sixty kids. He misplaced the head, but he doesn't apologize at all. <laughs> <laughs> if you imagine sixty people in the room the size of this, there was just a sea of people. We couldn't believe it. I thought, wow, what are you doing here? And it's a brand new apartment, you know. This is a thing, you know. He just spent a lot of money on him. He thought, what the fuck is happening here? Because the doorman, he fucked off at two o'clock. He couldn't handle it because the lads just stormed the door. And nobody could keep control and said that they had knives, this and that. But I said, fuck your knives. Yeah, I went, I've got fast hands. Show me your knife. I'll take it and I'll cut you inside out. And nobody pulled a knife. Uh, thanks to Star Hussein, who did calm the situation down. And another couple of lads... Uh, but they dispersed, but my boys were thinking, wow, because everybody now is on the front street, there's steps going down, but listen, we have to stand on the steps, we don't go further, we just guard our point, and the owner was overwhelmed, really, yeah, with what happened, you know, yeah. because uh, that could have turned into something nasty, you know, couldn't it? Really quick, bloodbath, everyone's high, 3am, first weekend of lockdown, 
And the police don't even want to come near. Check that one out. Pathetic, aren't they? The That's police sexy. force. Yeah, whatever. That works pretty much. <laughs> Listen, they refuse to come. It's fucking unbelievable, isn't it? Because <laughs> they're scared of a riot. They say, oh, God, it's going to be another one here. Because they only had about four to five men. And we can't send four to five men to move 60. Asian kids, yeah, but then this going to go fucking shit. You just did it. Swag out. Well, I did it, yeah. Yeah. Hire me, please, Force. Why don't you hire me? (laughs) Moving. I want a thousand pounds an hour, though. (laughs) Moving on to Harry. (laughs) Can you tell us um, how you met Chet and your complete relationship with him? Before we get to the hardcore stuff, Chet has thrown a few surnames out over the videos. Just use people's first names, though, so we don't get any blowback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't say relationship, you make yourself gay. What, was, what, was, what, was, what were you talking about before we came in here? Huh? You didn't get any little chocolate bars under your pillow? No, bastards. <laughs> your prison pillow, the predators didn't leave you any chocolate no, bars. Not one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> chocolate bar. <laughs> I had the belt of that one, mate. That's a good sign, isn't it? <laughs> Chocolate bar, like, oh, who gave me that? <laughs> and then some is it, fucking... Is it, is it true, like, you bought yourself some chocolate bars so you didn't feel so lonely? Every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I used to buy them every Saturday, remember? You did, right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, 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 I was in Towers Jail and word came through. One of your family members had sent you some money from England. Word came through, you spent the entire thing on brownies for yourself. Oh, they fit them fuckers. <laughs> Nicely. <laughs> Don't you use the prison food for a while and then yeah, you get street food. Death. Oh my god. I must have had about thirty one day. Yeah, I was told you just ate brownie after brownie after brownie all day long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Back to Harry. Right. Well, it's a long story. Right. Goes back Take a long your time. Way. Where Take should we time. start from? Uh, Idols. beginning. Pakistan. Idols. Idols. Idols go on. So how I met them, we're talking back in the mid nineties, ninety five, ninety six. Yes. Um, I used to work as a glass collector in a, a, a really cheesy bar in Newcastle called Idols. Yeah. Uh, the girls used to wear bikinis behind the bar. The guys had to wear vests with ripped shorts of your ass. Cut off shorts. Cut off shorts. We all need to take a piss out of our friends, right? It was all funny. I know. You've got to start somewhere, you? Cut off shorts, bro. Imagine a while, man, cut off shorts. Cut off shorts. <laughs> and a belly shot. <laughs> you want a vest? No, they want a vest yeah. tied up. They yeah. let tied yeah. up. Yeah. Tied up. <laughs> and the, and the, the shorts had the ass cut out. Oh, oh so yeah, the ass go, is hanging. You had your all ass the, has to be hanging. You had all the mums that were grabbing your ass and everything. And I was like only 17 or 16, yeah. 17. Yeah. And I was like, that was a skinny kid. And uh, this God, but the this, boozer this, was a rough old boozer, yeah. This, yeah. It was in the west end of town. And Monday, right, Monday... In fact, Monday, or Sunday, every day we had eight wow. dormant on. Even on a Monday, Tuesday night, because it's that rough, wow. you needed that many dormant on there. So this is the type of place we're talking about. Yeah? You had me walking around in a little shorts and a vest. Yeah. So you can imagine, you know, I wanted, I wanted a job. <laughs> you know, and I, I wanted, I, I was only a skinny kid, so I wanted a, you know, a bit of a better image. And of course, he was like the biggest, I'm not kidding you, the biggest dormant you've ever seen. Not ever seen, come on, man. Oh, you're, 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 you're big. I know, I was big. You're big. big. Huge, no, big. and uh, big, just got chatting to him, and uh, obviously he's like, "I can sort you out. I can make it a bit bigger if you want to yes, look I good in those this. little ripped shorts." You know okay, I, mean? yeah, I think I did tease him a little bit. Yeah. I think I did tease him a little you bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you put some meat on those bones. I was like, oh, yeah. "Okay, so you might have fucked your ass maybe at once." <laughs> <laughs> And that's, and well, that's, oh, <laughs> that goes well, man's mate. <laughs> and that's pretty much how the um, yeah the steroid thing started. Yes. You know. Pull on mic check. Is it, is it yeah, still right, working? Okay, yeah. <laughs> mic check. Okay. <laughs> yeah, gotta be way. <laughs> it's all right. Don't have to cut that out. Keep right, it so in. that's how we keep met going, anyway. Uh, that's how we met. So yeah, it was... Um, yeah, we can see it now. And was, then... What happened after that? You so, you became a dormant. Well, I started taking the steroids. Yes, and, because um, played him. He him, yeah. was obviously giving us advice what to do. And, you know, put a bit of size on, got bigger and bigger. And um, at the time... My my closest friend at the time was uh, a guy probably everybody knows called Raul Moat. Raul Moat. And uh, just for people who, like we've got a lot of views in America, who's Raul Moat? So Raul Moat. Raul. I mean, obviously it was, it was the biggest manhunting, biggest manhunt in the UK history. Yeah, biggest manhunt Ten because uh, killed a few people. What year was yeah. that? Two thousand two. Two thousand ten. He um, basically 
Shotty's girlfriend, Shotty's girlfriend's boyfriend, uh, went on the run, shot a policeman. Uh, it's, a, it's a long, messy story, but when I when I was when I first met Chet, he was like we we grew up together. We actually had a flat together. We lived together as well. You know, we um, we both become dormant together because the gym where we trained. Um, another big name guy in Newcastle said, you two are big, big guys, big lads. You just want to come work for me on the doors. We didn't have a clue about that. What do you do? So we're doing this two day course at the Civic Centre, 50 quid, completely different to what it is now. And uh, we both started working on the doors together. And uh, that's how me and Chet end up working on the doors together as well. Because he took over. Because I got club. kicked off the bar where I was working. I broke somebody's leg and I was working under somebody else's name and then there was a hunt out for me. So I was a legal doorman, so I had to fucking get the fuck out. So I worked in this fucking... Kizzy? What was it called? Kizzy? The strip club. Kizzy and oh, South Shields. fucking... Which was a shit fucking off. dive. The biggest dive I've ever seen, man. We just got the worst of the worst in there, didn't we? It was just the worst of the worst in there. Do you know, like, people that you would never think imagined would walk in? I didn't know people like that lived. <laughs> they would just walk in. Did it stink a pussy? Oh God! What this thing? Birds were fucking oh, rank. rank. Oh, yeah, rank, rank all pulled off the nut. Absolutely disgusting. It was like the most serious shit all you could ever work in. And oh, um, God, I think so I think the first one of the, <laughs> <laughs> I think on the first day I worked there. I don't even know if you were there on the first days I worked there because it was it was actually up some big, big steep steps. I yeah. threw a lad down the stairs because he saw his face on drugs, and. Um, he didn't have a clue, but he apparently came down the next day banishing a gun. Who the fuck threw us on the stairs? Luckily, I wasn't at work that day. I don't know if you were that were mainly me remember. Nobody came with a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came he down might with... see me and then fucked off. <laughs> he, he, yeah. how, how long were you guys a doorman team for then? That didn't last long, did it? No. How many months? Uh, like six. Yeah. Five yeah. to six. Any notable battles during that time? Loads. 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 Any, I, I, I literally describe? I literally worked in all the worst places in Newcastle because I worked for a, a security firm. And they'd put us in like remember the um, Grace Club. Oh, oh yeah, I was working at a club called Grace Club, and it was the it was it was like the Grab a Granny Club of Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grafton I, I mean, worst yeah. battle there was uh, I threw a guy out, and he ended up back in the club again. I don't know how threw him out again, and then threw him out again. We got a massive scuffle in the in the it was in an alleyway, and I just got jumped on by like five six guys smashing bottles. I think the other doorman dragged us in. Um, they were smashing bottles. I got that was, a, that was a pretty nasty battle. That like, that was pretty bad. Right. So, um, so you bump then, heads like to leave Duffy people like that. Oh, is that? No, he's too young for that, weren't you, Harry? Yeah, yeah. You were younger. Mm -hmm. You didn't know Lee and any of them. You were no, only about was... ten when Lee died, I think. Oh wow. When living, yeah, like, I think well, it was well, nineteen ninety eight when I started doing door work. Yeah, you were only young kid, them, and you didn't know the people. Yeah. yeah. But, what What was the worst injury you got on the doors? Um. Mine was a big uh, bottle to the head. Bottle to the head. That was my... Uh, sorry, glass. But he didn't work the doors for long, can I just say? Because I convinced him, right, drugs is the way forward. <laughs> right? Oh, Fuck standing on the door. Yeah. 60 quid a night. Let's make some proper dollar. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it? And this is how we are. But I was taking other people at a time. But then I said to Harry... Uh, and his girlfriend at the time, she was only 18, we don't want to mention her. And um, I said, yeah, right, Harry, what about this one? And he was straight off for it, you know? Yeah. Cool. Because uh, didn't even hesitate, did you? Yeah, you said yes. Uh, yes. A 21-year-old, so you just... Don't... But that was the first run, and then we got nicked on the first run. What bad luck is that? How did you propose it to him? What a run to were? Tell him. Um, well, I remember I was standing at the door talking one How night, say to you and uh, he was like, do you want to do, do a job? Pay you well, It'd be like a holiday. I pay for the flights, the whole lot. And I thought, yeah, great. He said, "Oh, we're going to go to Pakistan." I, I just had this image in my head of elephants, sand, <laughs> sea, yeah. sunshine, lovely. palm trees. <laughs> lovely. That's that's exactly. Karachi. What I had. Oh, sand. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was a twenty-one-year-old. Not twenty-one-year-old lad. I'd never ever been abroad. And when he said, "You've yeah. never been abroad, neither." Yeah, the worst oh, thing about oh. it, I took him to Karachi, first holiday. <laughs> you can't make this up. Honestly, it was Karachi for his holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Karachi in the mid 90s, and it was heavy then. Taliban were active, Al Qaeda were active. Never even heard of like 
Taliban back in 19... 19- I had, I had, but I didn't tell you about it. I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't scared scared so well, does it? <laughs> but, and when we got there... Just keep it lucky, good at the money. It's only when we got there you started telling the dangers because we literally... <laughs> got yeah, there. Yeah, we got, yeah, we got, yeah, got it right plane. now, we got to get our heads right. <laughs> we got off the plane, walked out the airport, and then, I don't know if you remember this, we got, got went out in the air, in the car park, and they were literally scrapping and fighting over who was going to take one in the taxi. Remember yeah, that? Timmy, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I was the king of Karachi. Yeah, and they I, know they're going to party time. And, and I was the only white person there. I was fucking <laughs> shitting myself. I know, but you were cool. They were all good with you, weren't they? He's like, you're all right with me. Just keep your passport on you. Yeah, listen, but were they not all good with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, another one. All the Pakistani oh, guys, yeah, not one spoke a wrong word. Nah. Yes. Once you got in the taxi, what happened? God, drove into the taxi. Obviously, we're going to the hotel. This paradise taxi hotel. driver, paradise. Yes, I done my regular hotel. My uh, fucking, I take all my paradise mules. For a reason. <laughs> I take all my mules. <laughs> I'm sorry, I call it a mule, yeah, but it is a mule story, yeah. But anyway, go on, go on. Fucking mule. The cow man. <laughs> yeah. So I this fucking taxi is just traffic lights. No, <coughs> flying. This taxi driver's absolutely going crazy, and then I'm looking out the window. I'm thinking. This is not what I expected. It's There's literally holiday. people lying around the I streets. think he must have Googled some shit. I don't, I don't think it was even Googled. There was no then. Google there. No, I, don't know the, the, I, re- I remember you. seeing one guy sitting outside the house with like a, a shotgun or something. I was like, what, what have I let myself in for? Yeah, People like lying in the streets. That, I don't know they were dead or asleep. It Did you look at Thomas Brook brochures and think, oh, it looks lovely there. <laughs> Thomas <laughs> Brook. <laughs> Thomas Cook. Yeah. Thomas Cook, yeah? Yeah. Thomas Cook. Holidays in Karachi. Have a lot of these ones. <laughs> so you've seen people with guns. <laughs> yeah, and it was, we'll see one guy sitting outside a house or a building with a, with a gun. I'm thinking, this is not normal. This, I've never even seen a gun in, in my life yeah. until now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, b- bear in mind, we... Um, my partner at the time there, uh, she was also with with her as well, so that was quick. What scary. was her reaction to this environment then? Well, I can't even imagine me. She was only uh, 18. She was mm. very young, so... um old as well. Do you know what it is? Well, she was a bit cautious seeing what was going on in the... She didn't have a clue, did she? No, no, no. She had a clue, man. No, nothing. She was just following his lead. Yeah, so you check what was checking him like to the paradise. It was actually the hotel. The lobby yeah, was all right. No, it was all right. Know me. Yeah. It was all right, except the floor we were on was... Um, eighth floor, the <laughs> prostitute floor. Yeah. You said, we're going on the eighth floor. Oh, why the eighth floor? This is the one where all the prostitutes are. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm with, I'm with me missus. I know. I tell oh. his missus there. Uh, I tell his missus there. Uh, Classy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, was that a treated chick on the first holiday? Take it to Karachi in a hotel full of prostitutes. So, so <laughs> classic geezer, this one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your, what's your understanding of what you're going to have to do at some point? Um, to be honest, uh, not too much it's because not really explained I didn't take control. Yeah, you didn't take, didn't go into details. It was just you know. I didn't say anything. I said just come and I'll do it. Just, I'll just carry the case, baby. Just bring a big suitcase. That's it. Yeah. Uh, details. He dealt with all that. So, I mean, obviously, there was a lot of people coming and going to the hotel all the time, and yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't speak the language. I was listening. You know, there, there was a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. How did you occupy your time then? Drugs. We just got high drugs. We just got yeah. fucked up. A lot of the times, I, I, how long were there for? I don't know, about a week. A week. Yeah, but we just got fucked, didn't we? I just go on the first day and I used to sort the business out, do the deal, bam, get the things packaged, get them all done. They're going to give me a date. Then after that, Six days we just got wrecked. So, yeah, I mean, it was steroids. a steroids. What's the no, best no. drugs though? Like, Valium, 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 Valium. Oh, Valium I was bringing GHP. back. Valium. GHB, we took over on the flight. We were just sipping it in the, the bottle. I told you about this. Yeah, yeah liquid. Yeah. We were just, we were just fucked, man. But yeah, it's um, when when I mean the first morning. When I did I take up, advantage of him. Yeah, I am going to admit, people. Yeah, but he's come out a good boy now. <laughs> he's come out a lot stronger fucking person. Yeah. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change anything. And we're not glamorising. Chet no, does a lot of no. charity work now and yeah. helps young people get out of this lifestyle. Yes, 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 yes. But you've got to be there to see it to so be able to talk about it. I hate these people who come out and say, don't do this, don't do that, if they've never experienced yes, everything. I know. These gentlemen have experienced it and they're just telling you, all right, we had to laugh, but it wasn't for us no more. So yes, I would never change a thing. You know, it is. You see, some people go through life with no life experience. Some of the stuff I've seen, mm-hmm. especially with him. You know, we've been friends for like twenty five years. Some of the stuff we've been through together. Some of the stuff we've seen. 
even the bond that we've got through everything we went through is just you, you we're still together you know yeah. I'm surprised yeah. you're not even great. though I've <laughs> dropped well. him in the shit <laughs> even <laughs> though I dropped him in the shit yeah he's oh, still here I now was, you know oh. and we've always been together like that I've yeah, always said always, I am man. I am where I am today because of him that's that's the truth right. you know it's, uh, same here with him yes I know you might be dead if it wasn't him I was a stock I was a stock broker living a normal <laughs> life in a white picket fence house <laughs> And then Wild Man comes to Arizona and things change dramatically. We had to live it there's up. There's always somebody <laughs> there's always somebody that walks in who will change your life. Yeah. And it's not a woman, it'll be a man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So was it all plain um, sailing then until things went wrong on this mission? So no, I mean when we were there, we had a good few few good days. We actually went to the beach one day, didn't we? Went and done some horse riding on the beach. I think we did, yes. We did, yeah. We, but when I say beach, you know, you know, <laughs> expected a like British beach. It was just mountains, sand, completely deserted. Karachi beaches. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. Really beautiful. And but you sea. can't, like, uh, sunbathe there, bikini or nothing like that. Right? Uh, oh, we're because I remember... covered. Yes. Because I remember one time I went there, yeah, with this other girl. What was she called? In fact, I'll leave Nikki. Right. I won't say her second name. No surnames on and this And she podcast. goes... But she was fit, right? And she goes, oh, I want to go on the beach. I want to go on the beach. She goes, right, bikini. She did it, stripped off, laid on the sand, towel down. I went, okay. The taxi driver was going to talk to her. No, you can't do this around here. Yeah? He went, no, no, no. I went, why not? Yeah? I didn't give a fuck. Anyway, then about 50 fucking geezers just surrounded her, just looking at her with no shame. <laughs> and then I got up, oh, what the fuck is this about? Yeah? And then the police come. And then they told the 50 to fuck off. They said, we want to promote tourism here. <laughs> <laughs> they told them to fuck off and didn't tell her to cover up. Because they were looking at her as well. Yeah, they were hacking. <laughs> are they wanking? <laughs> Probably afterwards, yes. <laughs> but they told them to fuck off. Wow. But you had no shame, though. Did you just literally oh, they, oh, they said just a circle like that. That's scary shit, isn't but it? That's why I stole What the fuck, <laughs> yeah. <man? laughs> But that's what, because I've never seen a naked white woman before. Well, not naked, a bikini white woman in their lives. What was got your strategy to get rid of the 50? If, if the well, I just got come. up, I went, fuck, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and then the police just fucking must have seen it because they must be watching as well. And then they intervened. I'd be like that. Oh, fuck, fuck for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, luckily, I didn't happen to host that time. No. No, no. it was all right. We, we, we did a bit of horse riding because some guy came along and we paid him to yeah. let him go up and down the beach on his horse. Yeah. And, and then there was a. There was another day we got a, a boat. We went to sea, remember we went to sea? Fuck yeah. Remember we went to sea? Who was it who wanted the shit? You or me? Not me, not me. I think it was me. I said, listen, I need a shit. I said, listen, hurry, I'm going to take a shit in the sea. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no toilet there, was there? There yeah. were no the toilet there because it's oh. not tourist fucking things there, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you got to go in the fucking sea for shit. So yeah, hurry, yeah. move that side a little bit. See where the tide's going. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you that one, I don't think. I did. No, I probably that kept one. that one to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> did you did did you that one that you use one hand for wiping the arse because I'm for eating? Yes. You don't eat with the same hand that you uh, wipe your arse with. So, what? Yes. It all was going smoothly then. What, what happened on the day you had to make your move and leave? Take us through that, fate, that fateful day. The final day. Do you um, remember much of that? <clears throat> you must have gone. I just. Uh, well, obviously, I remember going, going to the airport. Uh, I think it was everything was, was smooth because you'd sorted everything out. Yes, you paid everybody off. You'd done all your bits and bobs, and uh, it was not a problem getting out of Karachi. Yes, not a problem. What what luggage were you given? Just our suitcases that we had, our big suitcases, full to the brim with uh, steroids and Valium. Yeah. Right, literally full to the brim. We had to literally ditch most of clothing. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. you, you ace it for security. Fucking leave your clothes. Drugs are more important. Three suitcases. <laughs> full. Drugs are more important. We're, we're talking class. big but suitcases. But they were just wrapped up. Fuck. Volume's nice, though, man. 250 So you're tons. flying from where to where? 1,000. Uh, Amsterdam, Cotton I think. Milk. From Karachi? No, 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 to Barcelona. No, we flew out from Barcelona, remember? Yeah. Newcastle to Barca, Barcelona to fucking Karachi. Mm -hmm. And then we came back to Karachi, Alicante. Alicante, yeah. So you're heading to Spain? Mm hmm are you guys high on the flight or are you being serious this time? No, I can't remember me. I think I was always high. Pissed. Probably. <laughs> what happens at the airport? Slowly so, go through it. Yeah, so this is this is where the... this Again, I thought everything was just plain sailing. I had no suspicion of anything that was going to happen. Um, 
gets off at Alicante, because I think we're going for a couple of days party now, won't we? Before returning. She said, we'll go to Alicante, a couple of days party, yeah. and we'll return. And uh, again, wasn't worried about anything, trusted him. And, and uh, we waited for our bags to come through, and we're waiting, and waiting. And then everybody kind of like disappeared by that point, didn't they? Yeah. Our suitcases don't come. And then that's when um, that's when the shit hit the fan. We just got like surrounded by like, like airport officials, people with guns. Our bags were all coming through, and we were thinking. Did oh, you feel like? like yeah. Hang on, there's something wrong here. Well, yes, because everybody else has got the bags, and we haven't yet. So they've took yeah. our bags off, and then we're still waiting because they're waiting for the Guardia Seville land, yeah, saying yeah. that they're here now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hind, hind, hindsight's a bitch, but you'd have probably got off, wouldn't you? Did, did, did. If it had happened now and you waited for so long, you'd have probably thought, fuck it, we're off. I know, but they still knew who we were. Yeah. And the tracers, yeah, the tracers. The, the, you know, the it. Interpol. It was Interpol. Yeah. Tracking my flights. So I don't think there was a chance of escaping. Like, you can't. No, I no. mean, when they got us, no. we thought, oh, it's a sudden thing. This the fucking elder's been watching us for years. They actually let fucking flights through, didn't they, with drugs? Just to fucking document it. Yeah, they don't do. They don't. They arrest, want to arrest everyone at the same time and get all the major players and work their way up the system, don't they? Once they've got, yeah, they've got all the evidence anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, yes, yes. You can't. So if you go on a run, you go on a run, but for how long as well, you know? Yeah, you yeah, can't last on the run, can the, you? Um, the only way I can describe it really is, you know, when you watch these programs on TV, like these airport programs, and you watch other people getting arrested. And you're, Bang up a yeah, like all yeah. that sort of stuff. And you're, you're sitting there, and you're almost sweating, feeling anxious watching this on TV. But this is in real life. You know, you stand there and think, what the hell's going on? You've got these people around you with guns and, you know, talking to you in Spanish, come this way. Yeah, the we were then. just like, what the hell's going on? What was the first thing that went through your head when you knew you were busted? Fuck. <laughs> I just thought, this is not good. This is not good. And then the took were into a, a room where the cases were, weren't uh -huh. they? And there was all the cases open. And they were laughing, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, wow, yeah. look at this. Yeah. So and it wasn't exactly... Try, you did try to hide the drugs. The, the, the case well, there was no drugs. hiding in it. It's like a t shirt on top of We got photos of it, Sean, yeah? Drugs. If you want to put them on the podcast as well, yeah? We've got photos from the Spanish press, mm -hmm. uh, what were taken, so you can stick them on here. What they said is the biggest seizure of Spanish history, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, remember, 35 minutes in, put, put, put the pictures up. Um, all right, so is it coming into your head that? You might be doing some prison time, or are you thinking you're going to try and get out of this somehow? To be honest, uh, as I said, I'd, I'd had all trust in Chet. You know, he's, he's, it's, 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 this is his business, his line of work. And I'd, I'd, even then, I thought, we'll be all right, because he, he's telling these guys, you know, you know, this is legit. You just needed somebody exactly. to have some trust in. Yeah, yeah. Or it's only him. I know. And, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a scary place to be that, yeah? I yeah. think you were a lot more, there's a lot more good through his head than mine. Because I know what I've done. But he doesn't, does he? <laughs> so we're still all but very... he doesn't. I know what I've fucking done. Because I'm, I'm thinking, well, it, 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 this <laughs> is, it's, it's, it's not like we're smuggling <laughs> cocaine or heroin or ecstasy. This is, this is No, but it's class A. Valium is class A in Spain. Yeah, well, I didn't know that. The yeah, tender. well, I didn't know that neither, really. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. they take you to a room. You're waiting for the Civil Guard, yeah? They got uh, Guardia Seville. Guardia Seville. What happens next? Then um, we got we got taken away, didn't we? To um, the police station. Elche police station was it? Yes. Elche police yeah. station. Question. Um, yeah, and I remember like the the, the police officers because I, I was quite a big guy at the time. Was he taking a load of steroids? And they just kept going, "Hey, big Harry, big Harry, you in trouble? You in trouble?" And I was like, "What the fuck's going on?" They were just trying to wind him up. Yeah, yeah. totally. They yeah. knew it was all down to me. They were just trying to get him to spill the beans. So they separate you all for individual yeah. questioning. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And what kind of things are they asking you? Where where were you going with all these drugs? Where have you come from? Um, where did you buy them? You know, the usual questions. Um, yeah, it was just... They had, they had an interpreter as well because obviously we couldn't speak Spanish. Yeah. So uh, they had an interpreter. I think we had to wait a while for an interpreter. At least your yeah. girlfriend was probably naive enough not to know it much, really. She, she couldn't really drop you in it because she probably didn't no, know that. No, she? no, she was, she was very much in the dark. Uh, to be honest, she only came with me because at the time... Um, I said to her, I says, look, I'm doing this job. I'm going to get paid for it quite well. And she was like, no, you're not going. I was like, what do you mean? She went, unless I go as well. So when I told him, he's like, great. More suitcases. Yeah, more yeah. <laughs> 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 and, uh, oh, it just gets worse. Oh, God. Again, oh, God. I, I trusted him. She trusted me. 
I was like, oh, I'll be fine. He's you know, you kind of getting into trouble for this. And uh, so, yeah, but she was quite calm through the whole thing. She's, yeah, not, didn't cry, just kept calm. So I think she was the same as me. She probably thought, well, where's this going to go? Is it is it really that bad? Um, it's like putting trust in the devil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. interrogation, then what? So after all interrogation, I, I can't remember how long it went on for. I was, I was maybe. Then... They, they say the Spanish police, they keep you very much in the dark. You don't know what you, what's yeah, happening, where you're going. No, the exactly. Yeah. Um, they fucked me over. They then sent her to, it was it was a, like a holding cell in, in Elche. Remember that? Because we got nicked on the Friday. Mm-hmm. We couldn't go to Fon Calent until the Monday. So we spent two nights out. I think Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. I think it was yeah. three, you know, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Three fucking nights in these cages. It's just cages. Concrete floor. I remember, we're talking to everybody and we're asking them. We just got nicked with this, and they're saying, "Oh, you fucked, baby." <laughs> and we were like, "No, no, no, it can't be. It can't be." You know, we just wanted to convince ourselves we're going home. You know, we're gonna get bail, blah blah blah. But fucking, well, you're you know, trying to convince you'd, yourself. Yeah, you yeah. think in your head, though, wouldn't you? Really, you think, but it's not heroin. It's not really drugs. Really. I know, but it's classy over there. Yeah. Did over you know there, it was classy though? No, not at first. Oh, yeah, that's mm. if I had known that, I would never have gone through other countries. So, because of the size of the bust, yeah. the prisoners right away were treating you guys with respect. Yes, because it was all over the news. Remember? Yeah, yeah. I will tell you when it felt this is getting serious to me because when we got to that that holding cell for a few days, Elchi, they um, that's the first time I ever got strip searched, and I mean strip searched, squatting down, Squat. mirror under the ass, yeah. and that was when I thought. That's when you feel a bit uh, humiliated, a bit demoralised when you have to strip naked in front of all these prison guards and pl- police officers and, you know, they're, they're getting you to squat and sticking a mirror under your ass. That was when I thought, this is getting pretty serious, this. This is, uh, yeah. So it started sinking then. Yeah. That's when it started sinking in. Plus, we didn't know how long we were going to be there for. We didn't know where we were going. Yeah. There was nobody no. telling them anything. No. Nothing. No. Were you no. able to sleep in those first few days? I think we just sat up talking, didn't we? I, I think you were in the cell opposite, weren't you? I was cell opposite. Yeah, you guys were just down the, yeah. down from me. Yeah. You were over there, I think. Not knowing's the worst, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, it's just... If you, rather, if you know what you're getting and you know what to expect, that, well, at least you know. You've got a, yeah. you've got a date, haven't you? I know, yeah. we didn't know fuck all at this time. Yeah. We, didn't, we knew nothing. It's fucking horrible, that feeling, like... It wasn't like anybody was telling me, right, you're getting moved or this is what's happening. Yeah. But we were there a couple of days. Yes. And then... Um, we that's got moved to Fon Calent. That's when they took with a Fon Calent, which is like the, the, the main prison in Alicante. Um, What's it like your first day arriving there? So when we got there, me and Chet were together. It's uh it's in, in Spanish it's called uh, ingresos, which it's like um what do you call it in English? It's where, it's you, where there's like uh like a remand wing. Where they decide where you go, you know? Oh you go there for two or three days. Allocation. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So yeah. They stuck us in there. Um, they actually stuck in a cell together, and it was just that thing when you get there, it was so hot, the, the smell of the place, um, and it was almost like in the middle of a desert, this prison, wasn't yeah, it? And yeah, it had this yeah. huge mountain in the background, yeah. quite picturesque. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they stuck us in this. Quite this, picturesque. It was actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, I had a nice view. I did have a nice view <laughs> mount, on my window. Mount, I didn't and they stuck us in this cell, and, um, you know, we, we again, we didn't know what was going to happen, what, where we were going to go, how long we were going to get. Just didn't have any clue. And um, but we thought we were gonna get bail in, yeah. right? So my beat was still upbeat to keep him upbeat. Mm-hmm. So we were singing songs. Yeah, remember <laughs> Wonderwall? Yeah, we yeah, were singing we're Wonderwall. Lying in bed, singing bloody Wonderwall by out of the window. Yeah, just out of the window. You gotta keep upbeat. Haven't you? Well, that's what I was trying to do. You know, I was yeah. trying to like fucking out. I fuck these guys up now, so it's up to me now. Sort of fucking situation. You know, you know. I know I fucked up, but then. There was a, um, I don't know, there was a guy who worked there. I think it was a, one of the other. Yeah, he worked there, but he was a snitch as well. Yeah, screws, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had that cushy job, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he came to our cell and he said that, you know, there's a chance he's going to be separated um, or he just could be separated. And then he was just saying, you know, be careful when you're going up the main wing because this prison is notorious and rife for, for, for AIDS. I was like, yeah. AIDS? Yeah. <laughs> that was the first. Is it over a third of the prisoners got AIDS. Yeah, yeah. third of the prisoners got AIDS. From shooting up. Yes, that's it. Um, and then eventually they did come and tell what they're going to separate. They said they're going to put him into what's called module quattro, which is 
maximum about. security, and they're going to put me in Modulo Uno, which is for like um, like first time offenders. So you got separated. Yeah, that was quite sad because I, you know, I kind of we kind of relied on each other. And when they said they're going to put him in maximum security because of the guy who he is, and uh, you know, twenty one year old facing going into a prison, never been in prison in my life. But, you know, he said to us, he went, you know, you walk in that jail and you hold your head high. You do not back down to anybody. Anybody starts a fight with you, just, just, you know, do not back down to anything. And uh, then they separated, didn't they? Mm. they? Took him away. That was sad. And they took, uh, they took me. And it was, again, it's one of those things. The only way I can describe is when you watch these, like, American movies when somebody's walking into a jail and you get all the, the, the other prisoners torn you. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been on the news. Yeah. Ah, they right, all knew for right. you. Yeah, they all knew. They're going, oh, Harry, Harry, and then they were talking in Spanish. I think which the 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 they were the there, yeah. getting loads of abuse. I mean, I was, I was, I was being led into the wing. <laughs> getting loads of abuse on the way in. I was going down this <laughs> this wing into the like the, the main module, the main prison, and it was like old board windows down the side. And as I remember walking down, you had all the Spanish people like taunting you, going, "Hijo de puta, coño," and then uh, and then he hear your ass. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 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 So fish, then, fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to. I was going to lose my virginity. I tell you. And uh, but then I hear English voices going, "Oh, it's the steroid lad." Ah, oh, that was it. I the steroid lad, uh, the Jordy lad. And I thought, "Oh, great, people who speak English." And then, um, yeah, that was my experience walking down. But I did as he said, held my head up high, and I thought, "Right." I said, "Don't walk in there." I said, "Don't walk in there." Walking like I owned the place. You'd be some size though as well though. So the, I, I was I at mean, the time. Yeah. I mean, when, when I was 21, I was like my biggest. They'd think twice, wouldn't they, before they'd go. They wouldn't come at you one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, then they took us in, put us into um, a cell. And I was in a room with, I mean, I had probably 20 cellmates during the whole time I was there. Different cellmates. And my first room that I was put in, tiny little cell, not like an English prison, totally different. Completely different. And uh, my two cellmates, three bunks, two English lads, one from London, one from Middlesbrough, and uh, got chatting and, uh, you know, exchanging stories. I'm here for smoking and steroids. And one of them was like, oh, I'm here because I battered somebody to death with an iron bar. Yeah. Paid to do a job. And I was like, oh. Is that the butter guy? I'm like, oh, God, I'm sharing a room. So just, I'm sharing a room. So he just admitted he's murdered somebody. And the other lad was in for uh, manufacturing ecstasy. And I'm lying in this bunk and I'm just thinking, what's going on? I've got a murderer above us, drug dealer above him. And you got lucky though, did you really? He still could speak English. Purple Ashby yeah, was in there. That's yeah, yeah, lucky English. were there. <laughs> it's still not a bad draw you got there. Show me what's on us. There could be worse than people who could have put London in London, wouldn't there? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> trust us, I had more cellmates during the three years yeah. when I was there. A lot worse, yeah. Well, yeah. describe yourself first. What did it look like? Me? Your cell, do you oh, cell, cell, um, like? cell was the toilet was literally a hole with a like a foot plate where you go around, except in module four where you were you had a, to and a real toilet. Yeah. So because we're top security, it. we, we do get a few luxuries there. <laughs> yeah, whereas we just had a <laughs> take care of the bad yeah. ones a little bit more. What's the smell like coming up from the hole disgusting. in the floor? Absolutely disgusting. Like. Disgusting. Yeah, the thing is in Spain with the heat, no air conditioning, no nothing. It is awful. And you got to sleep next to that. You got to sit. Well, the thing is, if one of your cellmates takes a shit, you think you got to sit and smell it. Um, Three of them, the there? room was tiny, yeah, and it was Sounds hot. like Mexico. That is that the cockroaches. Same. That was it. Cockroaches. Mm. They were everywhere. Cockroaches. What about wiping your ass? Did, did, did they provide anything? Well, yeah, um, you get like a, 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 a little goodie bag once a month. It's got a toilet yes. roll in there, toothpaste, condoms. Yeah, condoms as well yeah. to stop the AIDS. Well, I'm guessing so. <laughs> That's the goodie bag you get: condoms, toothbrush, toothpaste. Yeah. They give me that when plastic you go to jail. Plastic Condom. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's it. That's all you get, and you get yeah. two two square meals a day in your breakfast, which is just a coffee and a, a baguette, a bread yeah. roll. But yeah, the the thing which I found hard is I didn't speak uh, didn't speak Spanish. Um, so the first thing was was you know my cellmates are trying to learn how to count, say good morning, just the the basics, because um, I didn't know how long I was going to be there for. And uh, I remember getting released out into the, the general population in the yard. And the first thing I noticed is I thought it would be full of Spanish, but it wasn't. You had Germans, Russians, Italians, Mar loads of Moroccans, weren't mm. there? Algerians like and Moroccans, yeah. yeah. Massive loads mix of, of um, different nationalities there. Um, 
So yeah, it was it was So did you click up with the Brits on the yard? To be honest, there was only a handful of British and uh the they were all right, but I did clash a little bit with some of them. Um you know, being the new guy in there, there was a few of them that been there for quite a while. There was, uh, yeah, I had a, had a few problems with a couple of the, the British. Can you describe how those clashes came about? Wow. I think it's just because I was young and I was new. Mm. It's out um, of school, yeah. Yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. And, yeah there, was, there, was, there was one guy, he was actually from Manchester. He said he was a bit of a Manchester gangster and he was trying to push us around a bit. And I had a bit of a big argument in the autumn. And again, and what he said, he went, do not back down. And I didn't back down with this guy, but, I, you know, it was, it's quite a scary guy. Um... But, yeah, it was, it was different. I'd rather kick a clicker with the Algerians or the Russians, me. You can trust them, I think, more. Well, I mean, eventually, you know, kind of being on my own, I knew that I was uh, vulnerable, anybody is when they're yeah. in prison. And, uh, you know, you kind of fight them all off one-to-one. -one. So you've got to do what you do to survive. And as you said, the, the, in, in, in that wing, the Russians were the guys who pretty much run everything. Mm -hmm. The drugs, everything. So... I kind of got in with these guys, the Russians. We'd sit and play dominoes together, train together, you know, on the yard, doing push-ups, get you on your shoulders, squats, all that sort of stuff. And they're all right guys, but I knew if I was in with these these heavy lot, and the Bosnians, they were, they were some tough guys. I thought if I'm in with these guys, it, it gives me a bit of protection. But of course, it also means having to work alongside these guys as well. And in Spanish prison, if you've got no money, you've got no money. In English prison, you get an allowance, you get your bits and pieces. In Spanish prison, if you've got no money, that's it. Got to fend for yourself, and I knew that um, if I got on with these guys, it, it gives me a bit of protection, and uh, also gives me a chance to try and make some money as well. So it got to the point where, you know, I was actually having to sell drugs in prison just to make money to survive, and also to to give me girlfriend as well because her yeah. family didn't have money to send her. Yeah. So, you know, I'm selling. When I say drugs, I'm talking hard drugs, heroin. These Russians were smuggling it in, and um, they'd get like packages of clothing in. And uh, but the, the drugs in that prison were it was unreal. It was so accessible. There was uh, there was probably more drugs in there than on the street. There's Same always more. I, was, in jail. I think yeah. there was only two days in a full year I wasn't stoned. Yeah. Um, because there was just so much of it, especially heroin. Yeah. Best and, quality uh, as well. You find it was coming straight from the fucking heads in especially, there. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. The hash. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's um again I had that fear. I thought here I am in prison, drug related fences, and now I'm selling drugs just to get by. But if I get caught in here selling heroin, my sentence is going to quadruple, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, man. But yeah, again, you, you know, when you're working with these guys, I mean, these Russian guys were big, big, heavy guys. They were, they were all right, but, you know, you pissed them off, getting the wrong side of them, came over. And, uh, but yeah, you've got to do what you do to survive. And if it meant having to mix with these guys, then so be it. When did you notify your family and what was their reaction? I notified my mum, actually, at the police station when we were getting interviewed. Um... Phone up your mum and I says, oh, look, mum, been caught in the, uh, the airport, been arrested. And like any mum, isn't it? She was a bit upset. Yeah. And that was it. I didn't really want to put too much on her because, you know, she had enough to deal with. And, of course, in Britain, she was getting all the press. Yeah, the, they were well, on the yeah. front pages, man. Uh, you were on the front pages? Obviously, him <laughs> being... the newspapers. He said, we didn't pack our bags. That's what it said in the front papers. And I went, you <laughs> lying bastard. <laughs> <laughs> It was that's it, you yeah. lying bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Think about stuff. Yeah, fucking that's what it said in the papers, man. I got it. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, uh, held the ad log, didn't it? <laughs> I think it's so with the... Obviously, it's one of them. They're only young, man. They don't know what the fuck is going me, on. It's mental, isn't it, that? Yeah. At that age. Me being a kid and then him being a... Yeah, yeah you didn't know so they, going gonna, They're going to make him look like a... First holiday, Karachi... <laughs> I really fucked it up, like Harry. I said, fucking, now I'm hearing it back. I'm fucking feeling really bad now. I'm really, really bad. I'm feeling really bad about it. I would never do it again. Go on. So did you have to lay hands on anyone? Do you know what it is? <coughs> because I kind of hung out with the guys around the wing, yeah. it wasn't too bad. My problem was a lot of the, um, it was the Moroccans. There was, uh, there was one time it was usually the gay guys who were always on my case. <laughs> and there was one time this guy... He's a good looking guy, though, aren't you? Come on, <laughs> something like the, link, on, on. the link to Harry's Facebook is in the description box below this video. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. If you want to send him a friend request. Yes. Only males right now. Yes. He's also Rockets in, especially. He's also in GQ magazines. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> women also <laughs> add our own biography. Women also, if you fancy. You know, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I did actually have a lot of the gay guys always because in Spain, in, in Spain, you can move around with wings. You can say the, the the screw. Can I go to his cell and go? I go and pack your stuff and move. They were so relaxed about these things. And uh, you had this well, one. That's your guy. wing. That's yeah, your yeah. Wing. My, my my wing was quite yeah, relaxed. Yeah, yeah. And, no, uh, <laughs> you had this one guy who was Antonio. Um, he was a gypsy, Spanish gypsy. And he kind of he kind of was like the 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 ringleader of his the gypsy lot. And uh, he was all right, but you know, again, he was one of those people who didn't want to piss off. I get the wrong saying. He was always saying, "You got to come to my cell. You got to come live with me." I was like, nah, "I don't think so." You got to come then, live with me. You know, exactly. Like yeah. 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 And uh, you got to come live with me. <laughs> There was Shut up, the, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the worst incident that I had was... I've cleaned uh, your sheets, no <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Oh, and a chocolate bar there too. Yeah, chocolate bar there. I'm going to kick out of you. No, but the, the, the only time I got a little bit heavy-handed with one of the gay guys, the Moroccan guy, was he came to me cell. I was, I was just in my room doing my own thing. Door opens and it was one of just one of the guys and he was like hola, he like, hola, and then he sort of come room is like dame un beso, uh, which means give me a kiss, dame un beso wapo, mm, which is really? give me a kiss. Yeah, I didn't tell you about that. No. Oh, he came, he's like dame un beso wapo, and I was like no no no, and I thought oh, wapo that means handsome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 and he comes in, he's like vamos dame un beso, and I was like no 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 fuera, which is like no no get out get out myself yeah, yeah. get out myself. And I was just you know because I've seen him on the order, I've had chats with him, he was all right, but then he comes in, he shuts me door. Like, what the fuck is How this old was this geezer? Oh, probably at my age, maybe. So this is a young lad. Right, go on. Came in, and uh, you know he's saying, "Give me a kiss," and he sort of pulls me door shut. What the fuck is this cunt doing? And then he starts coming closer, and he's like, "You know, I was saying it was in Spanish, vamos, dame un beso." And I was like, "No, no, no." And he got really close, and you know you feel trapped because the, mm -hmm. the cell was small. He's coming in closer and closer, and uh, it was just like I, I don't even remember doing it. He got so close, it was just like like that. I kind of like I didn't punch him. I, hit him on the head and we had these little square mirrors and remember those little yes, mirrors yes 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 and in english prisons these mirrors are usually plastic in spanish prison it was, it was actually like a mirror mirror and he yeah, cracked yeah. his head off there yeah, and that glass. smashed yeah. and he had blood pouring out his side and i was like you know i just swore my spanish i was like get the fuck out myself in spanish and that was probably the the one time where i got heavy-handed with a guy coming to myself and asking for a kiss you know, That's yeah. self-defense, isn't it? Though? Exactly. Yeah. When they come exactly. at you like that, you, you, you exactly. throw some acid to throw a left or right. Yeah. Have yeah. that or give it up. You know what I mean? But generally, it's the left or. He wasn't right, going right. to get a kiss. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking kiss this. So yeah, but um, so the gay play was constant with you. Well, yeah, you know when you're in prison and uh, the guys are always. But like he's a young guys. boy, good looking kid at yeah. a time. You know yeah. this is gonna happen, guys. If you're young, fucking didn't with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't with me. <laughs> Bastards. I know. I didn't get no cut action neither. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, lucky. I didn't get lucky, nothing either. Lucky, lucky me. So what was the shower situation like then? Did you have to like be on guard? Yeah. yeah. Describe uh, what the showers are. The you showers. showers um, well, the, the showers were shit all as well. Um, showers were just like separated walls between. Weren't too bad actually the showers, but you always had like um, allocated times. In my wing, you had allocated times when you go, so you didn't have too many people in there at once. Yeah. So you didn't have all that yeah. horse yeah. action going on. So the booty bandits were at bay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't have much uh, issues with the showers. I was yeah. always on guard as well. Yeah. yeah I was washing. They used to wash in the rooms, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the way it works is in the morning, you get let out at about seven. You go down to your to, to the um, what, what do you call it in English? In Spanish, it's called El Comodor. It's like a, like canteen. a canteen. canteen yeah. And uh, you'd sit and have your breakfast. And then after that, they'd put you out in the yard. And then the workers would come in and clean up the dining room and set it all up. So then you're out in the yard for a few hours. When you're in the yard, you can you know you play football or you know, exercise, whatever you want, sunbathe. And then uh, then they open up the dining room and then you can go in there and you can sit and chat, play dominoes. And you're pretty much out your cell most of the day. But then being in Spain, you have a siesta time. <laughs> two, you have your lunch at lunchtime, and then at two o'clock they put you back in your cell until five o'clock. Yeah. So and then then they let you out at five, and then you got a few hours again, just like in the dining room playing dominoes or exercising or whatever. And then between about seven and nine, you've got that slot where the, the screws kind of let you go to other people's cells. They lock in for two hours, 
So you can go to your mate's cell. Oh, can you? Yeah, 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 yeah. You could we just go bang straight up as well. No, no, we right. could well, go. That's to... where the action goes down, doesn't it? It is. That's exactly. It. So you could go. I'd often I went to me me mate's cell and would just get do loads of buckets, get stoned, or right. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Hell. yeah. Yeah. Was there anywhere private enough to wank? Just in your cell. In your cell. You're, you're on a bunk with three like three beds. Every night you're lying there like, fuck's sake, man. Every single night. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so was there an etiquette? <laughs> Who goes first? <laughs> 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 oh, in the showers? Toilets? Anyway, anyway, you can really. Because <laughs> my soulmates didn't wank in the cells, did yours? It was a shower thing. Oh, I wanked in the shower. I wanked in whatever it wants with me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll need one. I'll need one. I'll need one. I'll just get one. Off, fancy, one. Yeah. It's got to be done, hasn't yeah, it? I mean, yeah. your stress levels are. Well, the good yeah. thing is, if one of the screws is counted. The best time to one is when a female like, well, screw watches it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what the catch is you're doing it for, baby. Yeah. You know, she's looking around. Well, well, she'll be yeah. looking through my door, she'll do. <laughs> to be honest, though. That's a street charge where we were at, isn't it? I know. See, I'd lean to one side and have me leg up. So like no one can see me, but when I see the female screw, I just sort of like. I would do it on purpose, bit. me. Oh yeah, I, I would stand straight up for the. This fucking is going to be a killer clip. Well, <laughs> I stand straight up for the fucking. Wanking in prison <laughs> clip. Yeah, it's going to go Hoping viral. for a female screw to walk past. <laughs> so the good thing is in Spain, though, one thing which is much better than British uh, British prisons is um, if you got a wife or if you can prove you live with somebody. You get uh, what's called a vis a vis each month, which Conjugal is an in. Visits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Now, obviously, my partner at the time, we lived together, so the the British consulate actually arranged so that we could have like visits. What? So we every, the British consulate, aren't we? We do, we do, right, okay. okay let's let's get to the British consulate here. <laughs> let's get to the British consulate here, right? Okay, he come to see you all the time, didn't he? Yeah, pretty much. He only come to see me twice didn't in the like whole him. sentence. He didn't like me. You and you're the bad egg. You and you <laughs> put them two in a bad... No, no, he hated me. Like, he didn't give me zero help. You're El Jefe, El, El Jefe, I mean, sorry. El Jefe, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the chief, yeah. yeah. El General de la Mafia. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how the conjugal visits were? How long did you get? What's the room like? So constantly, you, constantly you, got, you got a room. Sometimes it'd be for an hour. Sometimes it'd be two for, for two hours. It just totally depends who signed off your um, your vis a vis Yes. And... Uh, so every Thursday you get a glass visit. So like you know, you pick up the telephone, you chat somebody through the glass. So every Thursday I got to see the the missus, and we chat. Um, and then once a month we get that enclosed visit. So you had a room with a table, and then you had a toilet and another room with a bed. But um, yeah, obviously the first couple. But of times, I got them as well, didn't I? Eventually, because yeah. I hooked up because his girlfriend moved in with these other girls, Scouse girls, and uh, they got writing to me. We had to write for six months. Before we're allowed a window visit, to, to prove we have a relationship, to prove I don't have a wife in England, prove she hasn't got a boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. Six months of letters, they want to see them, and then you get a window visit. And then six months after that, we got a closed visit, so it took a fucking year to fuck her. So what does that feel like after not, for after a year, you know? It's as cool <laughs> as fucking jail, isn't it? It's as cool as fucking jail. I bet that scout has never waited that long for the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> she's on Tox Death and 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 she's on Tox just to make sure I was up for the job, innit? Yeah. <laughs> I used to like put like, like elastic band around me, nuts me. It'd make you go a bit longer, you know what I mean? No, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes, anything helps. Ring. Anything helps. I haven't got that problem. <laughs> <laughs> but you were used but to my problem was, this. my girlfriend at the time was just like, no, I'm not doing anything. I was like, why is she? We're in prison. Oh, really? Like, yeah, the first couple. strict. First couple. No, no, the first couple. Oh, That's quite go, strict. First, no. first couple of times. How dare you? How dare you? Oh, my God. How dare you? And she says, how dare you? Well, <laughs> first, first couple of months when we went for this visit, she just obviously you wanted... You didn't do nothing? The first couple of times, no, because she wanted to talk about what's going on and, you know, how shit life is. And, and, and I'm like, just... I'm like, <laughs> you ain't got it I'm like, come on. <laughs> and she's just like... another fucking ribs. Seven stretch. Right finger. Get it, bitch. <laughs> I mean, Timestamp that. <laughs> Timestamp that, David. 
fucking we'll have to do an edit. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, I think after she knew on there for the long run, she's sort of put out a bit. Are you still with her? Uh, no. no. Good. No. Well, not good. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why you said that. Yeah. <laughs> so, what other challenges did you have to overcome? Language. Language. First thing was language, yeah. I mean, I had, had, had to learn the language because I just had no intention. I thought I'm Spanish school. Talk about Spanish school. Yeah. So check this one out as well. So um, go on. Obviously, start learn Spanish to speak because couldn't ask for anything. Didn't. We could anything. all go to Spanish school, yeah. Yeah, we went to Spanish. We school. could all go to Spanish school. Listen, I was allowed. I went right. You can actually meet up. Man. Well, this is what we did. Remember, I yeah. met Lisa, Lindsay, you. We were all there in class. They allowed me twice, didn't they? And then they stopped my fucking thingies. They went no. Because we need too many screws to take you because you're catted up. Backed. Yeah. So no fucking Spanish school for me. And all these guys were all mingling every week. Mm. And the thing is that you didn't have any English people on his wing. Zero. Helping. The consular yeah. never came because he hated me. How did you handle the food? Stuff made at the top, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is with the... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is as well. With the food, it was... Typical Spanish, everything, <coughs> everything's with fish and olives. Spanish everything. and rice. Peas and fish rice. and rice, peas and rice. It was like the, the, the soup with fish in it. It was just like fish and like, Oh, shit, that was horrible. Uh, squid, loads of squid. Wow. Different times of the year, though, the food would change in the summer. It was all very salady during the winter. Because in, in Spain, the, the, the prison is cold. Mm. In the winter, it was cold. Yeah. You're yeah, lying there in yeah, bed with yeah, your gloves yeah. on, hat on, it was yeah, really cold. Yeah, no heating or fuck all. Yeah, yeah. Was, and all the uh, windows are fucking <clears throat> cracked and smashed and fucking it's freezing your, cold. Your window's just bars and you've got these plastic slats that pull close. It's, when it rained, it came in. When it was wind out, it was freezing. And um, I, know, I know it was sort of like laughing and joking about it, but at the time, you know, I, I, I just thought it was, it was depressing. I actually went through a bit of a depressing phase. I didn't get my hair cut. I didn't shave. And I remember my mum scraped off enough, enough money to get that come visit. But you still looked fucking good, though, didn't you? Oh, I don't know. I looked like a big hairy mess. The Moroccan still want to fuck you anyway. Go on. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> but um, no, I think after a few months of sort of settling in there, thinking we're going to be here for a while, because again, nobody's telling me anything. We, did, we only relied on what information here off his solicitor. Yeah. And um, I just thought, you know, everybody's telling you, oh, you're going to be here for a long time and you, you, you're, you're fucked. You're going to be here for ages. And it really did hit us. I was thinking, oh, I'm going to be here for a long time. Didn't shave, didn't cut my hair, felt depressed. And then when mum came to visit, she didn't even recognise us. She was just like, my God, what's happened to your son? What did that feel like seeing your mum in the visit room? It was sad to see how heartbroken she was it's i mean as a parent myself i can imagine what she must must have felt like yeah we have the same way we, we've we've all gone through it and uh yeah it was just the disappointment with my mum uh but don't get us wrong my mum is super proud now super proud especially i think i've achieved since then but uh yeah she came over with me uh, my gran and uh, my younger brother uh, he was only like two at the time and uh so yeah, we had one of those enclosed rooms. So we got so actually get to hug my mum and you know, it was that was nice, but it was when they left, it was not known when I was gonna see them again. It's not all that feeling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's like when they left, yeah. And I remember it was only months after that. Um I think depression really hit us hard. And like everybody, if they've looking to face in a long time in prison, you do get stupid thoughts, you do get We were looking at ten years, but I didn't tell him this. I didn't yeah. tell him, but I knew we're looking at ten here. All of us and I thought, fuck. I think he figured it out. I, didn't, well, I don't know. I think he was getting told it, but he didn't believe it. Did yeah, you? it was other people who had not been there well. Wanna believe it. They were like, you know, you're looking at getting a big sentence for this, especially for what you had. And, uh, you know, I kind of mentally prepared myself for doing a long time there. I was going <laughs> to say, if you think about the worst and whatever happens there, you're good to go out, you're it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's it's that feeling of having your freedom taken away, not knowing when you're going to get it back. Uncertainty it's, is the worst. I remember sitting in the corridor and I literally sat on the floor, couldn't look at my knees, and I just thought, shit, man, is this what life's come to? How long are we going to be here for? And I did have those stupid suicidal thoughts, probably like a lot of people who go to prison. Yeah. And I remember I wrote my mum a poem, if you want to call it that, and it was called uh, The End Is Near. Uh, and I actually had it translated into Spanish, hence that tattoo there, which is El Fin Esta Cerca, which is... The end is near. Um, because I did think that was it. You know, I, I just, I, I saw no end in sight for it. Um, and life on the, the yard was getting tough. I bet that chair did up no end, fucking hell. 
It was things like, you know, being involved with the Russian guys, selling drugs for them, kind of like, you know, meet your deadlines, we won't pay it here, we won't pay it then, you're getting this. It's, it, was, it was starting to get very, very messy. So everyone thinks about suicide in prison when they're facing a long sentence. Yes. I was thinking about getting just a slash of Me too, me like too, that. me too. You think, but doing it is a different thing, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So that's it gives what, you a sense of comfort, know, That's the uh, difference between the coward and the fucking doer, yeah. I think. Yeah? We all think it, doesn't we? Yeah. We all have I was really looking at God. 50. He was looking at fucking 200. Fuck. Did you plan a method of suicide? Um, it, it was just something that went through my head. I, d I didn't know... No. We weren't going to do it. No, no. It was we don't think about it, yeah. but we don't think of a plan of doing it. No. no. Right. No. Where's a rope? Where am I going to tie it? The only thing... Am I going to get razors? What am I going to do it this way? Am I going to take a way? screw with me wherever to go? The only thing which I did do, and this is actually the first time I'm admitting this, and I'm actually, this is actually the first time I'm admitting this, is I did self-harm. I've got scores on my arms, legs. I don't know why. It was just one of those things. I just thought... I haven't even told you that, have I? No. Yeah. Scores on my arms there. I've actually got my ex-partner's name engraved on my leg. I've just done stupid things. Did the pain take you out of the worries? Temporarily. How does that make you feel, Chad? At the time, very okay, temporary. Though, yeah. <laughs> As I said, I wouldn't change it. At the time, it was just... At the time, fucking hell. Okay yeah, yeah. But you know what it is? When you see people on TV programmes, you hear about other people do as well. Right you yeah. sit there and you think, what an idiot, why would you do that? And when you're actually doing it yourself, you kind of relate why they do it. Yeah, fucking! I've, I've never self harmed like. That's uh, they have a camera. <laughs> no, no, I'm okay on this now. I didn't know it was self harming. I need a fucking decent drink now. I want to be. His guilt, his guilt's going up. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Do we still come out next? <laughs> so yeah, as I said, that was it. Yeah. It, it was one of those things that after you'd done it, I just thought it's pointless. Yeah, it's not for me. It's not for me. Didn't achieve anything. Didn't make us feel any better, except temporarily. And uh, obviously, I was more worried that anybody who sees the score is going to be like, why are you yeah. doing this for? Because I, you know, I had a friend at the time, He, uh, years before that, he massively self-harmed, and I kept saying he was an idiot. We didn't why write to that? each other in jail, did we? A couple of times. Yeah, but not much. I didn't really know about any of this shit. It was Lisa who I was writing to, you know, in the girls' wing. Yeah. I sort of ignored him, really. But I thought if he was in trouble, <laughs> he could tell me about it. But you didn't say nothing, did you? No, I just didn't say nothing. You, just kept mouth shut, you could have done it, though, could you? Really? He just kept his mouth shut. I know, but I would have known people over there. I could have sorted things out, you know? Yeah. But he took it on the chin. Respect. It's a man for you. It's like I said, there's, there's, I mean, like, there's cutting yourself and all that. And you'll find that a lot of people who do that, if you're going to kill yourself, you've got to cut yourself that way. 99.9%. Yeah, I know. You've got to go, go that, that way. way. You've got to go upwards. Yeah. So it's just. It's kind of um, a cry out for like attention to. Yeah, yeah. Because you know you're at a bad low fucking point. Yeah, yeah. We all were, man. Fuck's sake. Yeah. You bouncing? You yeah, yeah, but I, I thought about it, but I never, I never really thought it through. We're all fucked. And I've seen people do it. I've had a cellmate hang himself, and I just thought you fucking miserable piece of shit. What about your family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Don't leave them. Here, <clears> yeah. But at the same time, you know, there may be in those laws of feeling suicidal and hurting self. But uh, <clears throat> when we actually eventually got put together because we were looking at a big sentence and they actually put me down as a, a high risk. Because then, but yeah, this is the funniest thing about it. They put him low cap first, right? Mm -hmm. Me high cap. And then they went, right, we realise... Who, who this guy is. <laughs> so now, and then, they put him in cut here as well, yeah? With you? Yeah. yeah. So you're back together? Back well, together. we're back together. Yeah. We're in the for separate cells. Yeah. This was the best time of the jail, wasn't it? <laughs> this was the yeah. time when right. it was like... You'll yeah. do that for us. For no, do not yeah. house. Yeah, do These guys house will together. take over the, the really? jail with the house together. But they had to stick him. Cut here. Yeah. So he had to come over there. The first thing I noticed on his wing, how small it was. Tiny compared yeah, to the wings. Yeah, I actually was on module uno, which is for, um, module how dos, many module people three. On there? How many on fucking one? <clears throat> um, how there was, there? do you know what it is? I remember around 280, 300. I think so, 300. Because I also yeah. had a job which was, uh, it was called El Cabo de Gavateros, which was the best job on the wing, which was like, you were like the in charge of 
getting the food from the kitchens, Catering. serving it. You know, it was it was a well paid job. I think it was sixteen thousand pesetas at the time, which was brilliant. Um, again, worked me up the ranks, and uh, you know, it was like these Russian guys pulled a few strings and got me in doing this job. Obviously, to benefit them as well, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that, 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 yeah, worked me up the ranks there. But when put us into his wing, I realised this is tiny. This wing, forty then, heads maximum. And maximum. this is forty of Spain's worst terrorists. Yeah, murderers, uh. rapists. See, in Spain, they didn't put the rapists or the, the paedophiles separately. Uh, on the, they just have more together, didn't they? <laughs> have you got any stories? You'll find more respect though on the supermaxes. You'll find like, yeah, no, you do. You do. do you People know? Everyone up, like, knows 10 to 10 stuff this like man that. You know is I mean? a, obviously a dangerous geezer. Yeah. So just so keep the fuck away, yeah. sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah. The um, stories, yes. Anything, yeah, anything bad happens to sex offenders, things like that. Do you know what? When I was there, there was quite you a love few you, people. You get you straight to it. Kill a sex offender. The thing is, what sex offenders? Well, watch um, um, videos on this channel. Of what happens to sex offenders in prison? How to avoid prison rape? What happens? Blah 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 blah. blah. You could have left me a candy bar, you bastards. <laughs> People want the darkest stories. This is what the viewers demand. Yes. I'm just trying to satisfy viewer demand. Right. I'm not dark stories. Twisted in dark the head. Dark stories. So the, what we got to talk about in Mood Before? What happened to Owen? <laughs> but by the time he came over, yeah, this was. Sentencing was coming up, yeah? I had a good lawyer then, and we were told, right, 10 years you get him, you make a deal, you'll get nine years. But my lawyer, I gave him a bung, and I paid for their lawyer's fees for him and his girlfriend, I paid for all the fees, and they said, I'll get you four and a half. I told you this at the time or not? I think, so. I think it was like that, yeah? I said, listen, we're nearly out, we're nearly out. We've done about two and a half years anyway. Four and a half we get, so you're about another... Six months we're out of there, yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you do and like eighty percent there? Huh? What do you do like eighty percent? You do about seventy five percent, yeah, yeah, seventy five percent of it. And uh, what was I gonna fucking say? When you come over, the Germans, right? We used to train. Remember, we used to train the boxing, yeah. Germans were there, right? He was like smaller, but these Germans, we all used to spar, yeah, okay. But they refused to spar with me, yeah, because they knew I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take your fucking heads clean up, yeah. But they wanted to spar with him, right? So it was and easy. Yes, yes. But it wasn't easy, yeah? Sergio, he was about 6'3". Yeah. Remember? Yeah. They used to spar, but I used to tell him, go head low, head low, go for the body. But because he was taller, he just used to punch down at him, yeah? Rabbit punches, back the head. And his ears were ripped every day. Till down and there. I used to see all the blood on that every day. I went, Harry, I went, listen, stop this now. Yeah, he went, no, no, no. I still want to fucking fight the Germans. Because even though <laughs> he knew the only way he could get into that region was to go in, but he's just punching downwards and he's ripping his fucking ears off. See, the, the gym on module four was like, it was like, that was the turf, wasn't it? It was, like, it was yeah. your gym. Yeah. I, but you yeah, always had turf. like people wanting to take over his gym. Yeah. And but that didn't happen. The way you settled it was, <laughs> get, that get didn't in the ring. That didn't happen. Yeah. They all tried it on, didn't they? <clears throat> yeah. Fuck it. They have gloves too, or is it just Yeah, something? gloves, yeah. yeah. But the screws have the gloves. You've got to go ask for them. Yeah. Uh, Two sets. We got them off that screw from the gym. You know that girl? I asked oh, yeah, her. Yeah, 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 yeah I said, that. listen, please, can you get me a set of gloves? I said, I clean this gym. I clean it every day. I used to mop it up, remember? Oh, yeah. We used to clean it all up. But this, Keep it uh, tidy. This this tall German lad that was fighting with him. Yeah, was, Sergio. Yeah. yeah. He, oh, he had long reach, so I can't... But, but, yeah, he's 6'3". Yeah. But he, uh, you know, got the better of him. Yes. But his friend who was like Marcel, the ring leader the of honcho. their group, yeah. he literally smashed him all over the gym Afterwards. because... Because he couldn't put him away. Yeah. Because he didn't put him Don't away. But yeah. well, we've seen this, yeah, and then he smashed him all over it. This is how you do it. And he just fucked him, didn't he? Yeah. Just fucking smashed him all over it. Kind of saying, well... Right. That's how you do it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Got to be cruel to be kind, haven't you? Remember, I know, but he won't fight me, neither that Marcel. I wanted to fight him, but he won't fight me. He was just hating me. But they thought they could fuck him, and then it's getting all back at me, in it, yeah? But it didn't fucking go down like that because he fucking put up a good fight and he was there every day. And then there was he that. He'd get uh, his ears ripped and that. But you had the best of him, really. And then there was that other Mor Moroccan lad. Oh, that I, fucking. I didn't even know what he was in for until fuck he told Norris. Me. Fuck yeah. Norris. Yeah. 
Chuck Norris, yeah, he thought he was. <laughs> Fuck Norris, I called him. <laughs> so it was Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Norris. Yeah, that's kind of how we settle things on module you, four. Yeah, he wouldn't spar with me neither. No. Right? So who had to do it? He did it. Listen, they all fight wanted him. to fight him. As soon as he come on, they went, right, they can't get on me. We all want to, we all want him. <laughs> was it trying to get at you, Bank? Yes, 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 yes. But it didn't go down. <laughs> Fucked him as well, didn't you? He was fast. He was fast. Very he was fast. He was but not hurting. He was a fast football on the yard. He was good at football and he was fast. Fast hands, but just not hard hitting. And not I think just one clip and he went straight down. Yes. But uh, job done. But, you know, it's being good. being the only two Brits on that wing, yeah, we, you know, we kind of had to like, defend that gym, didn't we? They all want to take crazy. the gym over, yeah. That, that sounds crazy. But that's, that's the only turf that needs to be taken that's, over. That's what you had to do. Did they come, anyone come close to getting it off you? Yeah. No chance. No chance. Did they? No. no. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. What was, you, your, what was your relationship like with the little killer? What was his name? Carlos. Carlo, he wasn't there then because he oh. killed that kid. He got sent over double <coughs> cut here with yeah. the Etta people. You know the Etta people? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that happened in the first six months I was there. For people who are not familiar with Carlo, um, go back and look at Podcast One with Chet. It's in the description box. But Carlo had a beef with someone and he waited... Yes, we so he went on a visit with his family. His mother, the his sister and the niece. He waited for a visit, he put a shank up his ass. You in remember front them of his family. cubicles you walk into? You remember with the fucking yeah. phones, yeah? yeah? Yeah, Them cubicles, yeah? They all filed in, he filed in his. He pulled it out of his fucking ass and then he walked into the grass's fucking cubicle and just fucking done him a living In front of his family. Fucking hell. In front of his mother. Ass. He said I wanted to kill him. his family on a visit. I know, he said I wanted to kill him in front of his mother. He said I could have killed him any time <laughs> I wanted. But he wants to do it But then he went mom. double cut here. He had AIDS. He was doing fucking 68 years. He was fucked. Seven stone, dripping wet, but his feet was just wrecked. Man. And why did he kill that guy? Because he grasped him for having a smack because this other guy, remember Harry? If you grasp people, you can get an extra visa v can't you? A oh, visit right, yeah. with your missus, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? On our wing, it worked like that. <laughs> don't know about yours, yeah. get sex if you grasp, yeah. If you grasp it, it's a good grassing. You get a sex visit. You get a sex visit. In America, snitches get snitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen But in Spain, it's fucking... It's weird. If you grasp... You get took care of mine there. And yeah. you do get took you know, care when, of there. When the schools take care of you. All the trustees are like that. But then yeah. you do have a liability you know I mean? of getting stuck as well, you know? So yeah. it's a fucking fine line you're treading in. The ones who have the best but jobs don't in grass, America. But don't grass in cat here. Yeah. Grass in the lower wings, but not with the fucking idiots because they do massive sentences. They've got well, at the end of the day, if you grass in cat here, they've got nothing to solve. They might as well kill well, you. Well, yeah, and then their reputation, it just goes higher and higher. Yeah. But then he went, Carlo... Cat here, double cat here. Remember that other side? Yes, There's yes, about yeah. Eight yeah. people there. Yeah. They used to let them out two at a time in the yard. Only two at a time in the yard. Mm -hmm. Then two, boom. Now another two. Now another two. And they, they mixed the sex offenders with everyone. Yes. Yeah, yes. yes. And, and the way I was on, um, you had... Were they protected, like, or why did they get smashed? No, if they were Spanish, they're protected. Yeah. But if they're any other race, they would tell the whole world who they are. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're Spanish, they keep their fucking mouth shut, don't they? The Spanish. They take care of their own. Yeah, the Catholics, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> it was quite uh, but there wasn't a lot of uh, spit nonsense anyway, was there? There was a couple, but you know was what? There? They I just, didn't they just, they kind of like just walked around and none of the other Spanish people <laughs> did anything about it. Yes, I think so, because yeah. I think they just keep it like, uh, <laughs> we don't do that. Whereas one time, was, uh, we're Catholics, you know, we don't, uh, that's for the fucking Moroccans. They're the fucking the worst priests and all that. I think so, I think so. I think it's all under cover in Spain, mind. Of course, whereas, mm. you know, you got the rapists, the pedos, everything, and the Spanish didn't seem to do anything about it. But I remember there was one time, one guy came in, English guy, an older guy, it did look typical Nazi sort of person. <coughs> and um, we had suspicion what he was in for, and I, I can't remember, somebody did find out uh, what he was in for, and it was for being like a pedo or whatever. And uh, straight away, all the other English guys sorted him out. Straight away, you know, that's that's what the English done. Yeah. He's a nonce, he's getting sorted. Whereas the Spanish should be like, ah, just let him be. They don't, yes, yes, nah. yes. They're like, weird mentality. Nah. It's weird. So when you say sorted, stabbed, beat up, killed. Uh, this guy just got a good hang in his cell, and then the screws just had to take him off the wing straight away. And he was put in um, module three. Module three was like, yeah. Four, right? yeah. That module three is a shady. We, yeah, I think so. One was a big one, two, second. Four, cat A, double cat A on the other side. And the infirmary. The three, 
Oh, yeah, we had the psychopath ward as well. <laughs> Opposite ours. There's a story about them cards, but the th- number three wing. Like the trustees of people. I don't know what they are. Number three was all a bit weird. If you came from Moodle 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Why are you in Moodle 3? <laughs> why have you come from number three? What's the, what's the psychopath ward story? Right, like psychopath story. Right, okay. Psychopath stories this year. We had the. Um, you remember our wall, Harry, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That wall at the end of the yard, yeah? Opposite is a psychopath wing, isn't it? That yeah, was yeah, all them, yeah. Over, wasn't it? Parcels used to come here. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> Birata. Did you meet him? Pirate, he was called. I'm not sure. What was he there at that time? But anyway, Gypsy, he used to do all the drugs. With a battery, yeah? It's with a little battery. Uh, you put the drugs in it, or the money in it. You get the plastic off the... Cigarette packet, light it, seal it, shoom, throw it over the wall. That's yeah. how they used to communicate, yeah? Anyway, Pirata, this one time, yeah, he fucking, these fucking idiots here yeah, on the fucking psycho wing must have asked for some drugs. And he must have said, yeah, 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 I've got some. So they sent the money over, and then he didn't send the drugs over. And then he didn't send the drugs over, and then he must have known this, right? Because then a few of the batteries came over. And I, and if you walk the yard, when a battery comes, there's always a reply, yeah? yeah? You know, yeah? But they were just coming over, and there was no reply going over. So I thought, right, it's isn't right, yeah? And okay. So what they did, yeah, they had a wall there, yeah? All these fucking l- lunatics, and they fucking took the wall down, kicked it down, and they just fucking, they were throwing bricks over. We were all getting fucking <laughs> pelted in the yard, right? All these bricks are fucking coming over. We just ran, right? The screws ran. Some people got hit, yeah. But fucking, what are we fucking drugs? Out. But we couldn't run anyway, yeah? Because all the doors are locked. All these yeah. bricks are coming in the yard. And we're like, what the fuck? They took the wall down. No, when you but see a, a battery like that, you, you yeah. leave it alone because you know it's not yours. Yes. Yes, if you yeah. see it, do not pick it up because it don't belong to you, does it? Yeah. And the person expecting it is expecting it. Yeah. Uh, so nothing got stolen. Then I said to him, be right afterwards, oh, what the fuck? I went, that's you. He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He went, I didn't give him the drugs. He went, I ripped them off. Bastard. <laughs> yeah. And that's what happened. They took a wall apart and fucking bombarded the whole fucking... But they're not right in the head, are they? <laughs> last, last, last thing they need is illegal drugs anyway, you know what I mean? But that was funny, that's like a separate wing of took a wall down, yeah? Because then, if you could see, they had like grass. Yeah, they did. They had them. trees to keep them just chilled. to keep their mind oh, like wow. uh, sort of nice. We just had a fucking bare yard, yeah? But they had trees, they had a nice garden wall, but that garden wall had took the fucking down and fuck. <laughs> they that they fucking threw it all over. We were just getting fucked with them, man. Loads of people got hit. In America, they put they give you a lot of trazodone and um, clodipine and like all all just stuff to like fucking to make you actually zombied out. Really, yeah. you know what I mean. And then screws at the top. Remember them ones on the corner? The gun turrets, pump action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were firing, but these lunatics did not give a fuck. They didn't stop. Over two thousand pesetas, twenty quid. That was over. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty quid. Why did he send it? Just couldn't be asked. Well, he didn't have the drugs. He just wanted the fuck. I don't know. He's just fucking yeah. gypsy, isn't he? Say no more. Just a fucking. <laughs> what, what was the other craziest <laughs> stuff that you saw, Harry, in the prison? Um, mostly fights, and it would always be breakfast time. Always yeah. breakfast time. I know, so I was banging it. Everybody's pissed off. I know, I had loads of fights at breakfast time. Always <laughs> breakfast time, every time. I think he's got more ice than me. I think it's when you <laughs> wake up yeah, and yeah. realise where you are. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Why has he got more ice than me? I saw, um, it was one morning, um, I was serving food. Oh, breakfast time. <laughs> and it was, it's true it was a time. Russian guy, <laughs> but he wasn't with the group of Russians that I kind of mingled with. He was just like a kind of a loner on his own. And uh, he actually stabbed a, a British guy at the time that was there. Um, he was from Denmark, British lad, again on drug charges. And he was he was a, he was a shifty cunt. He was you know he, he was he was a tough lad. And uh, stabbed him over what? Breakfast. Um, I, I I don't know <laughs> what, what his words. It was you know you, the the knives and forks were plastic. Yeah. It was a plastic. Remember yeah. the red plastic knives? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The knife he'd obviously sharpened it. And I don't know what you 
stabbed him with that. Um, yeah, he's capable if you do them. Oh, yeah. yeah. On the That's concrete. Capable. And uh, six capable, whatever, yeah. like, but you know, yeah, capable, but the guy, the, the English guy, he didn't back down. They got he got he would have been stabbed once, but he didn't back down. Um, he gave him shit over food, and then he went off to the infirmary. That was it. Never seen him again. Aye. So, if you were serving out food, were people sweating you to give extra portions? Nah, not really. It's a uh, fucking it's a bag on it. <laughs> 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 and then who's gonna have, have more shit? I want so less. I don't want to you said that food there, man. Yeah. I want less, bro. Yeah. Chicken was good. Remember chicken? Yeah. That's why I said I was a muzzy, and you know? God. Because I got chicken more than chicken. Yeah, yeah. I said I was a Muslim and I got chicken right, and rabbit. Man. Yeah. On your way, you could kind of like tell them. Yeah. Maybe you rabbit. Like, rabbit yeah. and chicken. Yeah. Muslim nice? get, yeah. It's better than the other bullshit that we're getting, wasn't it? So is it all like halal? Halal. Halal. Wow. Yes, well, it's supposed to be halal, but... It don't really make any difference, yeah. But uh, yeah. at least it's a little bit better than what the rest were getting. The, the, the same in America, but yeah. I, I mean, I don't think they because all like, the other a stews... guy come in and fucking actually bless the food. I think they just buy it free for all. It just gets only... a stick up oh, on yeah. this, this food wasn't slaughterhouse. Fucking allowed. There's not. There's not there's Could not. you buy food from the inside? money. You had um, so on the yard. You had this like, just like a little, little window. And behind it was a shop, and they'd serve you like um, tins of tuna or bread rolls, water, fags, chocolate. coffee, yeah. bit of chocolate. So that's what I mean. If you had money, so your money you had there wasn't. It was like because um, it was pesetas back in the day. So you'd had like a little cord with one thousand pesetas, yes. two thousand, five thousand, yes. and then you had the the coins. Do you remember the the coins of the whole? Oh, the coins were yes. The 25, you, because yeah, I remember right, they used to throw the sometimes with the batteries. Spanish money. Sometimes oh. with the batteries when they're asking for drugs. They sent coins over, and then when I land in the yard, the coins will just split and they'll scatter. But nobody would steal any. Yeah, they would pick them up and give it to whoever it belonged to. You know, it's decent that though. Well, it? The, that's how it worked. Well, yeah? one of the one of the biggest ways I was making money, believe it or not, was remember those pesetas. There was twenty five percent of the whole middle. A duro was called in Spanish, un duro. And uh, I used to sell cigarette papers, you know, like Rizzler papers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just one paper, 25 pesetas, because all the Spanish, I used to say, everybody was oh, getting stolen. Oh, you couldn't buy every, papers, could Couldn't we? get papers, of course. We'd get them smuggled in. And, uh, yeah, actually, when my parents came to visit, I sent my dad, I went and bring his order. Did you not just use a Bible? Well, I if, use if, a Bible. If you had to, but it was just... Yeah, I if use if, a Bible, I'd think it dummy for the full size. I was, I was, I was getting <laughs> 25 pesetas for one... For one I did. I just did that. You see the Mexicans Bible. praying before they use the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> it comes in use the Bible. That's what yeah. I say. You go to the hotel room, so a day and goes, all right, I've got skins there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's how I made my money pop. I don't know, had no skins there. Yeah, it's the Bible, we use We were posh and all. <laughs> but the, it wasn't like, you, wasn't like you'd get the package. The security on their wing is less, yeah? So they obviously got a lot of extra shit Yeah. yeah. We I used toilet was... rolls too in America because... It was like that tracing paper shit. Yes. It, yeah. it, it just wipes everywhere. It doesn't wipe your ass. It, doesn't it just wipe goes your ass. everywhere. It just spreads the shit around, doesn't it? Yeah. What's all that about as well? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck is all that about? But yeah, there was, um, you know, we're talking about like the people in the wing. It was, you, you just don't realise until you meet these people in real life that the amount of stories I was told of, like murderers, and you would just be talking, thinking, these guys are just like, talking about their crime as if it's normal yeah, no, one no. guy that was telling Chet he said uh, lovely guy he used to sit and play dominoes with him he helped us learn a bit of Spanish and uh, I don't know how I asked him one day what he's in for so he'd been there for like 15 years and he said basically he came home caught his missus in bed with somebody yeah. killed the both of them crime of passion hacked them both to bits yes took them into the police station was like there you go take us yeah yeah and, and, and I'm over. like I'm like I think you should right there yourself huh? I think you did alright <laughs> And I'm like, I can't believe I'm sitting playing dominoes for somebody. There's another guy who's called El Matacura, which is priest killer. He was a heroin addict and he killed this priest and strung him up and, you know, mutilated him. But he was a nice, to talk to him, he was a nice guy. He's always like... The crime of passion guys are usually quite well behaved, mm. aren't they? Because they've well, got a normal they're, they're life. Not yeah. Yeah. They're not no. criminal minded, are they? After no. the priest, they're not criminal minded anyway, aren't they? Well, I don't know what the priest did, but uh, I think he robbed him and high on heroin and just mutilated him. Strung him up. He probably fucked him as a kid and he could have yeah. that probably. Who knows? Good, well, yeah. The pulp, if you're watching this, fuck you, Sue. 
<laughs> but yeah, it's just some, stamp. <laughs> some of the some of the stories. And Tyson Fury, we're still waiting. Tyson, bro. <laughs> Charity match, bro. Come on, sort it out, yeah. I'll put it. I'll put it. In I know the... you're gonna smash me all over, yeah, but doesn't it be funny? In fact, do the three was me, Wildman, and Harry. Yeah, we'll have you. <laughs> if you didn't see, oh, yeah, it'd be funny. Just knock the three of us out, yeah. That'd be funny. If you didn't see our Christmas <laughs> special, it was titled. <laughs> Tyson Fury called out by gangster, <laughs> Chet and Wildman getting drunk. Two and a half yeah. hours long. It's yeah. in the playlist. Please uh, check it out if you yeah. are not politically correct. I'd so I'd so fucking idiots to answer that back and saying, you know what? I think Tyson would win that. I one. know. I'm like you fucking daft. <laughs> what do you fucking hell? Do you think <laughs> I'm talking for real? Do you know, I'm <laughs> for real? But, uh, but Tyson, but Tyson, do you remember? I can get snipers on top of the buildings when you leave. You know. So remember that one as <laughs> well. And I can use a bat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, his, um, it's his younger brother, isn't it? Tommy? Yeah. Is it? Is his younger brother? <coughs> he was on there. Um, oh, we just want Tyson. Fuck his nah, brothers. Nah, who's he? Yeah. He's on Love Island, wasn't well, he? Who's interested in him? Is that what his dad? He count, he count. <laughs> his own money, he don't even count yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get us in the picture, but just leave it out. Yeah. Bro. Leave it out, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking to the murderers and they're telling you their, their stories. Yeah. And um, what's the most disturbing thing you heard? Um, probably that one where the guy chopped up his wife and um, I love her. Right. Took to the police station. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He Handed was... them in. Handed himself in as well. Didn't even bother going on the run. He what thought... sentence did he get? Well, he'd been in 15 years when I was there. And he was, get, he was getting 20 these, pieces, isn't it? He was getting these like releases where you can go out and you, you get out for a couple of days. and then you, Maybe because so, he was a good boy and he handed yeah, he himself was. in and yeah. he complied. He did the business. He like arse licked. I think so. You see, in Spain, the, so. the law's so. weird because... Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of arse lickers who get a lot of fucking extras there. You can commit murder and get a small sentence. And you yeah, can do what we do and get a... I know, but we yeah. did pay the judge. We were getting a nine. We got four and a half. They they all take bribes. Yeah, yeah. They all take bribes in Spain. Yeah, they all. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. if you had a pra- if you had a, like a normal prosecutor, you'd have been fucked. You'd oh, been listen, full nine. we're gonna get ten. They went if you make a deal, it's nine. Yeah? yeah, sign for nine, you're gonna do six. That's what we were told. Yeah. <sighs> all right, okay. And then I was just sort of uh, working it all down. All right, we've done nearly three. Uh, I can get a fucking transfer to London. You break it down. And yeah, you I can get a transfer to London. Belmarsh, you go first few months and yeah. then I can go my end, probably yeah. Accrington or Wheelston to finish off. Yeah. And you break it down. Okay, six months there, six months there. Cat D, I can get... There's no Cat D in fucking... There, is there? What the fuck was all that about? Probably home house, wasn't it? That stuck Like, he had 20 different fucking cellmates. Oh, you know what so- I mean? I stayed in the same cell from day one. I had that many of them They had me just fucking there. We want to know where you are and you don't move. That's not so bad, that, though, because you don't have I to get to know people. I love that, bro. You know I love mean? that. Listen, that's brilliant. On my own, I had my own pictures on the walls, but they did rip them down because they're Catholics, yeah? Page three girls I used to have up, yeah? The screws, what they used to do the search, they always rip them all down. We're Catholics, yeah, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but you're allowed to fucking nonchalant boys and do all the fucking rest you want, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm just trying to fucking get a wank off, bro, for you at the end of the night. Yeah, you <laughs> preach. <the fucking. laughs> Give Pete, me a break, man. <laughs> Pedophile priests. Yes. Catholics. They're so strict, but they're so fucking bad. Yeah. Well, do you, priests? Who was your worst cellmate? <laughs> Um, my worst one is because I've had Jack. so many worst the ones that the ones that, the ones that snore oh snore 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 he was just the worst snorer. And it, it sounds funny, but mentally it drives you insane. Every night when you're lying there, you're banging is, and man, banging. I'd have rolled him up, man. Fuck it. Oh, Sewage mattress. I would have just said, why didn't you just just said, why did he just knock them out and come over? Oh, him? he was really, really, you should just come really old, this guy. If you fuck him up, did you spray the wet toilet paper and the plastic in the <laughs> ears and all that shit? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> no, actually, no. <laughs> Heck. It's, uh, did you? Paper in the ears no, works. No, 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 no. Wet it, stir it in. 
Yeah. It dries out when it works, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's so loud. It 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 this guy it reduces so... it significantly. It does. It does. This guy was yeah. so loud the bed was vibrating. You could feel oh. it. But then you get because we had a TV as well. But if you had the money, you can buy a TV, just a little portal one. Yeah. And I had one cellmate. He was um, Jamaican guy, English, but he's from Jamaica, and he was a, he was a big lad and. Uh, he was nice, but oh, you'd have the TV on all night and we'd argue, but like, for mm. fuck's sake, can I get you had a TV in yourself? So, well, not me, I couldn't afford a TV, was ah. in. Mm. Maybe he had a TV, he had loads of money, so yeah, you know, he got the little luxury. Had loads of money, a TV. <laughs> Maybe he had a TV, you were like kingpin in your, in your, in your, in your cell. I got one in the end, didn't I? Did you? Remember? Tell you my who'd, you, who'd you take that off? I waited, no. <laughs> who'd you take <laughs> <laughs> that for that? <laughs> well, the TVs had, um, the TVs had like, um, like wax stamps on this because it was the big square old TVs. You can only buy them off the jail, yeah. And they had wax stamps on the side. Yeah, so you can't open them. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. can, so they can, mm. like a seal, so you can Does see. Does your number on it in America? Yeah, yeah, every the yeah, yeah, they're wax sealed, the so you can't put open it, on it, put any tools in it. Yeah. Uh, because they check the seals every time they come in. We used to make our own kettles for the cell, get a bit of wire, stick them in the air, uh, in the plug sockets into the I water. Get kettles in that, oh, we, didn't socket. I never... we used to get called things called stingers. Basically, it was just like similar to a kettle in a way, but you'd have your cup of water and you'd have like it's like a, an element of like the bottom of a kettle, really. You know what I mean? Like a heating fill. Like a heating fill, yeah. yeah. That's how you'd heat your water. Yeah, we did it? exactly the same, yeah. I mean, obviously, you, you run the risk of getting electrocuted, but yeah. hey, if you want a cup of tea, you got to do it, don't you? But uh, <laughs> I never had, had no jokes. kettle in myself. Do you have a kettle in myself? <laughs> how can I, I do a kettle? I've got a kettle, like a homemade kettle. Kettle TV? Yeah. What the fuck else What the fuck's on? going on here? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm there. Why is it, why is it <laughs> in the world? Don't be, right? Kettle, telly, <laughs> what? <laughs> and I pay for the attorney's suit. Fucking hell. Tell me. Tell me. What the fuck's going on here? But the one thing we're saying to Chet is um, I think one of the weirdest or the, the hardest thing was is the first Christmas there, wasn't it? Yeah. First one, we were only there a few months. Mm-hmm. Couple of months, man. I don't know about Christmas, yeah? You know about your Christmas thing. We weren't, we weren't together, were we? Uh, but for you, it was quite hard, actually. You were a young boy. I thought so. It's his girlfriend, his mum, and his dad, and fucking, and got fucked on. It's a fucked up situation, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Did you actually celebrate Christmas? I do, yeah. But uh, we're not Christians, you know. I'm yeah. Sikh, uh, but yeah, we still get a turkey, buy presents, do shit. But they're Catholics; they're all quite strict, aren't they? Yeah. But we had nice food in that day. Yeah, that was the only, only day. Only yeah. day. Yeah. We well, got like nine well, because they brought it in the church. Brought that food in, remember? It's mm-hmm. nice that. Yeah. You get yeah. decent food Christmas in America, but the best time you get the best food in America, believe it or not, is when it's um Super Bowl. Right. I, I, that and 4th of July. 4th of July. Yeah. You get like a hamburger, you get hot dogs, you get late mm-hmm. chips, you get all good stuff. Fucking hot dogs, hamburgers. I lost me that. That was a fuck all. No, that. just fish. Fuck. Just Kelsey's saying, all in it. No, he's saying fish, yeah. Isn't me he's saying it's because I hate it. It's fucking polluted I, dead fish has been fucking ran it, fucking stunk. Where's the mackerel in the tin? Oh, you listen, got. it's fucking terrible, mate. Calamari's he, everything. He's, he's making listen, he's going calamari squid fish. No guys, nothing like that. That's me, it's, it wasn't even that. I don't know what the fuck it was. I swear down to what the fuck it was, but I wouldn't eat it. Yeah. You couldn't even chew it. Because it's been fucking boiled that many times over. Yeah. Calamari. He's making like a fucking restaurant here. I'm thinking <laughs> that. I mean, it sounds calamari. Right, what the fuck are you talking that's, about, that's, calamari? That's squid stuff that's chopped up, you know. I know, but it wasn't uh, fucking. I know. It was like rubber. I don't know what it was, but it was terrible. It was rubber bands. Terrible food. Mm. Disgusting. <clears throat> I've only had it once, and I got it by mistake. Calamari. So I like the fucking. Octopus. Yeah, octopus coming out of fucking ears. <laughs> <laughs> octopus. <laughs> Years ago, I went to the Albert Dock and I seen the, the big chips were in there. And I went to a, a pizza place next door to it. And it said, um, oh, you can eat feast. So I thought, oh, I'll get one of them. But I didn't know it was a fucking seafood place. Right. I should have known because it was at the Albert Dock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I had like squid on it, king prawn on it and all right. that. And I ate anything with a fucking... With, if it's got a head on it, I can't fucking eat the fucking thing, yes, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, yeah, no, no, no. It puts you right off. Yeah, if it's battered, like fishy yes, chips, I yes. can do that. 
Or even but not when it comes as it is. No. I don't like I like the mackerel in tins with tomato sauce. I, I don't mind that. But that's about as fishy as I get. No yeah, that's about as fishy as I get mackerel. <laughs> what what was prison transportation like going back and forth court and what was it like being in court? Actually I'll tell you what happened to me quite a few times. I don't even know if I told you about this. There was three occasions when <clears throat> the screws would say, right, get your stuff, you you're going. I'm not going where, didn't have a clue. Stick in the back of the van, please uh, cuffed up, take you to court. I'm thinking, oh, what's going on? Yeah, it was like a courthouse. And it was um, three times this happened to me. You know when you do a, like a, a line-up? Um, Did I not go with you? Oh, you might, no. I, well, look, it was me and you don't really look like each other. So, was, so what the fuck's all this about? It was go like, on, no, no, it, it was, this yeah, this happened to me three times. You know <laughs> when you... Um, I'm interested now. You, you don't look like one of them. So we get to this like courthouse place, sitting uh-huh. cuffed up for hours, just sitting. There's a lot of other guys as well. And then you go into the room where, you know... Where oh, ID to, parade. I, that's the one, yeah. You pay for that. They're just using it for oh, the ID fucking yeah. thingy, right, I so get That it. happened to me three times where I got took Right, ID maybe, for... yeah, for ID shit. Yeah, yeah, but if you don't get anything for it and they pick you out, you still get the charge, you know that, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. fucking right. Why did you agree to that? <laughs> I, I just, just got told, Harry... <laughs> oh, I just got told. <laughs> yeah. Get your stuff, you're saying, fuck off. Get your stuff, you're going. I'm like, oh, where am I going? And then he says it's you. Yeah, I didn't even know what I was going for. Street charge. Yeah, Fuck yeah, because they would just say they would just because they don't call you by your first name. They always call you by your surname. They're Ellie. Yeah. Grab your stuff. All oh, right, great. But you get up. paid for an ID parade normally. Yeah, you do. For get all paid. these other yeah. people, yeah, yeah. Not in Spain, I didn't. I know. What the just fuck stress of that for? stress of sitting there going. Why what? do you agree to that for? I didn't, didn't agree. To that. I just got told you're going to wherever. Did you say no. Didn't know what it was for. We were in the prison van together going to court, wasn't we? Yeah. And when it goes around the fucking bend, imagine, everyone just slides, we're all all fucking on this chain link. Everyone slides, I'm next to him, imagine me next to him and you fucking just... I think you're chained up. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's in the corner there, fucking squashed. (laughs) (laughs) The transportation was just... just Our transportation was like, uh, yeah, it was all right, wasn't it? Yeah. Separate cell bits, isn't it? Yeah. In the van. Yeah. All oh, right, all separate. Yeah, did you chain you up though? You don't cuffed and uh, cuffed up. Yes, ankle but bracelets. Like, not on the ankles. No, no, just cuffed up. Just back in there. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you were cuffed up behind. I think I was cuffed up yeah. in front. So you're more dangerous. And was it weird in court because they're all speaking in Spanish? Uh, you yeah. had a bit of understanding then, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I'd, le- I'd, I'd learned quite a bit of Spanish, but, but you know, when you even if you go to English court. They use you still don't even know what the yeah, yeah, you, know you still don't even know until they say six and a half, seven, eight years. That's all you bet you're listening so, for. Right? I, 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 I just wait for the <laughs> lad more bag to come with the sandwiches for me lunch. <laughs> Fuck what they're going through. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Spanish court. Didn't really have a clue what the same did were. What yes. about what about your sentencing day, your hearing? What was yeah. that day like? You um, understood the years. Yeah, yeah, quatro. yeah. Yeah, you understand the quarter on yours. Four. Yeah. <laughs> quatro. Quatro y media. Media, yeah. Four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah, How did it feel to be sentenced? Oh, wow. Brilliant. Well, we'd already served quite a long time. The thing is, in Spain, they'll keep you on remand as long as possible. Because from what we could understand, yeah. the longer they keep you on remand there, the, the more money they get off the British government to keep you there. Is that mm. right? So they... No. Uh, no. I think the British good. government doesn't pay for us. I got told of my lawyer when this is a Spanish cost. Uh, yeah. Taxpayers. Shake this down. is a Spanish cost. This is yeah. a Spanish cost. Uh... Yeah, I mean, so I don't think so, no. Are you moved to a different place after you're sentenced? Or is it you no, same, 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 back same, in, same yeah. right. Strip yeah. back in the same cells. Yeah, because we were in module four together. But we were fucking giving it high fives, remember? <laughs> four and a half years, they said, oh, well, fucking <laughs> How long was left on that? Have you got three Not a long lap, yeah. We, we, we nearly did three. Yeah. Two yeah. and a half, we're done. Yeah. We've got to do about three, we're done, innit? But the crazy thing is... Did you look at transferring back to the UK? No, because we don't have much time, because it takes about a year. Yeah. It takes about a year, so we yeah. just thought, let's just ride it here, and let's just get the fuck out. But we got expelled, because my lawyer, he got us expelled. Expulsion, so we can't enter Spain for 10, ten years. years yeah. And we got out about two or three months earlier, didn't we? The crazy thing is, after we'd been to court, mm. I was on the wing with him, Module 4, Maximum Security, yeah. and then they packed us up and put us back in the Ministry didn't they? Yeah, and then they put you back over there. Yeah. So would uh, you know would would create that bond training and that was bad yeah. yeah when he left you know when he left me and the screws come I remember him he went in the showers anyway he fucking I think he punched some fucking walls and I can't believe he sent me back 
we're together now, and now they send me back over there again. Which was a bit shitty, you know? Yeah, yeah. But that's what they're doing in screws. Head games, isn't it? Yeah, you said a screw is a screw, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, no, because we're sitting a in the yard. A screw is a screw, yeah? Yeah. And I'll call over nothing. We just sat there in the yard, and it was one of those kind of yeah, like yeah. moments. One was sentenced, yeah. and we thought, right, okay, it's fine. We're all right. But it's like splitting us up again. Mm-hmm. We'll just fuck your head one more time. How's that? Yeah. The thing is, as well, when we were on the, the maximum security together, we spent literally all day, every day yeah, together. training. So, you know, you're, you're training. We were fighting the Russians. Fucking... You just you just create a bond that's different than anything else, don't you? You know, anybody yeah, in prison, you know, jail. You know. Jail is a different fucking environment, totally. Not like anything else in the world, man. Yeah. You can form a friendship there, and it's not a friendship anymore, is it? Yeah. Well, even prison itself different than remand, isn't it? Yes. Because you're more structured when you're in prison. Remand, you're like, okay, I don't know what's going on. Yes. Yeah. Once you've got your fucking six or your seven or your yeah. ten or whatever, you go in there and then you're working out on your own little head, aren't you? Did you get released together then? <clears throat> yeah. Same flight. Yes. Yeah. Same flight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Expulsion. Armed, armed escort and stuff. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Gatwick Airport, they, they separated the. Anyway, they fucking told us to go, yeah, on that day, right? They just said to me, Sandu, yeah? I was in the gym, shorts, vest, boom. They went, right. I went, what? Hefe goes, papers are here, going home. I went, when? He went, now. Now what? <laughs> don't know how you felt. I yeah? was in the kitchen. Don't actually, know how you were told. I was in the kitchen getting uh, like the trolley for some food and they just says, Ellie, I'm asking you. And then they told us, um, you go. And I was like, what? And I just remember pacing round it and I just walked in a circle, just round and round thinking, I can't believe it, I'm getting out, I'm getting yeah. out. I can't believe it, this is, this yeah. is just unreal. It just, yeah. just felt like it was never going to happen. For me, it was like, wow. And I just went, I went. But then, Gypsy's heard, yeah? <coughs> and they knew I was a money collector. So they went, right, check. Can I have your pants? Can I have your walk? <laughs> <laughs> but I was that happy I just gave everything away, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went to the airport with them stupid shorts and a vest on. Do you remember? I remember. I remember. Actually, I gave remember. all my clothes away. Couldn't believe what I fucking done. Couldn't believe that fucking high. Would well, you cut down shorts? <laughs> <laughs> no, they weren't like mine. No, they weren't like his. <laughs> 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 it was, it was, that would have been funny as put my ass showing in the <laughs> <laughs> fucking feds. <laughs> Take, me yeah. Take me out the plane. Take me out the plane. It only felt real when they actually <laughs> put me, uh, me, me girlfriend and yeah. Chet in the van, out the prison. Done all the paperwork to get out of the prison, yeah. cuffed up, and then stuck us in themselves. Yeah, well, first. we actually the thing is that we walked in the, in the cells at the airport first, but we walked through the airport with the police cuffed up in front of full view of everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, f- I just felt weird because there's me cuffed up walking through the airport, holiday makers all around. Me. You think they'd be a bit more discreet, wouldn't you? No, but, uh, fuck when I'm in America. That's to be do you like, three do you like you put a, no, they're not discreet. They let you put a jumper over your head. They're not discreet. Oh, right. They're not discreet, and they cleared the last twelve seats of the plane. Yeah, no shoes. Yeah, yeah mash shoes off as well. <laughs> barefoot. Well, we're gonna in go. Case, in case we run, we can't run that fast, can we? We're gonna <laughs> fucking barefoot <laughs> on a plane. Took the shoes off, <laughs> coughed. <coughs> Armed marshals took it to Gatwick. Yeah, they took all the money off me, but I had some money. I stuck it on my ass. So Sick. they didn't take that, yeah. And plus some hash I had, yeah. And so we so we just they took us to Gatwick. We brought hash back into the country. <laughs> I brought it back in. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Remember I brought it back yeah. in. I said, yeah. I'm not leaving that behind. You didn't, baby. you didn't have that much money on you, but did you? I didn't have fuck up more up there. I just fucking <laughs> shoved everything up my ass. And I walked out with it. And uh it's I better than taking me though with it, your ass is yeah. yeah. it's the bank to save. I know it is, yeah. It's an extra pocket in jail, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a secret pocket. <laughs> so, was your girlfriend still down for the cause by the end of it, or was she ready to run? Uh, she was, she, she, like like us, she'd settled into prison life. Yeah. She'd made good friends with the she two She had Lisa scouts. and Lindsay. Yeah. They did take care of her. They really Those sour grapes then, get for her. Two Scouse girls, yeah, there's me. Girls if they're two Scouse girls weren't there, because they were there through the full yeah. sentence, if they weren't there, She'd she would have had her. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, so uh, these two scars girl, Lindsay, Lisa, Lindsay, wow. Yeah. They saved her mind. They looked after her. Yeah, they mm. did. Yeah. But because they were tough. And their story is another fucking story. They if it wasn't for them, she'd have been someone else's bitch. They were doing a nine. Yeah. Usually. They were usually. they were doing a nine stretch mm. for cocaine. Yeah. 
I know she. Um, well, she expects to use two girls for looking yes, after her. Yes, yeah. But she, no, she was she, by that time she'd settled in the sentence, same as us. She just accepted it all, and it's like anything. You just got to get on with it. You got to adapt to your surroundings and uh, just make the most of it. And you know, she's the same. She still says to this day she would never change anything. She doesn't regret anything. Um, but obviously, just wants to be left anonymous out of this. So. My ex won't even tell us. Look at me. Look at her. I see her on the bus. She goes like that. <laughs> So what was it, it like getting back to your family and stuff? Well, we literally got dumped at Gat- Gatwick Airport. No money, Gatwick, no nothing. No money. No mobile phones, nothing like that. Yeah, um, zero. And we walked about well, London all night. When we got... We the, walked around because it was just amazing just to see people. people. Shit though, innit? When you yeah. see the cafes or you see kebab houses or you see McDonald's and you haven't got no fucking money. Well, I don't know, but we wouldn't even ask about you, that, You had enough money on you to... Um, we, we got a, I'm sure we got a Burger King. And then we went and bought some cans and yes. we sat because we got, because the, the airport, they just said, right, off you go. You've committed no crime here. Yeah. yeah. Go. Yeah. Sort of thing. And uh, we're sitting on these like, outdoor 24 hour cafes, literally just got out of frigging prison. <laughs> He's sitting and we're having a drink and there was like, some people like young kids, like, like that's it, teenagers, youngsters, and they were just being arsey. Well, of course you just exploded. I, remember. You? I, I remember. Cause you two anyway. And, Start arguing for fuck's sake, do you know where I've just fucking come from? And he kicked off, and I was like, Oh, can I take I've just walked out. Can I take him anywhere? Walked, can I, take I, him anywhere? I know, but they were being a bit fucking. Yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. be. Yeah, they'll I be think it's because of my shorts and all that. Because I just. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, just I just walked out with what I was wearing in Spain. Just get out of jail, we're going to go and bang. As long as you think cat whistle, you know, all right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we pretty much just walked the streets of London all night, didn't we? All night, yeah. Literally, went through so hard. It was just like. With them shorts on. <laughs> yeah, what, what yeah. was that? Soho? Soho. You'd pimp. You know yeah, he was, oh, yeah. was he pimping you? <laughs> <laughs> then, um, next morning, Victoria Station. Victoria National Station. Express. Yeah, we got back. the coach up. And uh, that was just w- weird coming back to Newcastle. There was a lot of change mm. in Newcastle. Things like the Millennium Bridge had been built. Mm. That's the thing. We were in prison for the Millennium. That, that big changeover. Yeah, 2000, weren't we? This one, everybody was partying, celebrating that big change. And uh, we, were, we were stuck in jail, weren't we? Mm. So there's loads of things watching. Mobile phones, even when we come back. Yeah. Technology and mobile phones yeah. have changed. Yeah. Internet. It only, it only been three years, but what? Yeah. Yeah. It's strange, yeah. It's all strange. Yeah. Are we in Las Vegas on the millennium? <laughs> I thought so. Go on that, for real. <laughs> Judy Death in Las Vegas. Ever in happened. the world. Yeah. In the, the world. world. At the turn of the clock. Happens it's right by like, wild, man. Yeah. But also, yeah. it gets worse, Sean, yeah? It's only it gets worse, yeah. It didn't get better. No? He was only out for about six months. Come right? on. Me, he was only out for about six months that he did another sentence in Durham. For what? <sighs> Selling drugs for me. No. Steroids no. only. So, but he... No. But, but it's me. I think it's a fact that he got away with this sentence. Your mind, like mine, Harry, was a bit oh. fucked up, yeah? It was a bit fucked up and a bit fried. I don't know what... Uh, <coughs> narcotics you were taking... Well, well, he fucked the job off again. Six months chat, again. Any fucking hell, what, what was the job? So basically, when I started, you said to that. When I we are when Raul Moore Giza. When I when I got out, Raul Moore, yeah, he was selling he was selling steroids on my behalf, right? Because uh, we just got out of jail. He wants to make a bit of dollar, didn't he? You know, he got fucking nicked again. So yeah. So what was your sentence on that one? So I got out and literally. I felt like, you know, a king. I was going, me and you, we go to clubs, no queues, straight in. All right, lads, get in, handshakes. It was like massive respect, wasn't it? And then we'd go down the quayside, you'd be getting stoned, we'd be going to clubs, and it was just like, wow, this life is great. You know, it's like you've just done this time. It was almost like you were like a, a Geordie hero. And then, uh, you know, I just felt invincible, but obviously I needed money. Um, I started doing a bit of illegal door work because I'd already lost my badge by then. And then uh, he's like, well, I'll sort you out. This is for you. You t- sell that. You keep that. And as I said, at the time, my friend, close friend was Raul Moore. He was a big bodybuilder. So we sort of kind of went into business together, buying stuff off him. And, uh, you know, like, things were great until... Allegedly. <laughs> things, things were great until I got Raul, raided. Raul anyway, is dead now anyway, so he can't fucking speak. Things yeah. were great until I got raided. Um, I was actually living in my mum's house at the time, and they booted that front door through, and there must have been 20 police dogs, everything... 
Poor mum, she was strip searched. Obviously, yeah. I was strip searched. Oh, and shit, and that mate. It's yeah. because he was linked with me in the past. Mm. This is why they come heavy on him. Very heavy. And then it was really bad. I just felt sorry for him. I thought, what the fuck's happening? They should only check your bedroom, you know, by law. Well, the, the, the turfed over the whole house, everything. Mm. Um, they found everything that I had. And uh, yeah, then it went through the process of in and out of court. That went on for quite a few. I was actually it was actually Friday the thirteenth of September when I got actually locked up. Went to Crown Court in Newcastle, and uh, yeah, the court was weird. I, I was also oh, we got out in February yeah. and September. Took, took a while in again. Yeah, it took a while because I was in and out of um, magistrate court. It kept getting adjourned. Uh, obviously, while building the case against us, and then the Friday second, the thirteenth. Friday the thirteenth. So you are Diablo, you. Oh no, afraid of the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, the court <laughs> <laughs> they did see ex- they did see expect more. The, 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 the yeah, the no, stuff. I was fucking dreading it. You know, I think oh, what the fuck. He said you're looking at four years mm. maximum. So when they give yeah, you a man. sentence, I was like, yes, thank you. You're all right over it. I really do have to, you. Yeah, yes. yeah. And then they give us a tag. But um, when you were talking about the the police transportation, when I. When I got into the, the, the van, the tiny little little pit poly is set, it was dark. Let me go up. Piss, yeah. Harry, you and, tell uh, the story, yeah. When we drove out of the court, because it was dark inside the court, it was just covered in sick everywhere. So I'm sitting in the back of this van, it's puke oh, everywhere. Oh, God. Getting caught off to Durham. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, first day at Durham, literally walked into the yard, seen a guy get his face smashed to bits. Guy had a plaster cast on his arm. Um, group of lads just sort of kind of walked around him. The guy with the plot cast just swung, hit the guy in the face, and just smashed his jaw completely. Turned out he was a grass. Um, and that was literally my first couple of hours in Durham. Um, never been Durham. I've been to Acklington and I've been to Home House. I've never been to Durham. Which one's got the best starties? Uh, Acklington, <laughs> Northumberland. <laughs> Well, Morph, I think it's called. Morpeth or something like that. Morpeth. Yeah. I love Stotties. <laughs> so because of your reputation with him then, was it plain sailing for you in the prison? Durham? Um, nah, not really. I mean, the screw said was because they knew I'd been to prison before. They said so. Um, they, they, didn't, they weren't really concerned for me, my safety or anything. I said, oh, we'll just put you into the general population. I can't remember what wing I was put on now. But yeah, um, you know, I just kept my head down there. I was on my own, you know, didn't have Chet there or anybody else. So. Is it old school prison? Is it like five or four? Dur- yeah, Durham yeah. is a very, yeah. very, very old school prison, very old. Yeah, it's a really old prison. But yeah, I um, actually preferred Spanish prison to, to yeah. British prison. Much preferred it. I did notice in British prison, you were locked up in your cell a lot longer, which gives you a lot more time to think and it, it, it just drives you crazy. It's a slam with their metal doors as well, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the thing is, with the, in the British prisoners, everybody was so aggressive. The thought spin was bad, but in British prison, especially in Durham, because you've got the Geordies and you've got the Mackhams. Um, Don't get on. And they do not get on. No. So you stick Geordies and Mackhams together in a prison. It's got to go off. Badly, badly. I mean, I, even I was threatened, you know, people shout out you through the through the door. Yeah, you would, you would get yes, other you'd get other inmates shouting out the door. You and that cell over there, when I see you, I'm going to stab you up, I'm going to slash you. You know what's getting cell warriors, the though? Usual. Oh, oh God. Yeah, yeah. And when, when yeah. you see him, the sound all warriors. dark. Is that his internet warriors? Yeah. yeah. And when you come they're out, about that fucking they're big. Similar. You know what I mean? Oh, they're quite similar. <laughs> it's like a dog that'll bark at you, and then when the gates open, the dog just fucks on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did see, though, quite oh, often. Oh, oh, oh. How, how heavy-handed the British screws are. They were really heavy-handed. The oh, screws, yeah. The British screws, they were not thinking twice about mm. fucking smashing you, hitting you. Who's going to say anything? You know, I've seen that many, many times. Yeah. Did you have toilets back then? I know in Walton. <laughs> Had a toilet. Yeah. Did you have toilet, a yeah. proper toilet. Not a, not a shithole on the floor. <laughs> with rats coming out of it. Yeah. And that's not exaggerating. In Spain, it was, like you say, a shithole. Oh, yeah. Cockroaches, rats, rats, rats everything, everything. Rats coming out. Do you know out. what I used to do in Spain, yeah? I used to get food. Yeah. And leave it at the door so a rat would just come and eat it and fuck off. And fuck off, help Otherwise, they would crawl all over me. Yeah. The horrible I'm Looking admit. for food, you know? I would just put the food, feed them, take it and go. That's where it is every day. English, when I first did prison, I did it in Walton back in 94. And like fucking, no, it might be before then. I was 21 anyway and 49 now. And you literally, back then, you used to piss and shit in a bucket. 
and like fucking every morning you'd come out and slop it fucking out and shit. It was just fucking disgusting, you know what I mean? But in America, they had like fucking, I mean, the toilets were nice, the showers was nice. Sanitization is, yeah. At least they give you that, but they give you massive sentences. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will give you That's a massive funny. fucking I joined sentence. three years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they will take care a little bit. Yeah. So what was the worst violence you saw in the UK prison? Uh, probably the first day I was there when I saw Yeah, that. your yeah. first day. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, uh, the, the funny yeah. thing is, I actually saw the lad who done it um, about a year later in the area where I live, and he recognised, I didn't recognise, he recognised me, he's like, oh, I remember you in jail. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're the lad that smashed that kid all over the plaster on your arm, didn't you? Yeah, that was probably the worst thing, because the guy, he's, when I say his jaw smashed, I mean, it literally, it's, his face was just floppy. It's just, mm. his jaw just dropped. I mean, he was completely unconscious. He was a rat, though, wasn't he, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I later found that out. Yeah, Bloody yeah. Guy. So, was that your last prison sentence then? That was my last one, and that was when I decided, right? Um, I, got need two change, I need to change my two career. Two strikes on drugs, any? Mm-hmm. Same as me, right? Two I'm gonna strikes. I've got. Check I'm gonna hide. Check, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hide Chet's phone number. Do you know what? what? Yeah, yeah, in in <laughs> fairness, he, he did. He did. Not, not more. Not more crime. What <laughs> happened? Yeah, my mum. This is me. This is two stories. Chet's going to make amends here. now. What? Yes. Listen. Right. <laughs> I did send... My mum sent him some money in, yeah? But Harry was in debt to me at the time because you did fucking... I don't know what you were doing here, but he, but, he, but he was in debt and he went to jail. But I thought, all right, it's the second time I've landed him inside, yeah? So I'm just going to leave the debt alone. And my mum said, right, you keep away from him now. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, you're a bad influence. No, 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 no. no. Oh. She went. He's a good boy. <laughs> she went. Stop fucking him up. Yeah, she oh. went. Leave him alone. Oh, yeah. not that one. She yeah. said, "You, I'm the bad one." My mum knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She went, mom. You're the bad one. She went. Now fucking leave it. Yeah. Whatever you owes you, just fucking knock it on the head. I went. Like, okay, mum. I get the same from your own family. I'm the bad guy. <laughs> and I'm the boy next door, the innocent one. I left it, I left it straight. <laughs> I remember though the, the conversation because when I'd got out, um, you probably won't remember this, we went to the Three Mile pub. Did he ask you for the money? We had food. And we said, we're going to have a chat, Harry. And we went to Three Mile, we sat down, you bought the food, and you said, look, you know what it is? You've done two prison sentences on my behalf. You've kept your mouth shut, you've done the time. Yeah. You're a good lad. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, what was it, two for one? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he even paid for two the lunch as well. Two only get one free. I'm like, yeah. okay, I didn't want to get to be honest. Two only get one free. To be honest, I didn't see much of him after that for a while. I left you alone, and man. Then he, and, then left you alone. and then he got locked up again. <laughs> and, and, then then got locked up. and then I got locked up. And then oh. I remember it was a few <laughs> years later, I was in a nightclub in Newcastle, C nightclub. Uh. And I'm walking up the stairs, there's this... Big fucker in front of us. I mean, he looks familiar to him and he turns on. It's you. Uh, you. I was yeah. like, I, I actually almost broke, broke on a tear. I was like, Jesus, Chad. You know, I big hug, VIP, straight upstairs. It was all these cronies. Yeah. <laughs> upstairs, VIP, champagne. And, uh, you know, I was like, oh, we were just, I hadn't seen him for a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, but then I said, right, stay away now. Go up. <laughs> <laughs> no more for By you. By the way, I've got a little I deal no for you. you. <laughs> I want no more for you. Go home now. <laughs> and then, yeah, no, I already put two on him. I put two sentences on him. <laughs> and we've been in touch ever since. Yes. Yeah. That's the best thing about it. He doesn't like call you me. can't say call on you. He doesn't call me a motherfucker because I, I did what I did, Harry, you know. I don't, regret, I don't regret anything. I don't. I did what I did. Don't regret anything. And I could, <clears> and I try to help how I could help. Mm-hmm. Well, you've come in and you've told your story well, backed up by Chet, and it's backed up his original story as well. And if people want to, like, find out what you guys are doing now, yes. you want to tell everybody? No. Well, yeah. actually, after, when I was in prison in Durham, that's when I thought, right, I really need to change my life here. I mean, I love fitness, I love of course, exercise. Of course. And I wrote to all the colleges and I said, you know, I would love to do a, a personal training course. And uh, to be honest, all the colleges basically (laughs) said, I don't think so, except (laughs) Newcastle College. And uh, so, of course, I got out. I went to college. I I spent a full year to become a personal trainer. And then uh, my tutor at the time, as I told her about my past, she was like, you will never get a job in the fitness industry. But first job I applied for, I ended up working there for 13 years as as the general manager of the company. 
and uh, you know, I've become a, a I've been personal trainer for like twenty years now. Wow. And yeah. uh, you Good know, clientele for you, that chat, it? Not Give just the first steroids. train, it's like. Clientele, um, listen, bro, I don't sell drugs no more, man. <laughs> what more felonies? I don't need three strikes, I get a life sentence on three strikes, you know. <laughs> and him. Do they do that three strikes over here? Three strikes, yeah, drugs. Three on drug, you get a life sentence. I never knew that. I knew yeah, you yeah, knew yeah. It America, said it's like, on drugs. It all, yeah. It's on it's drugs, on, America, on yeah. violence. It's on drugs, violent offenders. We already have two strikes a piece on drugs. So I've been told you could get like, uh, even if it's small, yeah. three years, four years, but it's life. Wow. Do you get me? Yeah. It's a life sentence, but we recommend three years. So you save the three, and then they look at you after the three. Is it safe to, to put back out there? Your PPR. If not, they can keep you for 99. If not, yeah, they can keep yeah. you for 99. IPP. That's, yeah. that's three strikes, you know? IPP is, isn't it? That's three strikes, so I no more drugs I, for I, us, man. No, I had we change. don't do that shit no and more. The, and the thing is, as well, one of, the, one of the other goals I've always had is um, I'm 42 now and I always wanted to compete. You know, as a kid when I was bodybuilding, yeah. I always wanted to get on stage and compete. For the last seven years, I've been competing in men's physique, male models. But you were boxing male, first. Boxing. But you were boxing first. Yeah, yeah. When you first come out. Yeah. Join the boxing club. experience is starting to be a fighter, but then you preferred bodybuilding shit yeah. and now you're doing excellent on that. Like say seven years. The only, this is the first year in seven years I'm not competing because of the... The whole coronavirus and yeah, uh, could be yeah. to the year, yeah. Both of these are in peak condition. I mean, like almost next to me. <laughs> but the other, the other thing as well, um, <laughs> at the start of lockdown, because obviously with my job, I look like a vet, he's both. <laughs> <laughs> I know, both of us. And Sean. With the, uh, <laughs> that was a bit rude. And Sean for the snack, <laughs> <for> the <dessert>. And <laughs> the cameraman. I <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what I also did as well is um, with, with the lockdown happening, Obviously, nobody's personal training, gyms are all shut, so like every other person in that industry, there's not much work going on. I'm still getting paid from the company I work for, furloughed. Um, so I decided, right, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And that's what I did. So uh, at the start of lockdown, okay. start learning how to make videos, educational videos yes. about fitness, nutrition, diet, bodybuilding, competing. Yes. Even like last year, I had a serious injury. I tore the ligament off my ankle, uh, off my um, yeah. foot. I've done a video about that. So it's, it's, it's all educational stuff I've done there because yeah. the one thing which I've learned is like when we were in jail together my training techniques I use with my PT clients to this day I learned from him Yeah, you know there's techniques that he showed me in the gym that mm. I'm still using yeah, yeah. yeah but the thing is people forget about basics yeah the I know the basics and important. it's stuff that I still apply to my clients yeah. today so. so the link to Harry's YouTube is in the description box below this video if you want to go down uh -huh. subscribe support what yes. he's doing Wank bank, whatever you want to use it for. Go Any down advice? And it. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Any advice also, listen. Mail only, please. <laughs> also, yeah. <laughs> Harry has different advice, yeah. Like, us lot, yeah, us three, we were... Uh, Cribbles. Masterminding it, really, yeah. right? Harry was an innocent party, okay? So he has different advice to give. If you are involved in something, what we're uh, like asking you or me or Sean... It's a different question, yeah? It might be somebody in Harry's shoes, you know? Someone who's been a bit used. How do, how do I handle this? Yeah. He's I was used to the It's no point asking him. someone like me, yeah? Because I ain't going to answer that question, you know? But maybe Harry might be able to help you what, out, yeah? What do you say, Harry, to all the young people watching this? Yeah. Who are yeah. tempted By the way, into going on a free foreign holiday? Yes. If you didn't get uh, if, I, listen to me, if I said to you... <laughs> How much I said to you, <laughs> Karachi, baby, yeah. £1,000. What do you tell to your younger pound. self, to you, the, your people watching? What well, would you say? Well, the thing, I've got two ways of looking at this. Yes. One yes. is, no I mean, now because I'm a lot older and I look back, I would never go to Karachi again because from what I know now, it's a very scary place. So I would say no for that reason. But he, was looking, he was looking at the beaches and he was I telling know. me how they got nice beaches. And I was like, uh, so much okay, cup, brochure. I was like, <laughs> okay, Harry, but we it, ain't going for the beaches, baby. <laughs> but at the same time, the, le the, the, the lessons I've learned in life Yes. You know, the lessons I've learned he about... He learned it hardcore yeah. at the fucking first level, didn't yeah. he? You know, the at the fucking... <laughs> he learned it 
the hardest way possible, really. It's it's learning hardest how to become way. mentally strong. You know, when you had your freedom taken away from you, you're, you're locked up. And your girlfriend's yeah. there with you as well. Girlfriend, I mean, having, having the girlfriend there was hard because she was she was blonde, and the Spanish love blonde girls. And, uh, you know, it was hard knowing that everybody in the jail wanted to fuck your bird. Mm. You know, it's, yeah, it was I hard. never had that problem. Man could beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say <laughs> I would not change anything that I went through. Yeah. Yes, in that respect, because obviously I've gained a, a superb friend for life. I've learned some serious lessons in life. I've learned how to deal with things mentally, physically. You know, even when I'm competing, the, the mental folks you need to do that. And it's all stuff I've learned from being in prison. It's also for learned off Chetney's bodybuilding yeah. days. So I wouldn't change any of that. I mean, obviously, mm. I wouldn't be running off doing paid jobs, going smoking no. and drugs. But no, 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 I no. would not change no. anything. What The man I am today is what I've learned from two prison sentences. So you're on yeah. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all your links will be in the description box. And yeah. Chet's brought his CBD oil right, on. Me anyway, guys. I think you've already heard this about 100 times already. Huh? Alpha CBD. Right, okay, Sean. Chet is the I... only podcast guest who puts his phone number... In the description the box. The you can is, call him up right now. I know you right can. now. I know you can. I know you 10, can. 10,000 people call Chet right many, now. Do you know how many fucking... <laughs> listen, do you know how many abuse calls I get as well, yeah? So listen, guys. What's happening now is I'm getting Number's a new changed. number. <laughs> I'm getting... No, no, no. It's directory. No, listen. That number is still operating. But uh, don't phone and give me abuse, yeah? Because it's a young girl who's answering this phone, yeah? So just leave it alone, okay? Because I've had to give this phone to somebody else. So don't phone up with loads of abusive messages, yeah? Okay, it's a young girl that you're abusing. I have a new number. But this is only for my alpha, because I have to keep that number ongoing, because I did put it on. And it's and it has worked for me, Sean. Listen, it has worked for me, and I have helped people out. But I do get a lot of shit as well at the same time, so this is why I've give that number to some... So don't phone and give me abuse. No caller IDs, because it's a young girl answering his phone, yeah? So behave yourself, please, yeah? Behave. Yeah, and, respect. And yeah. with my YouTube channel, um, women are also uh, accepted, so not just men. You What's know? that one? It my YouTube men, channel. Are they? 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 fucking <laughs> men only. 90% <laughs> of your subscribers are, are, are men, apparently. Which is, which is well, fine. That's about right, which yeah. Which is fine. So, yeah, men welcome. But uh, I'd also like some females <laughs> yeah, to subscribe to the channel. Girls don't go on YouTube. Girls well, don't go on YouTube. What's the... Um, I think the girls are too busy. Is it furloughed? Pardon? What was the program you plugged in for your, your, your workplace? Furloughed, is it? It's, uh, you know, the, the government pay you when you're furloughed from the... Uh, you work from where? Body's own gym? You're, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. I work, in a, I work in a gym in Newcastle, body's own gym. And, give me a uh, shower if you want. Yeah, 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 give me a shower. So when the gyms do eventually shower open. Out, yes. Yeah, when the gyms shower open. Out. Body's own fitness in Newcastle. It's yes. probably the longest, oldest gym. That's the first gym I trained in. <laughs> is it? I sure is it? When I was 19, I went there. <clears throat> and I used to get up at 6 a.m. and train. Wow. God. Dedication. That's lazy. I get up at 5. <laughs> <laughs> That's lazy. <laughs> One-on-one -on -one personal sessions. With <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Have you worn short, short shorts? <laughs> yeah. Is it, Harry? <laughs> Is it? Guys, guys and girls, yeah. If you pay him enough, he will do cut off shorts and train you in cut off shorts. But he, but that we're asking for I'm up for anything. I'm doing cut off shorts. Harry, cut off shorts. Harry, cut off shorts, hundred pound an hour. Okay, Newcastle only, you gotta travel. If you want him to go to you, you got to Oh, this is not by your link. It's actually like for real. Because it's for real. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this, <laughs> if you've enjoyed this, <laughs> you do not know what's going on. <laughs> well, if you want to watch oh, hours man. and hours of chat and hours and hours of Wild Man, they've both got playlists now in the description box. Huge thank you to all the new subscribers. Subscription logos in the bottom right hand corner of yes. this video screen. Huge thank you to people who've donated to enable us to. Come to studios like this. I have cameramen, sound engineers. Huge thank you. Please put all of your um, thoughts uh -huh. on today's video in the comments section below. And um, thanks for coming in, guys. My thank thoughts for the day yeah, are yeah, bad yeah. decisions yeah. make good stories. Every time for you, brother. Yes, yes, yes. My t-shirt. I want my t-shirt. <laughs> my dog's like, I want a t-shirt. I can't believe I left it, you know. We got it ready for you. That's not like me, but I think at your house, I was a bit easy, relaxed. <laughs> I was looking for that t-shirt. I was like, where the fuck? The first time you came to Guildford, you wasn't easy and relaxed. 
Was I? You were just going out smoking weed on the high street. <laughs> <laughs> and the comments walked past me. And I said, Sean, is it okay to do this? He went, uh, not really. I went to the police and say nothing. <laughs> They just walked straight past me. I think it's the second time. It was all the prostitutes. You got what it's shown. <laughs> Video ends right there. <laughs> <laughs> time for time. Are we going for some food? Yeah. Okay. Here at Boomer and Jen, we offer a wide range of organic or recycled clothing. We all know our planet is important. We only have this one. So it's vital that we all work together to slow down and reverse the changes to the environment. Whilst we all know that big industry are having a significant effect on pollution, here at Boomer and Jen, we believe that if we all make small changes, we can do our part. Fast fashion causes detrimental effects to the planet. Not only is nearly 20% of global wastewater produced by the fast fashion industry, but there is a considerable amount of fast fashion ending up in landfill. So let's move away from fast fashion items that are only worn once or twice and start wearing extremely comfortable, durable and environmentally friendly clothing and ethical jewellery. Boomer and Jen was founded in a quiet town in Devon in 2018. It has now gone from strength to strength as the world is becoming more aware of the current climate situation, helping our customers to buy sustainable, quality clothing. All of our products are fair trade and registered with the Global Organic Textiles Standard Association. Check us out on organiccottonclothing.co.uk